So welcome everyone for this clinical R training course. And so I'm Ranjit. I have a 12 plus years of experience uh, uh, in programming, in developing and implementing various applications for the pharmaceutical, banking, finance. So I have 12 plus years of experience in programming domain and in developing and implementing various applications for the pharmaceutical, banking, finance, clinical and health industries. And these experiences included uh, includes creation of analysis data set, TFL generation, statistical summary, support for manuscript and publication work. And we have also, uh, I have also worked on the data and report validation. Apart from this, I have some exposure of uh, business intelligence. So over their data management with emphasis on business requirement analysis, application design, uh, development, testing, implementation, and maintenance of client server data warehouse and data mart system in the financial and banking media and healthcare and industries apart from this i have some exposure of other industries like uh, retail telecom and pharmaceutical so i have some technical expertise uh, in sas so these are basically base sas sas macro sas cities sas stat sas axis sas connect sas graph sas ots sas sql sas studio and enterprise guide and other than this i have some certification of uh, clinical uh, sas certification so these are basically programming fundamentals using sas 9.4 sas certified clinical trial uh, programmer using sas 9 uh, sas certified specialist based programming sas uh, based programming using sas 9.4 sas certified professional uh, that is advanced programming using sas 9.4 Apart from the SAS, I have some working experience of uh, R and over there I have used various packages and those are Deployer, Tidyverse, ggplot2, Heaven, Radar, Read Excel, String R, Admiral, uh, gtplot, gt summary, etc. And uh, I, I work for the various organizations and these are Cognizant, TCS, Novartis, IQVIA, Novartis. So this all uh, about me and uh, I'm leading this course here. Uh, I'm a, is your uh, guide and today we'll cover the course detail and then after that we'll move to the glimpse of our programming. I'll show you a few codes, few line of codes for creation of listing, table and figures and then we'll move to some frequently asked questions that we uh, that the students generally ask and then will have the questions and answer session okay so let's move to the course detail so uh, these are the course structure so here we'll cover our course in two part and in first part we'll cover the base r and the advanced r so in base r we'll cover the base packages like uh, like heaven utils chat and other base uh, uh, packages okay in advanced R, we'll cover advanced packages like Deployer, like ggplot2, uh, then SQLDF, R2RTF, GT summary, and GT tables. Okay, Admiral, etc. So we'll cover these base R and advanced R in 36 classes. Okay, and after that, we'll move to the uh, part two. So here we'll cover CDs, then STDM creation atom creation and then table listing and figure creation so here we will provide uh, the sas statuses on a case studies uh, uh, that will uh, have the data sets protocols saf tfl cells all information will provide uh, to all the participants and then we'll start creating the table listing figure first uh, using the sas statuses right we'll use the sas dataset and import into the r and we'll convert into our data sets and we'll create the table listing and figure after that we'll use the uh, we'll create the atom data sets so here for creating atom data sets we'll use the stdm data sets okay and then after the atom creation we'll move to the stdm data set creation okay and here we'll use the raw data sets to create the stdm data okay so this is the structure and this will cover uh, in 42 hours and here we'll provide you all the learning material, all the training, all the codes, right? Recordings, etc. And this is the course uh, detail. And here we have 40,000 
in uh, in Indian rupees, and if you convert, that will be near about five forty USD. So this is all about the course detail. Any questions so far here? Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for this training, we need a SAS also, or no, no, no. We don't R need the SAS. Yeah, R is required. We don't need the SAS. We use the SAS so data sets. The, we have we have any uh, uh, jobs like SAS. Uh, means it. So once we start, we I don't. Uh, I'm uh, new for the SAS because because I don't know the SAS. Mm -hmm. uh, I I directly want to do this R. Uh, okay. Get any job opportunities like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we will start our course uh, in such a way that if you don't know anything, you are also don't feel excluded, right? So we will cover from the basic part. But if you know the SAS, that will uh, some sort of uh, added advantage. But we don't discuss anything here uh, for the SAS, right? We use the SAS datasets to create our uh, R datasets to create the table listing figure, right? STTM creation, Adam mm -hmm. creation, right? So that is the purposes here uh, uh, okay okay perfect okay. thank you thank you yeah any questions from anyone uh, does this course have any macros generally we use in class we use macros right uh, yeah in our programming does it have any macros uh, okay so perfect question so, Do, so are you going to teach that yeah so in r we don't have macros concept but here we have functions so that will work accordingly uh, as a macro what we have in sas right so we'll provide here the uh, functions we we'll write various functions right to perform a specific task so you can relate the uh, macro what we have in sas with the function what we have in r so in r we don't have any concept uh, related to macro but we have function that works in the same way okay Uh, sorry, uh, your voice is can breaking. Can... Yeah. yeah, could you repeat once again? Your voice is breaking basically. Hello, yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, please. So, as you say, we are using the set data set to practice for like to make the HTTM and Adam data sets and TLFs. So, like in a company, they will give us also SAS data set or they will give the raw data like uh, from the Oracle or Clinical. So, it, it depends on which stage you are working on, right? So, if you are working on the TFL creation, so they generally provide the Adam data sets. And the Adam data set we generally create in uh, what we what the practice we have in the industry. So, we will generally create in SAS data sets, right? And we'll use that, but we mm -hmm. get we can import here the Excel file. We can import here the CSV file. We can import the any file, right? It is not uh, specific the SAS, but we generally oh. have the SAS data set in the industry. So that's why I talked in the in that order. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. 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 We can we can take any data sets, whether it is text data, CSV data, Excel data, and other SAS and other file stat stat data, right? So we can we can use any data uh, data type. Okay. Any questions? So maybe we'll move to the next part. Okay, perfect. So now I'll move to the next part. So here I'll just walk you through the uh, the layout of R. And I'll write write few co uh, codes, and then we'll see how it works basically here. Okay. So this is R Studio. So R Studio is a graphical user interface for R, right? So here we have very elegant functionality. So we can save the code. We can see the result here in 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 the in the uh, console part. So this is okay. So this is editor. So if you notice here, we have split it our window in four four part. So if you see the left hand side, top left part, so this is editor. Now if you see the bottom hand part, here we have files, plot, packages, and other information. So this is 
the second window then here we have on the right hand side top right so we have console and then we have environment at the uh, right bottom hand side right so here we have environment history connection and tutorials right so we'll write code on the editor part here then if you execute your code it will send to the console and then it will create all the data sets and uh, files in the environment window right so first of all uh, before writing anything i have to just look where is our working directory right so what is the working directory? Working directory is basically a locations uh, that uh, R points, right? Or R stores all the objects or all the files that we are working on, right? So for that, we have keyword here. So we have keyword get wt. So what it means, it is basically getting the working directory, right? So which location we, uh, we have our working directory, right? So if I run this, so for running, we have to just place the cursor on a specific line and we have to press this run button right so this is one way the another way is so we have to write here uh, get wt and then what how we can run in another way so we have to place the cursor and we have to press keys control plus enter right so we have to press control as well as the enter at the same time so this is the way uh, to run a specific a specific line of a code right so this is maybe a light comment here getting working directory location okay so this is the working directory location so this is our training learning material and data set creation project right so maybe i'll move to the another locations and i'll or maybe uh, if i wanted to set on a specific location right so what i'll do i'll just use set wd so this is the way we can change our working our, our directory working directory locations right suppose i wanted to shift on another location so what i'll do i'll go to the file our training we will use data and if suppose i wanted to shift here so what i'll do i'll just paste the uh, copy the uh, location and i'll write here in double quote okay and here i have to uh, make double slash instead of single right so if i run this so our working directory is set on this location so for that you can you can write once again get wt to check whether it is set on a specific location or not so if i run this so if you notice the working directory was set on this r training and data so earlier it was here but now we can set on a different location so why we can do that why we have we did in a specific way because i have some data sets at a specific location that we wanted to import here that's why i have did the working directory on it, on this location right so so this is the way how we'll set the working directory so this is let me comment at the comment here setting okay so this is the way how we'll set the working directory now we'll uh, i'll show you how to create the variables and different way uh, different ways so first of all uh, we have uh, let me run comment creating okay so for variables so here we have to also use the same nomenclature and i'll discuss in more detail the variable uh, nomenclature uh, rule in subsequent classes but uh, we can have uh, we can we can uh, create the variable in the same way what we have in the sas we can use underscore we can we cannot start with the numeric we can use the first letter as a character and uh, we can use here the dot so in sas we cannot use dot or period in between the variable name but in r we can use that we can use the underscore right so this is the basic nomenclature of the variable right so suppose i'll create a one name here name and i'll write here andrew okay so how we have to write so this is the assignment operator so let me write here so for commenting in r so what we have to press so we have to place the cursor on a specific line and we have to place control shift and c okay so if you notice so this is the variable name 
and this is the actual observation that I wanted to store. So this is the name. So that's why we have to provide in double quote, right? So everything that we provide in double quote will be stored in the character format, right? And this is the assignment operator. So what it basically does. So this is left assignment. Similarly, we have other assignment like equal, right? Then right assignment operator, and then two right uh, double uh, assignment operator, right? Global assignment operator and all. So we'll see in more detail in subsequent classes. But this is the left assignment. So what it basically does. So it assigns this Andrew to the object name, right? So if I run this. So here, if you notice in the environment, we have one uh, variable that is name and then it stores the Andrew as a values. OK, so this is the way how we'll assign uh, a specific objects, uh, a specific uh, value to a particular object. So here name is an object and it contains the name Andrew. We can up, up, uh, we can create here uh, more than one objects more than well one and one values in a specific object so what i'll do i'll just write here and i write andrew then we'll write here the other name um suppose i write rahul then we'll write here zia and other so if you if you create here more than one name so what we have to write we have to use here combine operator so c is a combine operator that combines all the elements and it stores in the same variable name so because here we are i am using the same name variable name right so it just replaced the previous one right so if i run this and if i just print the name so these are the specific values what we created okay so any questions so far here so this is the way how we'll create the character vector character objects right any question uh, just one question i have uh, is there any way we can create a simple variable within a data set like how we read in sas and create a simple yeah I, i'll, I'll show you so, so because this is not the data set this is the individual vector i'll create uh, after after a few minutes a data frame that is equivalent to the data sets and we'll create the variable over there. Okay. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Perfect. Any questions? Okay. So this is the name. We have created name. And now what we'll do? We'll create additional variable and we'll create here the numeric variable, right? So suppose we wanted to create the age for these three uh, names right so what i'll do i'll just use the combine operator and i'll write here 23 25 and 26 okay and if i run so this is the age and suppose we wanted to see the structure uh, so suppose i wanted to print first of all i'll just wanted to print here so this is the print keyword and over there we have to pass the variable name right so if i run this so it will just print so this is the explicit print because here we have right. We, ha we have right. Uh, we, we have provided the print function and then we have provided the variable, right? And this is the implicit print because here we have not provided anything, right? So these are the two part. Uh, we can uh, print the uh, value, print the variables using uh, using the name, right? It will specifically print the whatever the value that it contains, right? And you can use this print statement to print the uh, the values, right? We can use this age also, so it does in the same way. But here we are using the print function explicitly, and here we are not using anything. Okay. Now I'll create the data frame. So these are the basically the individual uh, objects, right? So the problem here is so if you if you see the name. So name is a character, so it can only store the character objects, right? We cannot provide here the numeric. Similarly for the age, so this is the numeric data type, numeric objects, and it can only store the numeric uh, objects, right? So there is one keyword here. This is str. So str is basically structure. So it provides the structure. Variable structure of the variable or the data 
data sets or data frame so in r we usually call data frame uh, instead of data sets right so if i run this so this is the uh, if you notice here we have num so num means numeric and these are the three objects right similarly if i pass this str on the name so it will provide the same thing it will provide here this character right C H E R means character so this is name is character data type and these are the values right but if you wanted to create something that stores the numeric as well as the character so what we'll do we'll create the data frame so data frame is sort of uh, data structure or data type or data or r objects that can store various data type in the same in the one right so i'll write here first data frame so it can store different data type right so how will create the data frame so for that we have the keyword data dot frame right data dot frame right and we have to pass the variable right so first vector i have created here the name i can use the name and the second vector i have created the age right why i'm referring here the vector right so if you notice if i run this uh, age once again so if you notice this is the first element so 23 is the first element 25 is the second element and 26 is the third element right so it is basically storing as a vector similarly if we notice this name so this is the one so andrew is the first element then rahul is the second element and zia is the third element so all objects that we generally create in r so it basically stores as a vector data type so that's why we call uh, as a vector suppose we wanted to extract here suppose we wanted to extract uh, the 25th right uh, in the age variable so how, how we'll do so we can use age the variable name and then after that we have to write this big bracket okay and here we have to write two so two is basically a placeholder and it moves to this second location and it pulls those uh, that information right i don't know so i'm getting some noise could you please mute if you're not speaking perfect so this is the way how we'll extract right so suppose we wanted to extract the third element so this is the third element so how we'll do we'll write here three okay so this is the way so this big bracket uh, let me write so big bracket with placeholder or index extract the specific object right so this is the way how we'll extract so because it stores all the objects in a vector format so we can uh, use that information we can use that indexes or placeholder to extract those uh, objects right similarly we can do the name for the name right so suppose we wanted to extract the second name so how, how we'll do we'll write first the variable name after that we have to write the big bracket and we'll write two so it will extract the second element so if you notice here rahul is the second element so it have extracted the rahul okay so if you notice here three if you write here three so it will extract the third element that is zia right so this is the way how we'll extract elements because it stores as a vector format so we can use this information to extract those uh, part okay now we create the data frame so for data uh, creation of data frame we'll write your data dot frame and then we'll pass the respective vector okay so here we have created one vector name and the another vector we have created age okay so we'll use here uh, data dot frame and then we'll pass these two variable okay and i'll i'll name as this df so i'll assign this data frame into our object df right so if i run this so it will create on data frame so if you notice earlier these were values right but now we have a data and here if you notice this is the data frame name so df we have just created and here if you notice here here we have three observations and two variables so if you wanted to see the structure of df so we'll write str and we'll write here df 
So if you notice here, this is the data frame, data type. Here we have three observations and two variables, right? And if you go further down, so here the first variable is name and this is character type. And here we have three observations. And then second variable is age, right? And here we have num. Uh, so num means numeric. So this variable is of numeric data type and these are the respective values, right? So this is the way how we, we can uh, dig further about the data, right? And we'll so see those informations. So one thing here we have to keep in mind while creating the data frame. So we, whatever the vector we are passing, it should have the same element, right? So if you notice in the name, we have three elements, Andrew, Rahul, and Jia. And in the age also, we have three elements, 23, 25, and 26. So so every time when we wanted to create data frame, all the objects that we're passing must contain the same element, right? So maybe I'll write here, all the objects must contain the same element, same number or right? So this is the point that we have to keep in mind when we are creating the data frame, right? And if you notice, so this is the uh, data type or data sets. Here we have character as well as numeric. So we can create another data type as well. So here in R, we have five types of data, character, numeric, then real. So character uh, numeric is further divided into two parts, real and integer. So then we have a complex. Then we have another data type that is logical. Right, so these are the various data type uh, that we have in R. Right, so any questions so far? Can you please show us the uh, data frame output once? Yes. Let me open. So, this is the data frame. So, here we have two variables, name and age, and these are the respective values. Andrew. Rahul, okay. then Jia, okay. uh -huh. and, and their respective uh, age, right? Okay. Uh, okay. So can uh, say the data frame is like a data set? We can say as how we refer data uh, yeah. in SAS. As we usually refer data sets, but in R we refer data frame. So the things are same, but the name are different basically. Okay. 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 So DF is the data frame. Uh, no, no, no. So yeah. DF. So, so this is the object that I create. I maybe I'll create here data, right? And this is the actual uh, syntax, right? So if I run this, so instead of DF, so if you notice, this is the data. So this is just a name, right? So suppose we create ADSL datasets. So we'll write here ADSL. ADSL. Okay. So it will create. So this is just okay. a name, and this is the actual keyword. Okay, ADSL is a data frame which is created out of the vectors. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, just one question. Uh, yeah. Uh, usually in SAS data sets, the extension will be SAS 7B dot. What is the output of for DF now? What is the extension? Uh, so here we have R data set. So these are R data. So uh, if I if I if I show you when I store these objects, so it will it will uh, let me let me uh, do we have here let me check do we have here anything uh, this is R D B T it should have the same thing uh, yeah so if you notice D B F so this is the file uh, this is data this is numeric one so I uh, so this is basically so in SAS we have uh, dbt right so but here we have r uh, r dot r so r dot r is the f file type right so if you notice so this is the object but if you create the data sets so r dbt I guess uh, if I remember correctly maybe I'll show you when, uh, I'll, I'll show, create some data sets and over there we will we'll use that part but here we can create the Excel data set as well. We can create the SAS data set using R. So suppose I wanted to create this DF into, uh, I just wanted to export DF as a SAS data set, we can create here. But the usual data is, uh, of uh, R is the R data, RDB. 
that is the extension okay okay so is it that uh, whenever we read sas data set it mm -hmm. needs to be created as our data frame and again if the, those data sets needs to be submitted to agencies uh -huh. the again the our data frames need to be converted back to sas uh, yes so because uh, so far what the requirement is if you submit to the health authority uh, the packages sdtm package or xpt package so in that case you have to convert in a specific order so that you can do using sas or you can do using r as well right because uh, sas is acceptable every everywhere right so that's why they prefer using create uh, creating of a sas data set but i maybe in coming future uh, maybe we we can uh, we can have the R data set as well for the submission purposes, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, any further questions? So now I'll move to the next part. If you don't have any questions, maybe I'll wait for a couple of seconds. Okay. So now I'll do, I'll just call a individual file, right? I'll call this population file. Let me uh, see here. Where... So if you notice, this is the Excel tracker that I, I will import right and i'll do the summary statistics calculation on this file right so this is basically a clinical trial data sets right so here if you notice column b this is subject number so you can you can read this data set as a different subject so if you if you have let me show you the end part so here we have 484 observations so maybe you can think of 484 subjects are or patients are here in this studies and they are taking two diff distinct medications right so these are the medication that are capturing here in variable TRT, right? Treatment A and treatment B, okay? And they, these are the further information like race information, sex information, date of birth, age in years, height under, uh, in centimeter, then BMI and then weight, right? And here we have uh, po different populations. So this basically in clinical trial we have various population like safety population efficacy population so i will not go to the detail of those but you can think of these are some sort of specific criteria and based on that will will filter out few subjects right so these are basically suppose uh, we are giving here two medications and those are defined that we have to take a medication twice right and if all subjects are taking right so maybe sorry, sorry please could you repeat? I am not able to hear you well. Oh, sorry. So maybe you can, you can unmute again and then you can pose your questions if you have questions. Okay. So sub populations are basically a subset of peoples on a specific criteria, right? So I'll detail, I'll explain in more detail in subsequent classes. But for time being, you can think of uh, various uh, sort of groups, right? Safety, we have few subjects that are having some criteria. And based on that, we have segregated those subjects into safety population. After that, we have to apply another criteria. And if those subjects satisfy those criteria, so we'll move to, we'll, we'll keep those subjects into the efficacy population right so for now uh, so for uh, we will not use this two uh, variable i'll just focus on the remaining variables and i'll create the table listing and figures okay so first of all i have to just import this file so if you notice this file is in uh, in this location so what i'll do i'll just set the working directory in this specific locations so i'll write here set wd I'll paste those locations and I have to make it a double slash. Okay, we can use another way. We can just copy the location. We can use 
set wd so instead of writing double slash we can change the slash so this is left one we can move like this this also works in the same way if i run uh, let me put into a double quote or in single quote will also work in the same way so if i run so this will set the working directory let me check get wd okay so this is the appropriate working directory okay so now i'll do i have to call this file so if you notice this file is of excel type right excel data type so for importing any excel file i have i have to install one package so that is uh, inst we have to write first install dot install dot packages and we have to write read excel okay so but i have already installed this package so i will not do that i will just call that package so for calling we have to write library right and we have to write here read excel right so this is the way how we'll install a package and how we'll call that package so this is the way how we'll install install any package right and this is the way how we'll call okay so every time if you if you wanted to install so we can use this uh, install dot packages and we need that double uh, we need that uh, parentheses and in double code we have to write read excel the package name and after that we have to call that so if you if you close your working uh, if you close our r sessions right so you have to again use this uh, library and then we have to use read excel to call that package right so every time when you close this r sessions you have to call that specific package so that uh, then only you can you can work on that part okay so and then after that we have to write the uh, the keyword for importing the file so i'll use sorry importing right so how will write so read underscore excel okay and then we have to write in double quote the file part uh, file name so uh, the file is population okay so i have to just copy and then i have to paste here and then we have to also write the extension right so this is excel sx okay and maybe i'll rename here data so this is the way how we'll import so if you notice so data is created and here we have 400 43 observation and 12 variable we can see the structure so we'll write here str and we'll pass the data right so this is the table so table is also a type of data frame right so if you notice data dot frame and these are the specific variables so site name subject id right and these are the data type of specific variable the race are in character sex are in character then dop so if you notice this is the POSIX city so this is the way how r stores a date right so there are two format POSIX city and POSIX lt right so we'll discuss in more detail when we'll do the time and date input uh, evaluation right and uh, these are the uh, remaining variables age underscore cal year right so age and years so these are in character right so height is also in character bmi and all are character so what i'll do i have to uh, do the summary statistics calculation right so i'll convert this character into a numeric one uh, then only we can do the uh, summary statistics mean median and all right so first of all what i'll do I have to do some sort of imputations so for that our data processing because we wanted to convert this uh, character into a numeric so we have another package that is deployer so i have to load that package because i have already, already installed so you can use here the keyword install dot package and let me comment so that it will be easier for uh, for all of let me write here deployer So this is the way how we'll install. And if you have already installed in your R system, so no need to do that. <coughs> Sorry. So I have to just call. All right. And this is fine. So now we can do the uh, data 
processing part right so what i'll do i'll use here various keyword i'll explain uh, one by one so i'll use the data i'll use uh, this file uh, i can copy this i can use data one oh, sorry data one or maybe i'll write df because this is a short name right i'll call this data and i'll perform on sequence layer base so this is the pipe operator okay so let me explain a little bit here this is pipe operator so this is the functionality of triplier package and using this pipe operator we can perform various tasks on a same data frame without writing a new line right so this works in a sequential way right so how it works suppose i wanted to apply the filter of safety population so what i'll do i'll just use pipe and i'll write here filter filter so filter means it will filter the data it will apply the specific filter right so suppose i write safety underscore pop okay and i write equal equal symbol and then we'll write here yes so i write the safety population filter suppose after that i have to create additional variable right why we have to create additional variable because we wanted to create additional variable to store this character uh, into a numeric one right so for creating additional variable what we'll do we have to just write uh, here mutate mutate and here we have to write a variable name new variable so what i'll what i wanted to create i'll just wanted to create age underscore num as a new variable okay and what op op uh, operation i have to perform i have to convert this age cal underscore year into numeric so we have one function as dot sorry here i have to write as dot numeric as dot numeric right and here we have to pass the variable name so what is the variable i can copy from here and i'll paste here okay and this is fine so mutate maybe i'll write here uh, comment mutate uh, for creating new variable in the data frame or data sets okay so if i run so this will work in this uh, right and uh, how this pipe operator it just uh, how this pipe operator works basically so this takes this data sets after that this apply the filter okay then this apply uh, this created a new variable so this work in a sequential way so first part is uh, this will, uh, just pull the data sets uh, right after that it will apply the filter and then we have to apply here the we have to convert this numeric one and store into the new variable h underscore now so this is the way how the pipe operator works and if i show you the data okay so if you notice age underscore norm is created and this is the numeric uh, format right so r has very unique functionality you can you can press the cursor on a specific variable and it will provide uh, that the type of the variable right so this is character this is also character this is numeric right so similarly we can create the other variables right and if we, i have to just write here uh, weight bmi underscore num i write as dot numeric and then we have to write here bmi then we have another variable weight wgt underscore num as dot Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So, 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 why to create new variables? Uh, mm -hmm. We should, we should. I think, I think, if it is possible to convert these character variable into numeric without adding too many variables. Uh, yeah, we can create the. Uh, that is perfect. So that is
So if you have two variables of the same type, so that may create issues. So it is better to create an additional variable and drop the variable that are already there. So that is a good programming practices. But we can replace okay. that also. Uh, but that is not a good or uh, naive way of creating uh, something, right? Mm -hmm. okay. 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 You can replace into the same variable. You can convert, uh, but that is not a good way. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll show you uh, maybe in subsequent classes the caveat of creating the same variable uh, of a data of a different data type, right? So one is numeric and another is okay. uh, that makes. I sense. was just wondering why not to do that because I'm not a programmer actually. Is that why I don't don't have any background yeah. in programming? No problem. I'm, I'm a GPS, but you know, okay. No, no, no. I really appreciated your comment. So I mean, we will write here. So these are all the variable that we wanted to convert into numeric. So uh, okay, BMI. I guess BMI has some different name. So this is BMI underscore num. Oh, BHI. Sorry, I misspelled here. Okay, perfect. So this is the data frame. So let me show you the variables. So these are the required variables. So what we'll do, we can drop the character one, all right? So let me do that. So we can drop using this uh, select keyword. So suppose we wanted to drop a specific variable. What we'll do, we'll write here minus symbol and we'll place that variable uh, after that, right? So suppose we wanted to drop height underscore cm, I'll do that in, in this way, right? So if I show you, so it should not have height underscore weight, right? So it is disappeared from here. Suppose I wanted to drop multiple variables. So what we'll do? We'll use combine operator and we'll provide the variable after the comma symbol. So suppose I wanted to drop BMI. So I'll write BMI here and I'll close this parentheses, right? And before that, we have to use this minus symbol. So minus symbol is basically minus symbol uh, is uh, for dropping variables right so this is the way how it works so if i show you so this should not have bmi and all right so suppose i wanted to drop these two also we can write in the same way so what we'll do we'll copy this uh, age underscore and this variable and i'll write here after the comma then height underscore cm we have already provided and weight we have to copy and drop okay so if i run this so these four variables uh, will be removed from the data sets right so these are the variables so this is the way how we'll drop suppose i wanted to keep the variable so this is uh, same keyword but we have to write in a different way right so i'll write here uh, i'll for commenting a specific line so we can write here dollar symbol uh, this uh, hash before that so it will not execute a specific line right so i just commented and i'll use here the keep keyword so for keep we have to just uh, drop this minus symbol right and before that uh, we have to write the variable what we wanted to keep right okay so there is another keyword here suppose i write call names so this is the way how we'll uh, populate what are the variables that are available in our data sets right suppose i write df uh, suppose i write this line of course so in r we have uh, freedom to run a specific line of course suppose i wanted to run up to this line so what we'll do i'll just select and then press the run keyword so it will run up to this line so it will not execute after this pipe right so this is the functionality so suppose i run df i'll call here at uh, call names and df1 so it will populate all the variables that are available uh, in df1 data frame right so these are the variable suppose i wanted to keep uh, a specific variable right so i'll show you here first so this is a site name and this is the subject id name suppose i wanted to create use subject id using uh, uh, these two variables i'll concatenate these two variables I'll create one so instead of keeping two variables i'll keep one okay so what we'll do how we'll do that so we'll write here uh, one mutate or maybe we can write here in the same same mutate function so i'll write use subject id and i'll use paste function paste 
so there are two function paste zero and paste one so these basically concatenates two or more than two character vector or a string right so i'll use paste zero so paste zero concatenate two or more than two strings without spaces right so i'll use this one and then i'll pass here the site name and subject uh, id so i'll use first variable i'll just drop this code and i'll use a hyphen in between or maybe i'll use a slash right and then we have to use this subject id right so this is the way how we'll create the variable so let me run uh, up to this line we can select and we can run so if i show you df so it should have some thing use subject id and these are the uh, variable these are the individual values so it has basically concatenated site name and subject id right so now we'll use the keep uh, the select keyword and i'll keep the variable in specific orders right so suppose you wanted to keep uh, sub, uh, the use subject id first so what i'll do i'll just write here use subject id right after that we have to keep the remaining variables so let me check which variable i have to keep so first i'll keep use subject id then we have to keep the race and sex then dob right let me use here the call names uh, df1 so use subject id then after that we have to use the race i'll copy uh, accordingly and i'll paste here then we have sex and r is a case sensitive right so we have to keep in mind and we have to provide the variable in the same order right so if i write a small case race right so it will not work right and so that's why we have to keep in mind sir then we have trt then we have age num So RS Studio has very unique functionality. If you write here some part of the variable, it will automatically tell the remaining one. Uh, BMI. I don't know why this is not providing. BMI. Yeah. So if you notice, so this is providing BMI underscore num. We can also provide. We can copy from here. It will be easier. Then height underscore. So the benefit of using uh, the select keyword without the minus symbol is we can arrange the variable in a specific order, right? Uh, because in the listing, we need to uh, order the variable in a specific order, right? So that will be easier if you create, if you wanted to create the listing. So this is the part we can create the listing here. So for that, uh, if you wanted to create the R2, uh, RTF file, so let me write here comment first this is keeping um just a one question sorry to interrupt uh for this data frame df1 mm -hmm. uh, how does r knows that your data frame has stopped and you are moving to the next uh instruction for r to execute yeah so this is the way how pipe operator works right so uh, so if if i show if i show you once again if i explain a little bit so this is the way so first of all, what we are doing, we are just calling this statuses. So it will it will just call this statuses. After that, it executes the next line, right? So this is the way how pipe operators works. After that, after applying this filter of safety population, it will move to the next line. Next pipe operator is this, right? So it will create a whole lot of variable using different variables, right? And then it moves to the next line, next pipe. So next pipe, it just select the specific variable that are created okay so this is the way in the sequential way how it works okay okay mm -hmm. uh hello yeah please yeah so Ranjit, uh is there like a sequence like in uh, sql we have a sequence like select then we use order by or have where clause so mm -hmm. here also is there a particular sequence like okay after database uh filter should come and then only we can mutate it something like that there is no sequence as such or but it can be 
yeah but we have to keep in mind that uh, if suppose if we have created this use subject id here right so in this pipe we have created that part so we cannot call here uh, before that because we have created here we cannot call this variable prior to that we can call after that so this we have to keep in mind other than we have to not keep uh, keep any any uh, any prior sequence or any specific in in our mind while creating this uh, pipe operator while creating the data sets right so this is the basic so, part in mind yeah and whenever we use pipe operator we have to call the library dplyr yeah dplyr so dplyr is basically a, li a library that is extensively used in uh, data processing or data munging you can say data processing is basically you're converting the data right so in that case we'll usually use dplyr so this is very handy library okay. and very popular one okay. any further question okay uh, how do we know what are the functionalities will it have in dplyr like we use mutate and uh, filter right what are the other functionality does it have any list uh, yeah 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 we have whole lot of functionality maybe in subsequent classes okay. i'll explain one by one okay so we can uh, tabulate okay. and we are, summarize. Uh, mm -hmm. okay we don't know nothing about our so we need to each and every minute detail yeah, yeah, so yeah. So i'm happy to i'm happy to help yeah. maybe you can pose your question you can you can <laughs> stop me anywhere i'm happy to help <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, for example, uh, read packages uh, you have written as a read Excel. Can we read the TXT file as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we can read TXT file. We can read the CSV file. We can read various file formats, right? So I will ex because this is some sort of demonstration part. So uh, we have time limitations. Okay, okay. Just so, uh, got a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I'll Thanks. explain. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Any questions? Now I'll move to the next part. Okay. So, so far we have created DF, right? So these are the data sets and we can, we can use this data set to report uh, RTF file because in the clinical domain, we'll usually create the RTF file, right? So I'll create here the RTF file, uh, RTF listing. So maybe I'll write reporting. Okay. So we have one package uh, that is R2 RTF, R2, oh, sorry. R to RTF. So, those who have not installed, maybe you can use this install dot packages, and you can install this package. But I have already installed, so I'll just call that package, right? And we can use here. So this is the package that uh, is used to create the listing, right? So, in R to uh, or any document uh, into uh, RTF format, right? So first of all, we have to write here the data set. So data set is df one. After that, we have to write here uh, this R, uh, RTF, RTF underscore uh, call header. Uh, maybe we can write body first. Uh, this is the body part. Then we have to write RTF underscore encoding. Then we have to write uh, read dot uh, write dot write means for writing a file write underscore rtf so this is the way how we'll write the file so suppose i wanted to create this file uh, into a specific location right so the working location here is in the same way get wd we can write here get wd and see the working location so this is in our folder right so i'll create here itself and i'll name as listing demo i will write here demo listing dot rtf right so if i run this so it will create the rtf listing on the same uh, location right so our folder let me modify here uh, it should have somewhere okay so this is demo listing it is created just now if i open so this is the file okay so here if you notice these are the variables we can rename those variables into a specific name right 
uh, using the call header name right uh, tf call header so i'll do it right away and then so we can use here uh, this so no need to remember this all line i will share the code and i will explain in subsequent classes what are the specific chunk so call header means we wanted to rename a header in a specific way right i'll show you then body is specifically this part uh, the the observations right individual observations this is called the body this is called the header right similarly we have footer at the end we have we should have some footer right we we have not provided anything so that is not available here but we can we can create uh, another way right we can we, i can explain each and every line right encoding is basically we are creating this r we are converting this r file right r data into rtf so that's why we need some sort of encoding and that's why we have written here rtf underscore encoding so by default it takes specific encoding and it writes the rtf file right similarly we have rt uh, write underscore rtf so it will convert this data into rtf uh, file right so this is the way how it works so call header so we can provide here the column so if you notice uh, let me pull the column first so call names i'll pass here df1 sorry df1 so here we have uh, six uh, if you notice this is one and this is six uh, sixth observation uh, six element then seventh then eight and then nine we have nine observation nine variables or nine column so we have to provide here in the same way so uh, we have to use vertical strokes so the first variable is here so one then we have two then we have three four five six seven eight and we have to uh, name it specifically okay so first of all we have to write use subject id let me write Uh, you subject let me write in capital letter subjid then after that we have to write here race because race is at second position then we have here the six then we have here date of birth it of birth then we have here treatment age years now we have bmi uh, ranjit what's the timing of the class till when it will end uh, so it will end in uh, 45 minutes another 45 minutes 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll move to uh we'll, we'll cover some part tomorrow as well okay so there were two uh, so, demonstration sessions so generally, what i just have an office so that's why i was asking okay so maybe we'll we'll uh, wrap up in 30 minutes okay give me 30 minutes okay okay so, so bmi then so we'll every day it would be one and a half hours only exactly exactly mm -hmm. weight and then we have here then height we can provide the unit cm and weight is in kg okay so and then we have to use the pipe operator here so oh, sorry mm -hmm. I have to place this variable in double quote. So let me do that. Oh, so the file is already open. So I have to close first this file that I've just created and then we are good to go. Okay. So if I show you this file, so it should have some updated label, right? So this is the way how we can update the uh, column header. Okay. So now this is the listing. So there are some other formatting i have to just convert this into prop case i have to convert this grt in a specific way right so this we can do uh beautification later right so but this is a crude way how we can create we can write the title so we can add here title as well so for adding title we'll write here rtf 
underscore title and here we like uh, demographic demo listing okay we'll use your pipe because it will uh, uh, work in a sequential way i have to close this file first and then we can run this okay so let me show you okay so demo listing we can shift into left hand side we can increase the font we can we can provide different uh, font type right so this is basically a uh, times new roman we can convert uh, different uh, font as well okay now i'll move to the remaining part uh, so tomorrow we'll see uh, the figure and table creation right and today i'll cover some uh, ppt part okay so course detail so let me make it full screen so uh, this is the name of the course clinical r programming and this course uh, of 38 hours and will cover one hour and 30 minutes each day and this will uh, we will do the classes on every day from monday to sunday india us time or india time tuesday to monday so there is no uh, uh, leave in between right so uh, maybe we can we can decide if we have some public holiday so based on that we can decide otherwise i will uh, have the classes on all seven days okay and we'll share the uh, yeah please and you just one quick question sorry to interrupt uh do we have a self-paced course for this or it's just the uh, instructor-led training is only there for this course so, so instructor-led training is there so far okay so there is no self-paced mm -hmm. yeah yeah so there is no okay. such uh maybe we'll we'll decide in, in future as well okay okay thank you perfect so we'll we'll share the class recordings we'll provide the software and learning material we'll share also the code so uh, all the participants who will register with us so we'll create one portal we'll pr uh, provide the id and password for that and you can access the class recording suppose you missed some classes so you can watch the video and you can uh, walk you through the code uh, and if you have some question you can you can raise in the next classes okay so we'll share all the cl uh, class recording software and learning material okay so now we'll move to the frequently asked questions so these are basically uh, questions that uh, most students uh, have asked in the previous batches so that's i have uh, clubbed all the questions so that will be easier for us uh, to to navigate right and it will be easier for all of the students also to understand the uh, information in more clear way right so the first is can i get the r software yes so r software is uh, free you can download anywhere or if you have some difficulties i will uh, guide you how to install that what material i will get in this course so we'll get the uh, handout you'll get the uh, class recordings you'll get the course right you can practice on its own and if you have questions so uh, you can you can uh, raise in your uh, questions in the next subsequent classes I will uh, I will uh, walk you through this uh, frequently asked questions and if you have any question please stop me in between I will happy to explain and how many days I can attend the free classes so there are two free classes so one is today and then next is tomorrow on the same link you can join and uh, on the same time right how, uh, who will install our software in my computer so I will uh, guide you how to install and if you find some difficulties I will happy to help uh, in between so maybe you can you can ask your question in between uh, maybe in next classes and i will help you what if i miss the classes so we'll provide the recording session we'll provide the codes and you can watch those uh, recordings after the class right and if you miss the class or maybe if you wanted to watch once again so you can use that uh, opportunity so we'll provide the uh, one portal we'll create all uh, one portal for all the students who will register with us and will share the id and password uh, for each of uh, each of them right and you can watch those uh, recordings can i join rejoin the course if i discontinued to personal reason yes you can re rejoin but uh, you can do this uh, twice in a year right and if you have some genuine reason so you, you can join uh, later as well 
can I get any task after each class? So we will provide when we do the uh, case study. So over there we'll uh, we'll pro provide a TFL cell, Adam data set, SDM data sets from the scratch, and we'll I'll, I'll uh, provide you the homework to create some tables from uh, using your own uh, coding logic. Right? So we'll provide the task, and in between also I'll ask you to create some data sets in a specific way. Right? So we'll provide the task as well. Uh, I'll ask you to create the table. I'll ask you to create the figure and listing. And I also ask you to create some data sets like Adam data set or SDTM data sets after uh, having some classes, right? Can I ask question in middle? Yes, you are, you, are, uh, you are eligible to ask any question anytime. So please stop me in between if you have some burning questions. Otherwise, uh, keep your question at the end and we will have some uh, questions and session at the end. I have program issue. Can I share my screen in the meeting? Yes, you can share your screen in the meeting and I will be happy to explain the, uh, your issue related to the programming. Uh, when you send the payment details, so course currenter will uh, provide you the link for the payment detail. You can follow that link and you can have, I guess, two days, two or three days. So within that, you have to pay that uh, amount. And how long I will have access to the student portal? So basically, this is for one year. Uh, you can uh, access those uh, recordings and the code and uh, you can practice a number of times right you can watch the video and uh, visit the uh, course a number of times within a period of one year right is this same meeting link for the, all the classes no so for demonstration class you can follow the same link but after that uh, we will update the uh, fresh link for those who have uh, who, who, who will register with us right Am I, uh, I am from a non-programming background. Can I learn this course? Yes, so we are starting this course for all the associates, all the participants who doesn't have any programming background, right? So this is, is this course is for uh, all of us who doesn't have a programming background. If you have your programming background, so that will be uh, added advantages. But if you don't have, don't feel bad, right? So we'll start from the scratch and we'll help you uh, here from the beginning, right? Can I get job support after this training? So uh, we don't have any such uh, uh, facilities, but if we have some paid type of that, we'll provide, we'll guide you uh, from uh, from our uh, uh, expert team. So it's, uh, uh, you have to uh, check with the course coordinator and he will guide you how to uh, avail these facilities. So basically we'll, we'll take, uh, we'll provide you some uh, devoted mentor and that will guide you on a specific way. But as such, this is very popular course, so you can <clears throat> you can get various LinkedIn feeds or Coursera feeds, right? And you can apply there and you can get the job support. Do we provide any references uh, to get clinical R programming job? Excuse me. Yes, we will share some links and for the job support, you can follow that link and you can provide uh, your uh, uh, details, right? And you can contact with uh, the various uh, organizations that are providing the jobs and you can apply and you can utilize those facilities based on your needs, right? We will guide you how to do that and we'll share the link as well. And after that, is there any prerequisite before enrolling this course? Yes, you have some a basic one. So you should have some uh, degree level course, master level, MSc or uh, equivalent to that. So that you have some basic or some programming uh, rationale, right? So, but there is no programming as such requirement here. So this is very plain English sort of code, right? What we have in R, right? So everyone can understand. But you should have some basic programming logics right uh, what is the course uh, cost of this course so this uh, is 40000 in indian rupees and if you convert uh, it is around 540 dollar i guess if i remember correctly or maybe you can contact to the course coordinator for exact uh, number uh, when you will send the payment details so course coordinator will send the payment detail for uh, all of us uh, and you can follow that link uh, to do the payment I'm in America. Can I ask someone to do the payment? Yes, you can. You can do that. We need just 40,000. Anyone can pay me uh, from India or anywhere, anywhere else, right? 
how much salary for fresher and experienced person in india and in us so uh, basically this is uh, some sort of uh, maybe i'll not provide the exact number so three to four lakhs for the fresher in india and uh, for each year of experience for every one year of experience it will add up to three to four lakhs so if you have one year of experience so we sh you you must have uh, you should have uh, six to seven lakhs in india and similarly uh, you, you there are some changes in the usa because of location and all right so so similar sort of uh, ranges you can think of i'm working in an organization for different role what will i do now so this is a great opportunity right you can utilize this opportunity to up skill your skills right and you can learn this r programming course and you can utilize in your cv and you can utilize this knowledge in your organization or in your part that that you are working on right when your next class and what is the time so tomorrow we'll do the our next class at the same time and i'll cover the remaining part i'll uh, walk you through the detail what we'll cover in the course first part what we'll cover in the second part now i'll uh, and also i'll show you how to create the table and figure right and this is the uh, all uh, you can you can visit here and our whatsapp if you have some burning questions and now we'll move to the question and session so if you have any question you can you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask here Yes, excuse me. Uh, actually, uh, there is a technical issue I want to raise first because I tried to call using the U.S. number, uh, okay. but nobody, nobody answered. I remained on the mm -hmm. uh, like waiting, and then it disconnect. So there, uh, there is a specific time to call. Maybe I'm calling at night in India. So I don't know because there are some questions mm -hmm. which are specific to my case. Which okay. Okay. Might might be boring to other students that's why i want to you know okay, so maybe you can you can check with the whatsapp number or maybe you can uh, utilize this email id right and you can pose your question uh, maybe and they will respond based on your uh, whatsapp also is not is not uh, is not uh, you know the communication is not that easy to understand and to follow with them and you know um so probably i should use uh, then the email Exactly, uh, that will be a yeah, better one. Maybe yeah, you can pose better. your question. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Okay, the second question What is the difference between this course and the, the clinical research management course? I don't know the uh, in detail the clinical management course, but here we'll cover the uh, clinical reporting, right? Uh, clinical R programming using uh, using mm. the software R, right? So we generally use the software uh, SAS, right? But here we'll utilize the potential of R, and we'll uh, we'll cover all the aspects what we'll do generally in clinical R program, right? So we'll create the data okay. set, we'll create the table, we'll create the listing, we'll create so the. The difference is the okay the the software, but by clinical R you mean um, is it mainly focused on clinical analysis of clinical trials, or you will go to other types of analysis like? survival analysis and ROC curves and regression and those stuff or well, yeah so we'll yeah. cover the survival analysis but uh, for ROC and ROC curve and other modeling part will not cover here because of yeah. time limitations and if you have some time maybe it will will I'll walk you through in the end uh, of the course mm -hmm. okay. but we basically thank cover the much. reporting and yeah welcome okay thank you yeah, any questions so Ranjit yeah please uh, do you have like uh, is this the only batch timing available like are there any weekend batch or something like that so as such we don't have maybe we can we can uh, plan based on the feed right based on the requ requirement but this is the only th that we are initiating here so okay. you want uh, the classes only on the space weekend right I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. Because the th thing is, like, uh, uh, from seven till eight thirty in the morning, and then I have to leave to the office. So by that time I reach office, it would be late. So I was planning if we can, uh, if there would be some, you know, weekend batch or something like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your response. Maybe I'll I'll, I'll uh, talk to the course coordinator and yeah. we'll decide accordingly. Okay. Yes. 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 And also, suppose if there are no weekend batches, then. Like in a year, do you have like after this batch? When will be your second batch? After this, when after completing this seventy-eight hours, you give how much time and take the second batch? 
uh, maybe after uh, two and a half months, we will start the next batch. So it's like a, if you after three or four months again, you will come up with a new batch, right? Exactly, exactly. Three months. Uh... Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll talk to the course coordinator and we'll do some sort of uh, modification in time and maybe we'll plan some sort of weekend batch for the, uh, the colleague like you, right? So. Thank you for your yes, response. If, if, you do, if there, there are any, uh, you know, like options like that, then please let us know. Sure, sure, sure. Because sure. that would I, be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll jot down your name. Okay, perfect. Krishna, Krishna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll jot down. Okay, any further question? Any comments? Anything? Yeah, uh, yeah, Ranjit Vijay, this side. Uh, I am from a SAS background. I know SAS program. So while you're teaching R programming, can you correlate this course with the SAS data SAS what we do? Yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll do that. That will be really helpful for you as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, do that. I'll correlate that part. No problem. And you said that in student portal the videos will be available for only one year? Uh, yes, so video will be available. yeah because of cloud and all because we are running various courses right so we have to uh, we have to shift uh, the location and shift the file. Okay, currently I'm working on uh, one of the organizations here, okay. so I didn't get a time after the uh, joining this course. I didn't get a time to look into that video. So it, will it be lapsed after one year? Uh, maybe I'll talk to the uh, course coordinator for that, but uh, generally we uh, we sh will keep those portal active for one year and after that we'll deactivate that because of uh, compliance and all, right? So we have to uh, enroll the another students and similarly we have to provide the location. But I'll talk to the uh, course coordinator and we'll uh, we'll think uh, some some way, right, around that. Okay. 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 One last question. Uh... You said that uh, uh, our studio will have all the packages. Is okay. it limited to each version or every version will have all the packages? For example, uh, have all the packages. It is, uh, so it will not have all the packages. We have to install a specific packages, and it will work for all the all the uh, all the packages, irrespective of the version, right? So if you install the packages, and suppose the package is updated with the latest version, so in that case the uh, R studio will take the latest one right so this is the way how it works okay thanks mm -hmm. and we have the, the admiral we will cover the admiral in more detail no worries uh Rajit, okay. one question uh, uh in terms of this course uh does it motivate in in future for us uh, in order to build up some kind of an application within R for automation, like how we have for SAS, we run, we uh, get to learn about base SAS programming in advance, and at some point in time we can, you know, automate certain tasks which are repetitive. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I, I'll show you uh, when uh, when I discuss in more detail the function part, right? So you using that, and there are other tools as well in R. So R Shiny. So using that you can automate the various tables. You can you can create a, a package that will have the TFL sales, that will have the data sales, that will have the figure, right? And you can uh, you can use that uh, R Shiny app to populate all the parts, right? It will handle very sophisticated analysis as well. So what we have to do, you have to create an R package or R Studio, uh, R Shiny app, right? And over that we have to just call the specific data sets. Suppose you have created your R shiny based on the Adam data sets. So you have to just call the Adam data sets and it will create all the table listing and figure. Right. So you can do that. But this is not that uh, much uh, extensive. So this is generally basic one. Right. But after having s s this information, this knowledge, you can utilize uh, some sort of uh, advanced part. Right. R shiny. You will just search and then after that, you will create uh, the packages. To automate some specific task. Okay. So basically, this course R have R shiny as well. Uh, sorry. Okay. Maybe you can. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no problem. Maybe you can, you can ask one by one. I will happy to. Explain. Yeah. Please. Yeah. I, I'll go. Uh, does this course will have R shiny as well? 
नो दिस कोर्स डजेंट हैव आर शाइनी बट इफ टाइम परमिट्स आई विल कवर एट द एंड राइट बट दीज आर बेसिकली फॉर द रिपोर्टिंग ऑफ क्रिएटिंग ऑफ एडम डेटा सेट क्रिएटिंग ऑफ एस टी डेटा सेट क्रिएटिंग ऑफ टेबल लिस्टिंग एंड फिगर राइट बट इफ टाइम परमिट्स आई आई शो यू वन और टू क्लासेस एट द एंड हाउ टू यूज दैट आर शाइनी एंड क्रिएट दट एप ओके थैंक यू someone is also asking something maybe uh, could you please unmute and then i forget the name okay any further question uh, hi randeep hello i can hear you yeah, please go ahead Mm-hmm. I need to do it after completion of this course. Mm-hmm. You need to do any certification like SAS. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. There is no certification required. So this is uh, quite uh, sufficient, right? So you can utilize your knowledge and you can you can train yourself, right? So no certification required. We don't have any uh, certification as such, right? Uh, what we have mm-hmm. in our right, uh, what we have in SAS, base SAS certification and all. So SAS. yeah, here knowledge matters. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Please. Any further questions? No. Uh, in general, yeah, there is no certification. Uh, in general. No problem. Yeah, Maybe we can ask one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Ranjit. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I have a question. See, I just finished my SAS, uh, you know, training, and I cleared my certification. So, do you think it is too early for me to, you know, learn this SAS? Sorry, R. No, or no, is no, it no. Right no. decision. It or, is the right time. How do you? It is the right time because you have just uh, run the. Uh, you have just learned uh, SAS, uh, and you have. fresh mind right so you can utilize because yeah. here we have a different chunk of code right suppose you, you use proc import to importing a file here you like read dot mm-hmm. csv or read dot excel read underscore excel to import that so you can correlate very easy right so this is right okay so uh, what is the difficulty level when compared to sas do you think r is so r is very easy as compared to sas uh, in syntax wise in calling mm-hmm. a specific task right Uh, or in performing a specific mm-hmm. task right so this is very easy believe me maybe you'll appreciate after one or two classes right you'll appreciate uh, okay. good, yeah so this is very easy so, so with, this language yeah okay so with respect to you know this visualizations or the whatever the outputs we generate by using sas so uh, is the our same output we are going to generate through r right Yes, yes. So we can uh, use R and we can create more sophisticated graph, high dimensions uh, graph. So I'll sh- I'll I'll show you tomorrow when I create the figure. Okay. So we can create here very uh, high definitions graph and we can create also the dynamic graph as well, right? So basically, we are going to use same kind of da- data sets which we use for uh, SAS and also the you know standardization rules or uh, SOPs whatever we follow. Those are all uh, fall under R also, or uh, do you think it's a totally different stream as yeah, same nomenclature, same uh, variable naming convention, right? And here the difference yeah. is we'll use R instead of SAS. That's all. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. Please. Uh, mm. Yes. Please. Yeah, Ranjit. Likewise, we do the SAS certification for base and advanced, right? Mm-hmm. Does R have any basic or advanced certification course uh, uh, examination? Uh, no, there are various uh, platform, but uh, I don't think that is necessary, right? So, if we have some knowledge, you can write in the CV and you can place here over there the data set that will provide and. a case study so you can mention that i have some exposure of uh, this uh, working on r so i have created a uh, adam stm and tfl cells using r uh, right so you can write there uh, and there is no certification required as such okay uh, i'm asking this question why because if company asks any you have any certification for r then what 
so they generally do, is it don't available ask, in yeah, market because, to write that uh, so there are a whole lot of things so if if you see in the market so there are various applications various courses right so it, it based on the utility whether they will ask or not right so based on that you can you can perform but i don't think it it is necessary right yeah, at the end your knowledge and your skills matters right so you can you can you can do in that way okay thanks we'll provide you, you the certification of uh, participation here right and we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll provide that part we, we will also provide that you have work on the live project right so i at the end i'll i'll share some data set i'll share protocols sap and tfl cells and using that you can you can uh, we will uh, we will guide you how to create those uh, tfl cells data sets and all right So, Ranjit, okay. when will you uh, let us let me know? Like, would you be having a weekend batch or not? Because if you have a weekend batch, then I will uh, join that only. Uh, so we have to see how many people are joining, right? So accordingly, we have to decide. So I, I'll, I'll jot down your name already. So maybe I'll, I'll convey you. Uh, maybe I'll ask course okay, coordinator to contact you. And, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. But uh, in near future, I, I don't think we are starting in, uh, in in one month or two months, right? So maybe after that, we'll, we'll think and we'll decide. So, so, the, what, so now you will... Yeah, yeah. What you can do, you can enroll here. Uh, this is just a suggestion. Maybe you can, you can utilize based on your need. So what you can do, you can just watch the video after that. So suppose you have uh, some classes, uh, some you have to go to the office uh, after 8. So what you will do, you will join classes after uh, till 8. And after that, you can you can watch the recording. And uh, Maybe you have some question, you can pose your in the next days. So you can do that. <clears throat> because for weekend batches, mm -hmm. we have to think the number of people. So, uh, and accordingly, sorry, we have to decide. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. Thank no. you. Any questions from anyone? Uh, so, Ran uh, Ranjit, my last question. So, uh, when you are going to start the regular classes apart from this demo? Uh, yeah. So there is there will be two demos. So one is today, and then the remaining is tomorrow, right? And after that, we'll start from mm -hmm. the beginning. Uh, the job profile and then so uh, what is the uh, date uh, so from uh, uh, let me let me pull the date here uh, this uh, today is seven so we'll start from the ninth from thursday onwards okay okay, okay. any further questions So if you have any further question, if you need to, uh, you know, contact the course coordinator, this is the number, right? This is the actually the machine number, right? Like, uh, no, 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 no. You can, you can, you can use this WhatsApp number as well as this India number, this number, and you can use that. Okay. Otherwise, if 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 you will not get the responses, so you can use the email ID because time differences and all, right? So that may create issues. Okay. Better to write, uh, pose your Perfect. question on the email, and they will respond based on their. Uh, Availability, right? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Welcome. Any further question? If you don't have, maybe we'll stop because everyone have to go to the office. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ranjit, I just want to quickly thank you. Uh, uh, I think uh, your experience shows in the explanation, and thank you for you know having patience to take our questions. Uh, it was really nice to you know attend your demo session. Yeah, I'm happy so, to help. Yeah. And uh, looking forward for further more interactions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pass on my feedback. Thank you so much, Ranjit. Okay, thank you. If you don't have any question, maybe we'll stop for the day and we'll see you tomorrow. Maybe Thanks. I'll pause for Bye. a couple of seconds. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time and see you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you, Ranjit. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, thank you. So, uh, anyone who has joined this class uh, today itself? Yeah, actually, Hari Mandari joined today. Okay, okay. So, let me, uh, maybe I'll walk you through what we have did yesterday. 
so there are two uh, this is a demonstration classes right so we will have two classes one class we, i took yesterday and this is the second one so here i just uh, walk you through the outline of the course and what we do basically in this clinical r programming course right so this is some sort of uh, uh, overview right so what we can do using r so yesterday i just uh, that was the basic one so i just walk you through the course details and the frequently asked questions and apart from this so i have uh, uh, written here few lines of code uh, to execute a particular function right so let me walk you through one by one and then uh, we'll move to the remaining part so in r we have a, a concept of a working directory so whatever the so this is the r studio right so first of all I just wanted to explain uh, this R Studio. So this is R Studio. So this is a graphical user interface, and here we write the code. Okay. So if you notice here, we have four windows. So the, this one is the editor window, and if you see the down, so this is uh, plot files and packages window. Then if you see the right hand side, so right hand side also we have two. One is at the top, and the second is at the bottom. So the top is the console terminal and background and then uh, bottom is the environment and history connection tutorials okay so here we'll write the code in editor window we'll write the code and whatever the code that will execute it will send here in the console and if you create any data sets variable files so it will be created under the environment right so first of all i just wanted to check what is the working directory uh, for this r right so here we have a concept of working directory whatever the task will perform so it will store or it will point on a particular location okay so uh, because all the uh, all the work what we do so it basically stores uh, on a physical memory okay so for so, so for that we we need uh, uh, some keyword to extract what is the working directory right so where it pointed out so if i run this so this is the command kit wt so if you run this command so it will point out then this is the working directory of r right now right so you can set to another location as well so using this set wt right and you can set an, a specific location where you have some file or that you wanted to access in r right so you can utilize this uh, keyword set wt to set a working directory on a particular location okay so this was the first concept then i moved to the uh, creation of variable right so variable nomenclature and all we have the similar uh, convention right what we have in another programming language so we can start with the cap uh, we can start with the um, uh, alphabets right we cannot start with the number right so these are the basic nomenclature i will explain in more detail when we proceed uh, in the course right so here i have created a, some variable so name i am creating one variable here and i am assigning this andrew to the name right and this is the assignment operator so, so this is basically a left assignment operator so what basically uh, here we are doing so i'm assigning this entry to a object name okay so this is the way uh, if i run this so for running a particular line of code you can uh, place the pointer on a particular line and you can press this run button here okay or what you can do you can just uh, press control and enter at the same time uh, in a keyboard right so this is the way how we'll run the code so if you run this code if you notice here it will send the uh, the particular line and it will provide whether uh, that line is executed or not right so if if there is no error so it will uh, it will not give anything warning or error in green or uh, maybe uh, in red right and here it creates a value in the environment section right so if you notice the, there is one value name and the uh, na name is a variable name and andrew is the uh, particular value okay so this is the way how we'll create and it's, this R is a case sensitive. So we have to keep in mind that uh, which variable and which case we are using, right? Suppose I have created here name in uh, lower case. And if I call, uh, if I call NAME name, so this is fine because we are calling in the same way. But if I write instead of small letter, if I write here name, and if I run this, so it will not work because this object is not available here in the environment uh, because this is a case sensitive. So we have to, keep in mind right so let me uh, jot down here r is okay. 
right suppose we wanted to create uh, multiple names right so the first is andrew then rahul and zia so what we have to do we have to use another operator this is a combine operator right so we have to combine all three objects and then we can store that object uh, to the variable name right so if i run with control enter and if i run the variable so it will print here all three objects right and if you notice here so uh, this is uh, this is the indicator this is one this is the second element and this is the third element because uh, whatever the object will create whether it is a character or numeric r stores uh, those objects into a vector format right so that's why we have here one two and three okay and using that uh, that operator that placeholder or indexes we can extract that uh, the object from the individual variable or a data frame right suppose i create the numeric one so similarly we can write uh, without the double quote right and if you wanted to print so you can use print keyword and pass the variable name <coughs> sorry so these are the three uh, uh, values okay and if i just pass the variable and then pro, uh, press control enter so it will print as it is but this is called the explicit print because here we are using the function uh, print but he, uh, in the second line at line 24 we are not using any print option so that is called implicit print so we will just call the variable and it will print the uh, observation so these are the two different way how we'll print the values for a particular variable okay suppose we wanted to extract uh, uh, some object from this uh, variable name age so what we'll do so suppose we wanted to extract the third so this is the third element so how we'll do we'll write here uh, variable name and then big bracket and within that we have to provide the placeholder or indices or indexes so if you notice the 26 is at the third position 25 is at second position and 23 is the first position suppose you wanted to extract the third uh, 26 so we'll write here three okay suppose we wanted to extract uh, element a second element so how we'll write we'll write the variable name then big bracket and we'll place here two so it will extract the second element so using that we can subset right suppose i wanted to subset uh, second and third element so how we'll do we'll write two colon three if we run and suppose i wanted to assign here age underscore updated right so i'll creating here another variable age updated and where we have two observation 25th and 26 all right so using this we can subset <coughs> and this also work in the same way for the character vector right so here we can also uh, do the subsetting and all now we have a keyword structure so str is the keyword and using that we can we can see what are the structure of the variable whether it is a numeric whether it is a character and all right so if i run str to uh, age so if you notice here we have num so that means this is a numeric variable and here we have three objects one two three and these are the individual values okay any questions so far because these are just a brush of what we did yesterday so some of our new so maybe i'll I take the opportunity to uh, wind the class okay okay i'll consider silence as no so maybe we'll do the question in the session at the end so you can you can uh, ask that question okay so so far we have created the variable and over there if you notice so this name is the character variable and here we have uh, all the objects are in character format right similarly we have age and here the objects are in numeric format right so what we wanted to create suppose we wanted to create a data set or data frame where we have a character as well as the numeric objects uh, all together in one uh, data frame so what we'll do we have here the concept of data frame so data frame is same what we have in another programming language like sas and uh, other programming language as data so that is data sets right so these two are same uh, there is some differences in nomenclature right so data frame we have, so how we'll create the data frame so we'll provide here uh, the keyword uh, data dot frame and then we have to pass the variable where we have the values right so if you notice in name we have three values andrew rahul Zia, and for the age also we have three values okay so we have 
to just pass those variable and we have to uh, press control enter so this is the data frame so if you notice the earlier values whatever the variable we have created so these are under values but if you notice a df that we just created right so these are coming under data so what i did here i just created a data frame and then i assigned that data frame to an object df right so df is the actual data frame so this is the name of the data frame right and here if you're creating data frame so the uh, you should have the same number of objects in each variable right so name should have the same number of objects and also the age should have the same number of objects right if you don't have then it will uh, give error and it will not create that data frame right so this is the one thing that we have to keep in mind suppose i use here a df a structure of the df so it will provide the structure so this is a data frame df is a data frame here we have three objects and two variables and these are the two variables first is name then age the name is a character and uh, age is a numeric one right and these are the respective values okay now i'll what i'll do i'll just call one uh, excel file and uh, using that we'll do some sort of uh, summary statistics calculation right so i have stored that file on this location so first of all i'll do the setting of working directory okay on a particular location and we can do the setting of working directory in this two way right we can use here two slash right and we can use here one uh, backward slash right so this is the way how we can set the working directory so you can use any any one of them okay and suppose i wanted to call uh, excel file right so this is the file that uh, i have here at a particular location show you so this is the excel file that i wanted to call so in r we have a predefined uh, library right or packages so we have the package uh, read excel right so first of all what we have to do we have to install that package into uh, into this r console right and then we have to call or load that package okay so first of all i have to install using this keyword i install dot packages and within the uh, parentheses and within double quote we have to write read excel right so once you install that so you have to load that or call that package so for calling we have a keyword library and within the parentheses we have to use the package name okay so this is the way how we install and call a particular package so every time if you close this r session and if you are opening again so you have to just call not uh, do not need to install this uh, this installer package command so you can directly call so without calling you cannot use that uh, functionality right so every time if you close your r session you have to call a particular library uh, to your uh, to your uh, console right so now what we do we use this uh, read underscore excel uh, command to call that file right so this is the file and we have to uh, so first of all we have to write read underscore excel okay and within the parentheses and within that double quote we have to provide the file name so this is the file name right and dot extension we have to write okay so if i run this so this is the file if you notice here data and if i pass here the structure of data so it will provide the whole structure what we have for the data so if you notice this is a, a one a 483 observation and 12 variables and this is data frame right and if you notice all the variable uh, and their type so first uh, site name is numeric then subject ID is uh, numeric and then other variables are of a different data type right so character then POSIX LX POSIX T POSIX CT POSIX LT these are the formats for the dates right and similarly the other variable are in character format right so now we have to uh, we have to do the summary statistics for uh, mean mode median we will calculate so for that we have to convert these variables so uh, we'll use this age underscore years then height underscore cm bmi and weight so if you notice these all are in character format so first of all we have to convert into a numeric one and then we'll do the operations okay so how we'll do that so first of all here we have uh, one package that is deployer so we have to call that so those who have not installed you can use this installer package keyword and you can install that package and you have to call so what is the functionality of deflyer 
So Diplad is a very good package. So here, uh, this package is extensively used for data processing, data processing, data munging, right? So suppose you wanted to modify the data, if you wanted to convert, or if you wanted to do some sort of transformation or some sort of summary statistics calculation, so you can use this Diplad package, and this is very handy. Okay. So here we'll use a pipe operator uh, for now. So pipe operator is a uh, is an operator. And this allow us to do the uh, programming in a sequential way, right? So this will reduce our code. So what it means basically? Suppose we wanted to uh, apply the filter of safety population on the data frame and this data, right? So if you notice here, we have a, a safety underscore pop, uh, safety underscore pop. Now we have efficacy underscore pop. Suppose we wanted to select only those subjects who have safety population is equal to yes right and then we wanted to convert this character variable into a numeric one right so what we'll do we'll just call the data okay after that we'll use the pipe operator okay so this is the pipe operator symbol percent then greater than symbol and percent so this is the a symbol of pipe operator so what it does it just call this data sets and after that it'll apply the filter of this safety population then it will convert this uh, variable into a uh, into a numeric one right and this is the way how we'll create so this is the mutate for creating additional variable okay so pipe is very handy and it will reduce our code so we ha we have just created one data frame df1 and we have uh, uh, we have applied here various functions we have applied we have applied the filtering of safety population then we have converted the age into numeric bmi into numeric weight and height and after that we have converted this use subject id we have created use subject id and then we have uh, we have kept those variables that are necessary for uh, the remaining work right so the pipe is very handy and it allows so it it can do the uh, programming or it can we can apply the logic in a sequential man manner right so first it calls this data says after that it applies the uh, filter after applying the filter it will execute this line right and after executing uh, this creating new variables it will just keep these variables that are necessary for uh, the further work right so this is very handy and we can we can see some more advanced feature of pipe in the later uh, section of the course right so this is all about the pipe and deployer okay now we have uh, if i run this uh, this line of code so if you notice df1 so these are the variable that we we have created right and we can use this variable for the creating of listing right so listing is basically those who do, doesn't have idea what listing means so listing is basically an individual patients report right so here we'll report all the patients so if you notice here in df here we have 446 observation and nine variables right so these are the individual suppose here if you notice 101 is the patient id and the race of that patient is white, and sex is female, and this is the date of birth, and TRTA is a particular sort of medication that the person is taking. Uh, her age is 57, BMI is 26.31, right? And then respective other variables like weight and height. So you can think of uh, different or distinct 446 subjects and having different baseline race information, sex information, and date of birth, right? And age and other information so we'll report as it is so that is called a listing okay so here i have used uh, the uh, another package uh, r2rtf so r2rtf is a package that uh, allow us to create the rtf file right so here this is a line of code so no need to worry so we will explain e e each line in more detail in subsequent courses so this is just a demonstration that's why i just showed uh, outline right so if I run this, so I'll show you the listing what we have created. So it will be in the same folder. Uh, what is the name? Demo listing. Let's go RTF. Yeah. So this is the listing. We can modify. So this is the variable name that we have kept, right? Column header, and this is the body, right? And this is title we can shift to the left hand side right hand side or we can change the font as well okay so this is basic uh, reporting of listing 
okay any question so far maybe we'll move to the table creation hope this is clear to everyone I'll wait a couple of seconds then I'll keep silence as low. So maybe feel free to ask, don't feel uh, hesitated. Can you, can you show the screen, please? I asked one question. Uh, so, our screen, right? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, please. And actually, I'm seeing here actually when we're creating the data sets that auto automatically come to the environment. Mm -hmm. New yeah. data sets. Yeah, yeah. So, and if you, yeah, if you create, if you run this line of code, so it will create the data set tf1 and it will send here in the environment right and here it will provide the line of code and if you have any error so it will notice it will provide here in the red mark right so if you notice the earlier one so when we run name so it was not available so that's why it provided the error and the color is red right? and it will not create anything here in the environment Normally, we uh, in SAS we can uh, say uh, log, we can say all every time. So, so maybe here we can see the console. Uh, yeah, so you can you can uh, what you can resonance this console as a log, and you can uh, you can uh, can think environment as a library, right? So work library maybe you can you can think of. Okay. Yeah, and one more question, please. Yeah. And we are seeing here percentage greater than percentage. Um, here yeah. we can use and. Yeah, so this is the thing. this is the pipe operator right and we are using mm -hmm. this pipe operator because we are applying multiple function on our, on our data sets right and if you if you apply multiple function on a data sets right or multiple operation on a data set and if you didn't want to create different data sets right because the problem yes. here is uh, whatever the whatever the data set and file you will create it will be stored on your physical memory right so all things are storing on physical memory so if you create whole lot of data right so your system may crash after some time, right? And it also depends mm -hmm. on the size of the data. So it is better to create one data set and apply various or multiple functions on that, right? So for that, we have the pipe operator. So what we are doing basically, we are calling this data. After that, we are applying here the safety population filter, okay? Then after safety population, it will move to the next line and it create these many variables, right? And after that, it's kept this variable for, for the further uh, reporting and further activities, right? So these are the way it works in a sequential way, manner. And this is, uh, uh, this is created basically to optimize the memory, optimize the line of code, right? Yeah, I can understand. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Any questions from anyone? Okay. Hi, hi, yeah. Ranjit Man. Yeah, please. Uh, we don't have any note and warning in the R. Sorry. Only we uh, in SAS we have log in log we have the note and warning, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Have here also log we have, and warning. Yeah, here also we have warnings, but uh, so the, I did like any specific thing that creates warning, right? So that's why we have. But maybe, believe me, maybe if I do some sort of mistake, so it will pop up here in the body, right? The warning will be uh, presented uh, using the keyword, using the function. Warning is a specific function in R, right? So that will uh, that will uh, will be used to uh, show the warning in the console, right? So if you notice here, this is the error. So error is shown here using the function stop, right? And if you have error, it will stop the code. It will not execute further. But if you have warning, so the code will be executed, but it will show some sort of indication or notification that these are happening in the data sets, right? So that is the thing. So it will have the warning as well. So maybe <laughs> if you proceed, you will see the warning as well. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Any further questions? from anyone okay so maybe i'll move to the table creation part so here i'll i'll call one uh, package uh, so here uh, in r the basically the uh, mechanism of work is a bit different right so in sas we have different procs so instead of that if you wanted to relate with sas so you can relate uh, different procs as a, a package or library right and we are calling that particular library to perform a specific task, right? 
so suppose we wanted to create some sort of uh, give me a second suppose we wanted to create a table so for that we have here the package uh, table one right so for that we have to just install let me write comment creating table so here we have to install first uh, the package table one right so i have already installed so i will not do that because it will just overwrite and it will uh, use the memory uh, unnecessary memory right so i will just directly call that so for calling or loading so we have the keyword library and here we have to write table one okay so this is fine if we have some error so it will notify here in the console but if we are not giving so it is not giving so we are good to go okay so what we'll do next we will create the table so for that we have to write here table one table one and then we have to pass the variable one by one right so suppose we wanted to use uh, first variable as age underscore num so suppose we wanted to uh, see how, how many variables are available in df right so what we'll do we'll write here call names and we'll write here df underscore uh, df1 right so if i run this so these are the variables so there are other option also we can write here names and df1 so it will populate all the variables so there there are two ways so there are various other ways also but these are very handy so you can use these variables uh, you can use this option right to populate the variable name so suppose you wanted to use the age underscore num first after that we have to use uh, the different variable right suppose you wanted to use race so we can copy race and we'll paste here suppose you wanted to use sex so we'll write here sex variable and this is case sensitive so we have to keep in mind so if you notice this sex is in capital letter so we have to use here in the capital letter after that suppose you wanted to use here bmi so we'll use here bmi so i'm just arranging the variable in the specific order that we wanted to uh, report in uh, right so you can use another uh, order as well so no problem so let me copy this one as well and here we have to write here data is equal to tf1 okay so suppose i run this so it will show here a table are you able to see this part So this is the table. Yes. So if you notice, it will automatically identify which are the numeric variable, which are the character one, and it will uh, show a specific uh, type of summary. So here, if you notice, we have mean and standard deviation. So by default, it will take this one, but we wanted to add n, so we can add and add n as well. We can create here Q1, Q3, right? So we can do that. So we will, uh, we will, I will show you uh, at the later section of the course. Uh, how we can modify this uh, different uh, characteristics right suppose here if you notice the age underscore num is not a good label so we can modify the label as well and uh, for different all the all the uh, variables right and here if you notice we have we have having table uh, only for, uh, for the overall right suppose you wanted to this separate uh, separate or segregate this table by the treatment so you can use that the treatment variable so how we'll do we have to use here uh, we have to use here the keyword uh, trt so trt is the variable okay so it is in capital letter so we have to write in the same way so if i run this so it will populate the table right so if you notice earlier we don't have the trt a and trt b but now we have the trt a and trt b okay and these are the respective header counts okay now I'll uh, uh, rename the label, right? And then uh, I'll create the unit as well, because if you notice, age is in years, so we don't have here anything that is why that age is capturing in the year unit, right? Similarly, BMI, uh, similarly for the weight and height, right? So I'll provide the unit as well. So how we'll do? We'll write here the label, label, and then we have to use the data frame df1 right and the dollar symbol uh, suppose we are for the race 
so we'll write here uh, race and then assignment operator and here we'll write race so if you notice race is in capital letter but we are providing in a running or prop case so it will execute accordingly right so if you notice earlier it was in capital letter if i go to the left hand side here go back so it will show the previous one right so this is in capital letter but if you convert so it will in a running letter right a prop case okay similarly we can use uh, the label for other variables tf1 and then dollar symbol uh, suppose we wanted to write age underscore now you read age so age is a label suppose you wanted to write units so how will that we'll write here units and here also we have to write in the same way tf data frame name then dollar symbol and here we'll write age now and what will be the unit unit is in years okay so maybe i'll run one by one and then we'll show the table so if you notice so earlier we have just age underscore now now we have age and years okay similarly we can repeat for the remaining ones right let me do right away we can copy and we can paste or maybe we, i can write here label df1 the next variable is bmi i'll write here bmi label df1 wait You can stop me in between if you have burning question right but i will give you time at the end for the or maybe in middle as well for the question answer right so these are the way uh, how we have created the label for remaining variables here we create the unit as well so let me copy and paste so we have the bit here no. Hello, Ranjit. Yeah, Sorry please. for disturbing. No, 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 no. Please, yeah. So every, yeah, every time we have to write like label like and uh, is there any single uh, operator? Exactly. Exactly. We have to write. Yeah. So we have to specify uh, sing um, individually for each variable. We have to write, or uh, we have any uh, anything like that to single for to write single. Uh, no, for we all, have to. Uh, uh, here we have to specify in one by one for each variable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in uh, the space is not mandatory means not specific here in uh, the first case in the case of race. Mm -hmm. uh, DS yeah, so one is, you mentioned yeah, yeah. one space. Yeah. Yeah. So this is space and not required. Not required. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So here we have height is in centimeter and weight is in kg. And then BMI KG and to square. Right, so let me run one by one. Okay, so if I show you, so this is the final one, right? Okay, so this is the way how we'll create the table. Uh, and now I'll report. So this is uh, just a uh, different format. So uh, earlier for the listing, I have reported in the RTF format. We can report here this as also in the RTF format, but I'll do another format. I'll use uh, so that you can understand how we can export the data into different formats. So I'll use the CSV format, right? So what I'll do, I'll create one object here, tab, and I'll store into the tab. So if I call you, if I call this tab, so it will show here one data frame uh, okay okay so this is the data frame and we'll write here as dot data frame uh, data dot frame i'm creating one data frame and then i'm storing the tab into that right so if you notice your tab so we have here one data frame okay so everything is fine so what we'll do, we'll export this file uh, to a external drive, right, or physical uh, location. 
uh, using the CSV in the CSV format, right? So how we'll do? So we have the keyword here for exporting. We have the keyword write. W R I T E write dot CSV. Okay, and here we have to provide the data set name. So data set name is uh, or data frame name is tab, and we have to provide the file name. Okay. So suppose uh, let me check the working directory. So get W T. So my working directory is in R folder, right? So I'll just provide the, uh, the name here. So it will by default save into this location with a different name, whatever the name that we'll write here, right? Suppose we'll write here uh, table in uh, table demo table, right? Demo underscore table and CSV is the extension, right? So if I run this and here also we have to write some sort of encoding, right? Uh, because uh, in R by default, it will use a different file encoding. But if you wanted to specify in a specific way, so you have to write uh, encoding. So this is not uh, a very extensive one, right? So here we have a whole lot of encoding. But if we have to use somehow, uh, because if we not use, I'll show you what is the uh, issue here. Table, okay, so yeah, demo table. If I open this, oops, Let me run once again. It is giving some sort of misleading. Uh, I don't know why this is not opening. Okay, so there might be some bug, right? Uh, but this is the way how we can write. Uh, let me remove this encoding first. Let me run so it will uh, it will create, but let me delete this file and then we'll write once again. Okay. Okay, so there might be some issue with my Excel. I, I don't know why this is not working. So this is the way how we'll create the a table, right? So it will basically create in the uh, in this comma separated value right so if i open this so similar sort of okay so this is also not okay. <laughs> so if i open this uh, okay perfect i don't know why this is having some issue with excel right so that's why so it will basically create uh, the file in a csv format right and uh, it will create this information what we have in the in the bottom hand side right so in the same way it will have four columns the first column store these labels of a different uh, parameter how the second column stores the trta information then trtv uh, third column and the fourth column will be for the overall right so this is the way how we will show the uh, how we'll uh, export right and what are the information that it will, it will capture we can create in a different uh, format as well but maybe we'll show in the later uh, section of the course now i'll move to any questions so far here then we'll move to that uh, plotting and figure creation. Can I consider silence as no? Okay. Uh, Ranjit, yeah. here, why we are using place symbol in between the variables? Sorry, which symbol? Plus symbol. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Uh, because we are passing here a uh, different variables, right? So first variable we are using as age underscore num. Then we have to use the race, right? So we we wanted uh, R to distinguish that this is a different variable and this is a different variable, right? So that's oh, why like this exactly separator, separator right? yeah, exactly. And this uh, this will work in the same order, right? So if you notice in the table, the first is age 
uh, underscore num variable is uh, evaluated right then we have race then we have sex then we have vmi then we have weight and then we have height so whatever the order will write here it will execute in the same way right so this is the way so there are other options here also so i'll, I'll show you maybe uh, we can write here uh, let me let me run first and then let me copy first and this line i'll show you some other functions uh, so if i run this so it will populate this table suppose i write here overall is equal to false is equal to false so it will suppress this overall column right so if i run this so it will suppress that overall so there are other options so because of time issue right so i cannot show all the options so we can create this table in different grid option right so this is very simple so this is plain one we can specify here different creeds and it will uh, create in a uh, very elegant way okay suppose you wanted to keep the overall so we'll write here overall is equal to two so then in that case this overall column will populate it will come this true one or overall one okay now we'll move to the uh, figure creation okay so let me show you the figure part so here we have various uh, way to create the figure so suppose uh, first of all i'll create the basic one now i'll move to the uh, some high definition figure then we we can also create the dynamic figure right so you, maybe you have noticed some sort of in covid time so that they create some sort of dynamic uh, graph that it, uh, the cases of incidences or cases of covid cases increase how the covid cases increases or bubble getting larger and larger over a particular span of time so we can create those uh, plots sophisticated plot using r so here we have various packages and we can utilize and maybe in the course i will show you those uh, those part as well so there is a package plotly that we'll use to create this dynamic plot right but i'll show you here some basic one and then we'll move to the high definition so we have keyword here plot so plot is a very generic one and uh, this is used to create a very uh, simple and uh, naive plot right so i'll use here df then uh, i'll use uh, height and weight height is a x variable and weight df underscore is equal to uh, sorry dollar symbol weight so what i'm doing i'm using x as a num uh, height underscore num and y as a weight so i'm just plotting this so if i run this so it will give you some sort of plot so we can rename this label we can rename let me rename that and if you notice this is not very high definition and very elegant right i'll show you uh, the high definition as well so here we can modify the label label x label X is height, height in centimeter, or oh, X label. So there might be some other keyword. Let me let me show you the plot. If we don't have, I mean, if you forget the specific keyword, we can write here a question mark and then you can press the plot. And if you press enter, so it will show here in the the help window. You can press here the plot and it will show so plot here l line type in x lab right so x lab is the x axis so because we gen we hardly use this uh, basic plot that's why uh, uh, sometimes we miss the keyword right x lab right and here we write height if you notice it will show here in the x lab similarly if you write y lab uh, we'll write here weight if i run this okay so margin is big so maybe we have to write here set the margin so per margin we have right one comma one comma one so this is the way how we'll set the margin 
so if you notice this is a parameter and here i have set the margin and here we have four coordinates one two three and four right so we have to set the margin because sometimes the values of x are bigger right so that cannot set here so that's why we have to specify so that it will adjust accordingly okay so we can add here the title we can add here the label and all but this is not high definition so i'll use the another package uh, ggplot2 so for that we have to just install first ggplot2 paste here in double quote so i have already installed so i'll not do that i'll just uh, call that package ggplot2 okay and now we can use this package to create our uh, uh, to create the high definition plot right so here we have a keyword uh, ggplot right ggplot and here we have to write the data oh sorry if you notice here uh, it will show the different keywords right so first is data so we'll write here data and we'll write data is equal to df1 so this is the data that we are taking now we have mapping so mapping is a way how we can uh, specify different aesthetics so aesthetics is a keyword that is used to uh, modify your charts right so it will contain what is the x-axis uh, it will take what is the y-axis what are the different labels what are the uh, different uh, geom point so all are comes under aesthetic different color that we wanted to assign right so it will come under the aesthetic part so we'll write here aes aes means aesthetic and if you notice here we have x and y so we'll let x as x as data sorry data is our df right so df uh, one dollar symbol height okay and now we have i'll just copy oh sorry maybe i'll write y is equal to df1 dollar symbol uh, weight uh, sorry height and weight okay so and now we have to use this plus symbol and then we have to provide the geom point so geom point means what suppose you wanted to create the bubble plot so here the geom point will be geom point so this is for the bubble plot because we wanted to create here points right so that's why so if i run this so it will create here the bubble plot so we can we can provide the size i don't know why this is not opening in a full screen mode so this is the way how we can create so if you notice the earlier one is not high definition right so this is some sort of uh, not looking good right but if you notice the second one so this is good we can we can modify the labels we can add the title we can add the source here we can add the legend right and also this is overall one so you suppose you wanted to create for uh, treatment wise so what we'll do we'll write here color is equal to the variable df1 uh, and the trt variable we can pass here so it will create the treatment wise right so trt1 is in uh, orange color and in green color we have here the trtb okay we can change the color as well so this is the way how we'll create the plot we can create this plot into rtf document right suppose you wanted to save so uh, in a very quick manner we can save this file right so as a pdf and we can provide the uh, maybe i'll write here name so this is quick way so but we'll use uh, in the in the course uh, plot uh, demo plot i'll save and it will save in the specific working directory here right in a pdf format we can create in another format as well right so this is the plot that we just created right so this is very handy so we can create in png format we can create in rta we can create in pdf format right so this is the freedom that we have here okay now now what i'll do i'll create some sort of uh, basic utility uh, i'll show you some very basic utility part here and i'll i'll write some sort of code that will uh, create the change from baseline and all let me close here okay 
so uh, how i'll do that so first of all i'll create some sort of dummy variable so for that i'll copy uh, somewhere uh be what i'll do i'll create a, a data set right i'll create here data frame so so there are way to create the data frame uh, first of all any question for this plot and uh, for this list uh, table maybe we'll pause for a couple of seconds any question Have I heard when I tried myself uh, R, uh, mm -hmm. R in the R, uh, like G plot, mm -hmm. every time that asking like in the console, uh, um, your uh, margin is not suitable to like that. So uh, how can we analyze that uh, margins level like that in yeah, when so, we create the points? So this is the margin level, uh, margin. So how we'll set this margin? So we have to specify this parameter, right? And within that, we have to write mar. Mar means M A R is for the margin, and we have to set all the four coordinates, right? And so if you use this, so we so can use not... one 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 like that. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Every time we can use. Okay. Yeah. So maybe there there are other structure also. You can use two two two. You can use two one one two. Right. So based on the uh, based on the uh, what dimension of the plot, right? Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. But this will work Thank definitely. You. Okay. You. Welcome. Any further question? <clears throat> Any clarification? Anything that we wanted to say, or uh, are the pace of the course is going smooth, or if you wanted to uh, make me slow, or if you wanted to me uh, to wanted me to go slow a little bit or little bit fast? So maybe you can you can pause and uh, you can unmute yourself and then you can uh, I can provide your comment here. Anything? Any suggestions? Yeah, your class is very uh, okay. Yeah, please. We are understanding. Easy. Okay, perfect. That that is really appreciated. Yeah, please. Someone is asking something. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, so you are writing code and uh, we are getting some outputs. Mm -hmm. Do you provide any notes for this syntax? If we are writing a label statement or rename statement mm -hmm. or subsetting the data. Mm -hmm. Do you provide any notes for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will provide. That the statement. Uh, exactly, exactly. So maybe this is very important. Mm -hmm. We will, we will provide. So we will not provide any note, but while writing the code, I'll comment that part, what it means, right? Uh, because this is demonstration one, so I just I don't have much time, right? And I have to cover a whole lot of things. So I thought maybe to write in the same way, but when we do the course in a more detailed way, so I'll, I'll provide those comments uh, in the same way. Uh, within the code itself, right? Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. perfect. Okay, so now I'll create one data set and over there we'll use the chain from baseline part, right? So first of all, I'll create a, a data frame. So there are various ways to create the data frame. So we saw here at the top uh, data dot frame option, right here. This is the way how we'll create the data frame. There are other ways also. Uh, there are ways of creating data frame like table. So for that we have library. Table. Right. So and here we write uh, the keyword uh, table. Right. So treble means row wise creation of data, right? So that's why we have here R, right? So you can remember this uh, keyword. And here what we'll do, we'll write the variable name using the tilde symbol. So first variable, suppose I create your subject ID, right? Then second variable, I create age. Then third variable, I create here uh, sex. Then fourth variable, I create at a visit. A visit 10, right? Then we'll create a well, right? Then at the end, we'll create the param n. So what I'm what I'm doing basically here, I'm creating one data set, and that data set I'll use to create the chain from baseline. Okay. So here I'll create dummy data set 101. Then age is 24. Sex is female. 
then a visit is 1 uh, then we have uh, values at 10 parameter 1 right now I'll copy and I'll use your comma then paste okay so these are the four parameters and suppose i wanted to create here uh, 12 13, 14 15 okay so let me create uh, this one so i'll create here uh, a so if you notice here we have four records right uh, for a particular parameter and maybe i'll change the visit visit one visit two visit three and visit four right so for what i'll do i'll change here visit two visit three and visit four okay suppose i'll copy and then paste the same thing for the second parameter so i'll change here two or maybe i'll uh, i'll drop the parameter value or maybe i'll keep the parameter as it is maybe i'll change here the subject uh, maybe I'll keep 102, 102, 102, 102. I'll change here. Uh, this is 20, this is 22, this is 24, this is 25. So suppose I run this. Oh, yeah. So we are here. We have to write comma. Okay. So a here we have eight records. The first four are this one and the remaining four are here right suppose you wanted to uh, do the change from baseline calculation so change from baseline is what so before giving any medication in a clinical trial before giving any medications so doctor or site captures the record for a particular lab right suppose you wanted to deal with the uh, hyperglycemic patients right so over there we have uh, the patients whose hba1c level is higher right so hba1c is a lab parameter right so hypoglycemic index so that will show the patient is of having a higher glucose level right so before giving medications so they capture the hba1c level and if the medication is working so that means it will reduce the hba1c values okay so before giving medication it will capture the records and that will called as the baseline right so uh, let me so how will create the uh, create the calculate the change so we'll calculate uh, the baseline value so uh, we'll use as a, we have here baseline baseline is what before giving medication uh, the doctor will capture the parameter so this parameter may be pain score uh, this may be hba1c HBA, HBA1C values, pain score, some Q quality of life score, right? Right, and other etc. So they will capture the record before giving medication, and after giving medication, also they will again read, uh, take those uh, observations, right? So those were called post, post baseline line. So this is after giving medication okay they will capture the same parameter and they just record so what is the change change is the post baseline value minus the post baseline minus the baseline value right so this is called the change and based on that we'll do the uh, various uh, summary statistics calculation right so let me comment so here in r we have very unique thing so we can calculate the change from basis so what we have to do suppose i show you here so we have to somehow keep this 10 uh, and we have to subtract this 10 from the remaining variables so how we can do the so first thing what we can do we can transpose this data set what we generally do in sas we can transpose this data set using uh, this variable as a id right and then it will populate 10 12 14 and 15 on a different variable right 
uh, we can use id this uh, a visit 10 and a well we can use this uh, as a where so it will populate one two three four uh, as a column right underscore one underscore two underscore three underscore four and then we can subtract from the underscore one the remaining values right so it will do but in r we can do in one line so let me show you how so suppose we write here uh, chg change and we'll write here the assignment operator we'll write the data frame and then we'll write the pipe right and here what i'll do i'll assign here base <coughs> i'll create a mutate mutate a mutate is a keyword to create uh, new variables right so i'll create here chd as a change and here what i'll do i'll just write the keyword uh, at the post baseline value so that is uh, capturing in a well okay minus a well and then if you write double uh, big bracket one or capital l right so if i run this so if you see this is the the way oh sorry so it is in chg uh, chg data set i have to open not a okay so if you notice so this is the variable so if you notice uh, 12 minus 10 is 2 uh, 14 minus 10 is 4 15 minus 10 is equal to 5 so we have calculated and if you notice so we have not used another keyword so we have to use another keyword because what we have to do we have to segregate these patients right which uh, we have to use this sort of group by right because it will consider this 10 as a global baseline value and it will use for the remaining variable right so for that for uh, stopping that we can write here the keyword group by group underscore by and we can use here use subject id and now we can use pipe and if you notice so it will do in the same way right so it is keeping 10 for the remaining four subjects right 10 as a baseline let me highlight this Okay, so if you notice 10 is the baseline value because this is uh, for visit one record and here it is coming right and that's why if 10 minus 10 is equal to 0 then 12 minus 10 is equal to 2 14 minus 10 is equal to 4 15 minus 10 is equal to 5 <clears throat> that is fine then we have moved to the second patients here it has considered the visit one record as a 20 okay so 20 minus 20 is 0, 20, uh, 22 minus 20 is 2, 24 minus 24, 25 minus 20 is equal to 5. So this is the way and we can we can do in one line, right? So that is the uh, potential uh, or advanced feature we have here in R, right? Suppose you wanted to create the variable here, base, right? So what we'll do, we'll here write mutate uh, and we can create another variable base and here will keep as it is suppose in in stm creation we have to create base c and base value right so we can just copy without using the transpose option right so it will create as it is so if you notice this is the baseline values right similarly we can create base c and we can write here as dot character so suppose i wanted to create here base c and we'll put as dot character okay and we'll write a well one l so one l is a specific thing right that will allow us to keep a first observation right so that's why we have here one right so it will just keep the first one first dot uh, what we have in the sas first dot uh, u subject id right first dot and last dot so we have that uh, option here as well okay so this is the base c so this is the way how we'll create the change from baseline hope uh, this is clear to everyone any questions so far compared to sas in here uh, i think we are using uh, less complex exactly yeah the, easy 
yeah 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 the coding is uh, less complex and it is readable the group by means we are just grouping the subjects and after that we are using the uh, mutate part so if suppose we have a various parameters so what we'll do we can use uh, this use subject id and param n as a group by but we have uh, one parameter that's why we have not used param n as a uh, in a group by uh, statement right so yes. mm -hmm. thank so, you yeah, this is all about. So maybe I'll move to uh, some other part. So before moving uh, that, I'll, I'll show you the course structure once again. So what we'll cover. So I showed yesterday. Let me move to the slide deck once again. Hope this is uh, this is visible to everyone. Am I able to? Uh, are you able to see the slide course details? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we'll cover this course in two part. So this is base and advanced are. So here we'll cover the building block, right? And we'll prepare ourselves for the uh, live training, project training, right? So here we'll cover the base package, advanced package like ggplot2, admiral, and deployer, tidyverse, right? GT table, GT summary, right? So we'll all cover all the advanced are options and before that we'll cover the some sort of background uh, how to import the file read excel read dot csv write dot csv write underscore csv right write underscore uh, excel and other keywords so we'll cover this part in part one and in part two we'll create the cds uh, we'll cover the cds part here we'll create the stm data sets adam data sets from the scratch and we'll create the tfl table listing and figure at the same time Okay, so now we'll move to the detail one. So if I open this Excel tracker, is that visible to everyone? This Excel file? Yes. Okay, so this is the uh, demonstration part. Uh, oh, now it is, <laughs> now we can, uh, so earlier that's file but not opening right, but you can see now everything is, uh, I, I don't know why, there might be some issue with the Excel. Okay, so let me move to the file TOC. So this is the part one. So here we have uh, various classes and the topic that we'll cover. So uh, so we, we have two demonstration sessions. So the last one is uh, today, maybe from tomorrow on bus, we'll cover this overview of our programmer job. Then at class third, we'll cover the history and our background. Then we'll also cover at the same day, what is R, what is SAS, uh, what is S. So R is basically, originated from the S language, S is a programming language, and, and different features, their philosophy, right? So because uh, it is originated from the S language, so we have to some idea what S language is for, right? Because those inherent properties we also have in R, right? So some, some sort of building block back to our basic feature of R. R is a free software, right? So what are the different of freedom we have here, okay? So then uh, design of our system. So limitations of our, so there are various uh, few limitations and those are also mitigating, right? So there are, there are various groups, our validation hub, if you have some idea. So they are working for uh, those, uh, mitigating those uh, limitations, right? Then our resources, after that at class four, we'll cover the getting started with our, then installation, we'll do the installation in your system and we'll guide you how to do the installation and then we'll uh, see the interface so we have four windows and what are the different utility and what are the different function of the windows right then we'll cover our nuts and bolts then entering input evaluation our objects number attribute right we'll cover in class fifth creating vectors we'll create the vector different type of vectors like numeric vector character vector, integer vector, right? Logical vector and complex vector. So we'll create those and we'll do some sort of operation over there. We'll mix those objects. We'll mix character and uh, and then uh, numeric in one vector. So what, what basically it does inside the R, right? How it does. So those are basically coercion, right? So explicit coercion, implicit coercion. So we'll see those. Now we'll see, uh, then we'll see the matrices list factors missing values so 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 we have some missing values so how we deal with those uh, missing values okay i will create the data frame then names options right 
then we'll move to the uh, in and out of data so how we'll import the data from external drive how we'll export the data to the external drive from the r environment right we'll see those options here we'll use the csv file excel file sas file right we'll export or import in different file format right then we'll do the memory calculations because uh, i already told that the, or all the object what will create in r it will store into your memory right physical memory or you can say in ram so you have some idea what uh, uh, how much memory we need for uh, importing a particular data sets if that data set is large enough right so it will create issue so we we will have some some basic idea what type of memory or how much memory we need to import that particular file so these are basically for dealing with a big data but i'll cover those concepts here as well so we have the read r package so this is very advanced package and these are also used to import excel csv and other file format uh, file right now we have a textual format so text if we store the file into a text format that will require very less space right less memory and it we can store the data the textual format for a longer duration of time right because if it if you store in a different file format so there might be the chances that it may corrupt after some time but if you store that data into textual format it will stay for a longer time right so that is the benefit of storing those files so we'll cover those also then file interface right so we'll create uh, how to, we'll we'll see how to uh, read the data from read the uh, text or file from a url right so suppose we have one website over there we have a whole lot of information so how will import that okay then we'll do the subsetting of matrices subsetting means we are we having a large data set and we wanted to uh, select a specific element from there right so we'll do the subsetting of vector matrices list and nested uh, list right then we'll do the partial matching removal of any any means missing values then we'll cover the vectorized operation date and time evaluations uh, dates in r times in r right so we'll cover those in more detail how we'll perform the operation on date and time then we we'll move the deployed so deploy is a very generic and very extensive package so we'll cover here different functions of deploy so data frame then select option filter option arrange we have arrange is the keyword to sort the data in a specific order right then we'll cover the rename part mutate part group by part and then pipe operator right so we'll uh, we have saw the pipe operator but we will we'll see in more detail in later section of the course then we have a control structure so which basically this is a looping structure different loops then we'll see the function so function is uh, equivalent to the macro what we have in r so we can write we can see different type of functions and we can see the utility as well then we have scoping rule so a scoping rule is basically uh, uh, optimizing your code right uh, on a on a on a readability skill right then we have optimization so optimization is basically uh, writing your code so that it requires less execution execution time right or less memory so we'll cover on those aspects as well and then coding standards for r right so there are various coding standards that will reduce your line of code right so there are various functions like l apply s apply that will uh, do the looping in one line right t apply apply and all right so then we have a different regular expression and uh, these are basically up, uh, used to uh, do the subsetting from the character or string data type right so suppose in r we have a scan function compress function so that will cover here in under a regular expression then we have a debugging part so suppose uh, if something went wrong in your code so how will resolve those so we have here different option trace fall debug, debug recover and all right so we'll use this to identify where is the uh, where is the bug right and how to fix those bug then we have a profiling of r code so this is basically uh, a concept that will allow us to uh, handle how we can optimize the code based on the execution time right we can uh, we can see where is where it takes more time which part of the code or which chunk of the code right suppose you have written a 100 line of code but at the 50th line so there was some misconception or what you have did so basically that is not a good programming practice right so that's why it is taking whole lot of time 
So how to identify that and how to resolve that, that will cover here in profiling of our code. Then we'll generate here random numbers and different ways of creating the random numbers, right? Random sampling. Then we'll, uh, we'll cover here one data set, uh, air pollution data sets, and we'll do the analysis from the beginning, right? We'll call the data set, we'll modify the data set, we'll change the variables, we'll see different options what we uh, learned so far, right? Up to that. And we'll create the table listing figure, right? We'll create the various plots as well. Then we have a parallel computation. So this is very new concept. So in R, basically uh, in SAS, what we use, what we generally or uh, I used to do. So we create some sort of macro. Suppose we have to create thousand tables, right? So we will create the macros and we'll run the macro. Suppose in one table it takes hundreds, uh, ten seconds to create that table. So if you multiply hundreds to thousands, right? So if you multiply here. 10 seconds to uh, 1000 times so it will take 10000 seconds right and so this is also a very big time right if you consider on the time scale so in the parallel computation what we'll do we'll assign different nodes right so what we do basically so we can split our ram into different sections right different nodes and we can we can assign 10 tables to node 1 10 tables to node 3 10 tables to node 4 and in that case the work will be done in a very small amount of time, right? So it will reduce the time in very drastically, right? So that is the concept of parallel computation. And we'll create those and I'll show you the ex example as well. And I'll, I'll here I'll, I'll, I'll extract the time of execution, right? So if we, if you do the series computation, series computation means you are, uh, you are just, you have one uh, CPU, right? And you are assigning all the task of creating a thousand table to one CPU. So suppose in that case it takes uh, one uh, ten thousand seconds, right? So, but if you split into ten CPU, so it will reduce by ten, obviously, right? So this is the way how we'll uh, optimize the execution or maybe execution time or CPU time. Okay. So this is the part one. This is the part one, and after that we'll here move to the real projects. So here we'll provide you the SAS terraces uh, uh, and T, uh, then real project basically here we'll provide the protocol sap and tfl cells right let me show you the part here and i will guide you how to create the table listing figure right so this is the project so if i show you the document so this is the tfl cells So these are the table. I'll create a table from one by one. Maybe from start from the disposition table, then uh, demographic and other information, right? So these are the list of tables that we'll create one by one. And I'll provide here the homework. Maybe you, I'll create few tables and maybe I'll ask you to create the remaining one. If you have some questions or doubt, I'll happy to explain and I'm happy to guide you in between. Okay, so these are the various tables. So these are basically listings. Now we have here the tables, right? And uh, here we have tables, adverse event table, demographic table, then uh, vital sign, safe table, and efficacy tables, right? And then we'll move to the figure creation. So we create here kaplan mayer plot, waterfall plot, a chart diagram, bubble plot, box plot, right? Various plot we'll create here. And then we'll create the data sets, Adam data sets, HTTM uh, after that, right? So in Adam, we'll create ADSL, ADMH, ADA, ADCM, ADVS, ADLV, ADTTE. So these are the all data set we'll create. And after that, we'll create the HTTM data sets, DM, AE, MH, and CM, and then VS. Okay. And at the end, if 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 you think some some topic is uh, if you wanted to exp uh, if you wanted to learn some more advanced part. So you can provide your feedback here. We will cover those part uh, at the end. Okay, maybe we'll keep, take one or more two classes, a few classes based on the uh, feedback or based on the requirement, right? And we'll do those. Uh, we'll cover those part at the end. Okay. So this is all about part one and part two. Any questions so far? Uh, so Randy, you're only going to cover safety, is it? Cover efficacy? Uh, no, no, no. Here we have efficacy tables, right? 
do two efficacy okay. tables yeah, yeah. But uh, with respect to Adam and Estupino, I don't see any data set derivation. Yeah, 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 we have here the derivation as ADSL data set, ADMS data set, ADA. So we'll uh, I'll guide you how to derive. Basically, I'll, I'll walk you through. I'll write the code and maybe I'll ask you to practice at the same time. So In I have one more generic question. Mm -hmm, please. So, yeah, so. Uh, by looking at, see, I'm very new to R, so mm -hmm. I'm completely layman. So, by looking at your demo session, what, what I could relate is that uh, it is more similar to Python than, uh, you know, SAS. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, what is that advantage that, uh, you know, we'll be going to get by learning R than Python? So Python is some sort of uh, high level programming, right? So, so this R is basically for reporting, right? So a statistical analysis part. But Python mm -hmm. is uh, used in other domain like software creation and core level programming, yes. right? So uh, yeah, that is, a, yeah. So Yeah, there is a matplotlib, right? In Python, exactly, so exactly. It is more similar to this kind of uh, Yeah, so, so, so you, you, you have the exposure of SAS as well, right? Yeah, I have. Okay, so maybe what I'll do while explaining the keyword here, I'll just relate those keyword to the SAS so that you can relate very easy, right? So I can do that because mm -hmm. most of the colleague here, they have expertise in SAS, right? Or some exposure in SAS, so they can relate very. No, no, no. Even I am certified and uh, I know the, you know, series, everything. I am okay, much okay, of aware perfect. of this. Yeah, I yeah. have. Oh. No, I know the derivations and all. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, these days, uh, by you know this uh, real time market, they are either asking R or Python, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to uh, correlate or analyze which one would be better to learn. So yeah. So if we, if we have in a clinical domain, so R have ages, right? So I don't mm -hmm. see the Python as more prevalent than R, right? So. R is okay. more prevalent in clinical yeah, domain, basically in the reporting part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by looking at today's class, I think the uh, figures and plots mm -hmm. are much easier with R. Right? Exactly, exactly. And also, the Python has some uh, disadvantage over because over there we have to uh, uh, run whole lot of we have to download whole lot of uh, graphical user interface, right? Sometimes a particular line mm -hmm. of code works, sometimes it doesn't. But for R, it is well established. R Studio is very good and you can run and there is, you don't find the bug on a different package as such, but we have in Python. So this is my experience. I have also some exposure of Python. Uh, yeah. So are you going to provide, uh, you know, are you going to give us from scratch, right? So exactly. Is so from it is, scratch here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, mm -hmm. if you see here, so it is from the history, history and the background, right? We'll cover each and everything to the, to the advanced level. Uh, like uh, parallel computing, so, so you, you don't find uh, excluded here. So just uh, just join and maybe you can you can relate very uh, extensively. Okay. okay. I think that's it. You answered all the question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Welcome. Any further questions from anyone else? Can we use SQL in here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, we can. Let me, let me write for you. So we can use the SQL. I forget to provide here because of time constraints. Let me, let me write. So here we have a, a one package, SQL DF, right? And over there we can write the SQL code. Give me a second. I'll just write. Let me pull the mouse. So maybe I'll use the same data sets, population one. Uh, do we have here? Yeah, DF1. So here we have TRT. What I'll do, I'll just tabulate this race or maybe a race with respect to the TRT, right? So what I'll do, I'll just call the package. This is the lib library name, SQLDF. SQLDF, right? Uh, let me uh, move this part. So, oh, sorry. Okay, so this is the library that we have to call or package that we have to call. And after that, we have to write the code. So what we'll do, we'll write SQLDF, SQLDF, and within the appearances and within double quote, you can use a single quote as well. 
we can write the SQL code. Select and suppose I'll select here six variable and then we'll write here comma. Okay. After that, we'll write here count. Sorry. Count and we'll count here the uh, the uh, use subject ID. S U B G I D is that the same or maybe in a capital? Let me check. Okay, so it is in small letter, right? Uh, so use subject ID and we'll store as C N T count and we'll write here from the data set is D F one. Okay, and we'll write here group by. So if you wanted to calculate a group by, so we'll use group by and the variable here is TRT, right? Or maybe we'll write uh, here gender uh, or sex. So let me first of all call all the variables name because this is case sensitive, right? So this six is in capital letter, so that's why we have to write here in capital letter, and we'll write here capital letter here as well, right? So if I run this, so it will show the number of counts, right? So if you notice, we have five uh, where we have missings, right? And these are the counts for respective. Suppose you wanted to create data frame, so we we'll write here CNT. CNT means count, right? And we'll create here the uh, CNT, right? So if I open here, is the number, right? So suppose I'll, I'll show you how to create the, how to use this uh, the SQL in basically because uh, SQL is very handy if we have uh, to calculate or if we have to count the subject count or the event count, right? So over there we can use the unique or distinct here to populate that's uh, the subject count and we can use the count just count to uh, count the event count right if we have adverse event data set or we have a data set where we have one subject have multiple records right so these are very handy so maybe I'll show you in some classes because we will cover in the part two uh, the SQL in more extensive while uh, tabulating the adverse event count right so this is the way how we'll execute. Hope this is clear. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I, I forget basically because this is my plan. Okay. okay, any questions? So if you don't have, so maybe we can pause for a couple of seconds and then we'll stop for the day. We'll meet tomorrow with some more topic. Any questions? Last minute comment from anyone uh, who have not spoke, uh, spoken early? <laughs> Okay, so I'll consider silence as no, and then we'll stop for the day. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. See you tomorrow. So, welcome everyone for this clinical R programming uh, course, and uh, this is the first class. Uh, so, prior to this class, we had, did the demonstrations uh, in two classes, and this is the uh, some sort of background and our programming role that we'll cover today. Okay So this is all about me. So I'm Ranjit. I have uh, 12 plus clinical uh, experiences uh, using SAS and R and Over 12 plus years of ex programming experiences in developing and implementing various applications for pharmaceutical banking and finance clinical and health in industries and here I have uh, some technical expertise in SAS, base SAS, SAS Macro, SAS Cities, SAS Stat, uh, SAS Access, SAS Connect, SAS Graph, SAS OTS, and all. And I have few certification of SAS as well. So the base programming uh, using SAS 9.4 and advanced programming using SAS 9.4. Apart from the SAS expertise, I have some working experience on R. So I have uh, exposure of base R as well as the advanced R. So I have a uh, hand on, uh, on various packages like uh, Deployer, Tidyverse, ggplot2, Heaven, Reader, Read Excel, String, and there are other advanced packages like R2RTF, SQLDF, uh, GT package, and GT table. And during the 10 year of 12 plus years of experience, I worked mainly for uh, Cognizant, TCS, Novartis, IQVIA, uh, no, no attack. So this is all about me and let's move to the agenda. So today we'll cover why uh, why R, why should uh, train ourselves uh, uh, for this R programming, right? After that, we'll move to the processes of clinical trial 
and then we'll move to the role and responsibility of the clinical R programmer, right? What type of work we have to perform generally, okay? And at the end, we'll have some questions and session. So you have some burning question, you can pause me at any time and you can ask me, right? Uh, but we have uh, some devoted questions and session at the end, okay? So let's move to the YR. So R is a free and open source. So this is absolutely free. We no need to give anything, any uh, a single pennies to anyone, right? We can download from the open source, and uh, and we can utilize those applications based on our need, right? So this is a very uh, our most important feature what we have in R as compared to the other uh, software like SAS, Stata, and other software, right? And uh, this is very very important part, right? And here we have a large community of users. So they try to develop uh, various tools and try to implement and they also try to upload on open source, right? So I'll show you the open source uh, platform where we can uh, see those packages and th those working part, right? And you can, we can uh, download those module and we can modify and utilize based on our need, right? So this is very, uh, uh, very vast community that we have here in R. And this is independent of platform. So this, uh, the R software works on all the platform, whether it is a Linux, uh, uh, XP OX, right? Windows, uh, Mac and all, right? So it has also appearance on the virtual machine, right? Or cloud-based computing. So if, if I don't know whether you have, uh, have some idea about the uh, cloud version of the R Studio, right? So we have the various platform, right? So it doesn't have any dependency on the platform. It runs on the virtual, it runs on the uh, cloud-based part as well as the on the local drive. So we can download the R on a local machine, and we can run those script. Uh, okay. So this is very good feature because if we have uh, some platform dependency, so we have to download a specific uh, OS operating system. And then only we can run those codes, but here we don't have that uh, dependencies. So that is very uh, important one. And this makes the R uh, uh, widely applicable to all the uh, users, right? All the various industries like clinical and maybe uh, chain market, right? Social media analysis, political uh, opinion, sentiment or political sentiment analysis. So all the different domain, uh, the people generally use R, okay? For the analysis perspective, right? Now we have uh, the fourth point, the gateway of lucrative career. So as I already mentioned that this is uh, this R software or R programming is used across the industries, right? Different domain. So we have a very good opportunity and potential to train ourselves and uh, and harness those uh, opportunity that are available out there, right? So this is uh, <laughs> this is a right time, right? And uh, these are. Uh, getting popular in all industries, right? So basically we will cover here the pharma industries or healthcare industries. And here also we have a very extensive use of our, uh, we, are, we are seeing across the pharmaceutical company or the CROs, right? So this is the right time. We have to train ourselves and we can, uh, we can harness those job opportunities that are available uh, in a different domain, right? So this is uh, this is the motivation slide why we have to read uh, or we have to train ourselves for this R programming part, right? So any questions here? Maybe I'll move to the next part and then cover the other aspects. I'll pause for a few seconds. So maybe you, you can you can ask. Uh, if you have any questions or any clarification or anything you wanted to uh, comment or anything, right? So we can, uh, this is, the, I just wanted to be more interactive, right? So that's why. <laughs> okay, so I, I assume Silas says no. So maybe we'll, I'll move to the next slide. So this is the growth of R. So here, uh, uh, this is uh, some sort of older chart. And this is uh, 
percentage of job posting and this is linkedin data right so here if you notice uh, the here we have a three software and we have compared across different years right so if you observe the x-axis here we have year 2012 2013 2014 15 and 16 right and on the y-axis we have a percentage of uh, matching job posting right so if you notice so the percentage of job posting increases uh, and this this green line is for the python this blue line is for the sas and uh, so, sorry this blue line is for the r and this orange line is for the sas right so if you notice from 2013 onwards so the percentage of job posting in r increases and it has crossed uh, in mid of 2016 right so if you notice so uh, if, you, if if i include the latest job so it has a very uh, huge difference as compared to the sas and python if you talk about the uh, statistical analysis or clinical domain right and in other domain also because r is basically uh, used for the statistical analysis or data analysis part right so whether it is a business analysis uh, analytics or whether it is a clinical domain so we have a huge presence of R as compared to the other uh, software. And earlier, the, the monopoly of SaaS is getting uh, reduced because of highly paid uh, part, right? And uh, if, if, if you heard about the f uh, few pharmaceutical companies like Roche, Novartis, or GSK, they devoted or they created a devoted team for R, right? And they also submitted few studies from beginning to the end, right? without using SAS. So that is a milestone, right? And maybe in coming future, we'll see some more examples. So I, ha I have a, some exposure of creating DMC data monitoring committee app. So that is a very uh, uh, data confidential part, right? So over there also, they created some sort of uh, R app using the R programming and they, uh, they presented the app to the DMC board, right? and over there we don't have any issues so far so that is a very good future i can see right and uh, that is a very good motivations for all of us right okay now i'll show you what are the clinical trial processes right and whether our job lies right so i'll, I'll briefly discuss the process uh, step by step and I'll pause here for a couple of seconds. So, uh, and I'll show you some document as well, right? So the, here we have the first and the foremost important document is the protocol. So this is the basically a Bible of a clinical trial, right? So this describes, I'll show you the protocol in a minute. So this describes all the processes, what we follow, what are the uh, drug indication is for, right? So which uh, disease condition that we are targeting for a particular uh, drug, right? So drug or maybe intervention. So if we talk about in more general drug, so this is intervention. So intervention may be drug, it may be uh, some modified RNA, it may be modified uh, cell, right? It may be uh, some biologics, right? Vaccines, it may be some devices, right? So for all these interventions, whether it is a drug, whether it is a biologics, whether it is a, a a device whether it is some sort of uh, modified rna or modified dna so all comes under uh, some intervention right and for for proving the effectiveness of a particular uh, intervention we have to create some sort of protocol right so what we write in the protocol so what are the objectives how we wanted to achieve that objective right suppose we wanted to create one drug for the um, for a particular cancer let's say for acute myeloid leukemia so what is the mechanism of action for a particular drug that we are proposing right so all things and some background on rationale of studying that studies what are the prevalences across uh, across different area for a particular disease right then we'll we'll uh, have some uh, guideline on the on the analysis aspects there are some guidelines uh, in the protocol for the drug administrations there are some guidelines uh, regarding uh, how we'll administer the drug, how we'll capture the adverse event, right? And some other aspects, right? So maybe it is maybe the, related to the uh, 
the operational aspects it may be for the administration of uh, aspects it may be uh, for the statistical analysis aspects right so there might be some protocol uh, some assumption section that is devoted specifically for the statistical analysis part right so these are the various uh, various sections that are available in the protocol and the all the stakeholder whether it is a clinical whether it is stat pro programming or whether it is a biostatistician and other clinical colleagues they all refer protocol for their uh, routine job right so and for for following a trial conduct right so this is very important document so my maybe i'll, I'll i have downloaded one uh, protocol uh, from the web and i'll show you those uh, this document uh, one by one and maybe i uh, better to I, i'll show you that uh, the case study part right so at the end of the course right in part two we will provide you some sort of uh, studies so over there we'll provide the data sets adam data sets stdm data sets raw data sets so trial uh, uh, trial documents like protocol crf right and sap TFL cells, right? And using that, we will we'll generate the tables, listing figures, and we'll create the data set as well. So I'll show you uh, that studies here. Uh, that will be more important. And so let me here open this part. Okay. So this is the part. Uh, this is the I guess uh, let me let me show you the other one because over there I, I, it is in a different layout right I'll show you those uh, protocol also at the, uh, the second part when we'll start so this is the um, dummy protocol or I have downloaded from the web right and if you notice this is the layout right so if you open any protocol you have the some sort of clinical trial protocol if you have the header right then you have a, your address city number so this is a unique number that each protocol should have right and this is a sort of uh, indication right so a unique number that we can identify a particular thing right then here we have a, a drug name or authority name then if you notice here the title uh, this is an open label extension trial for the long-term safety of oral uh, IBPF 1,120, uh, 1, 1, right? So this is sort of uh, drug, right? In the patient with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So this is the disease condition. So this is basically a disease cancer uh, conditions where lungs became weak and it uh, and the breathing become difficult, right? So this is the part and if you drag down so if you notice this is the phase 3 trial right so we have we all know that in the clinical trial we have the three phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 as well as we have post marketing that is phase 4 studies there are also some studies that are prior to phase phase 1 right so those are uh, uh, preclinical studies or animal studies right so these are the different phases of the clinical trial so in phase 3 we generally prove the effectiveness or efficacy part of the drug right on a larger population right so if i uh, if i go to the other sections right so here also we have a protocol title right now we have a trial if you see the trial multi-center and multinational right so what it means so multi-center means we have a uh, different centers right different centers means so we have a different uh, areas right so from where we are taking the patients so it may be uh, more center in a particular state it may be uh, a center across different nations right so it may be uh, one center in india another center in usa then another center in uk right so those are the parts so why we are doing a multi-center trial so there are various aspects right Suppose we wanted to include the patient from all the geographical area, right? Why we are doing that? Because the, all the geographical area have different climatic conditions, right? Different culture, different uh, way of uh, living their life, right? So that may have some influence on the drug mechanism, right? Or effectiveness of a drug, right? So if we include the various or maybe various uh, 
or different section of the societies or different people or different uh, genetic or uh, environmental uh, conditions so that have some uh, some added advantage on our drugs right so we can we can assess right so this drug is working on asian subjects but this is not working on uh, patients from uh, uk right or patient from uh, usa right so that we can assess and at the same time the second part why we are doing this uh, multi-center trial because when we have a, when we wanted to approve our medication on a on a different uh, location so if we have some data that this drug is working on a uk or usa pop population so they can we can file the approval dossier right or approval uh, some sort of documentation uh, in that site as well if we have some uh, idea about the mechanism of working of a particular drug in those areas right so that's why we generally do the multi-center trial uh, on a different uh, centers or, or on a multinational uh, part right so this is the this is the main objective now here we have a, a clinical trial objective so if you notice the objective of this study is to assess the long-term safety of this drug uh, in the patient with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis who have completed one year of treatment right so this is the this is the trial objective and if you notice here we have here uh, methodology open label so this is open label right so we don't have blinding sort of and multi-center extension trial extension trial means if you notice here we have taken only those patients who have uh, one year of treatment follow-up right and after that we will follow so that is sort of extension we are extending those subjects that have completed one year of treatment right that's why we have extension here so maybe uh, i'll cover those slide deck in more detail when we do the second part right so i'll, I'll take the case studies and i'll explain uh, each and every bit in more detail so this is this is the here if you notice the number of subjects so we are including uh, approximately 750 subjects right and we have here two arms, right? 600 subjects in IBBF uh, 11, uh, 12, uh, 11, 20, 150 mg by D, right? And then 100 mg BID, right? So 150 subjects. So total we have 750, right? So here we have two treatment arm, okay? So one arm contains 600 patients and the another arm contains uh, 150 subjects, right? Or patients. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the treatment arm. Now we have a disease a diagnosis part, right? And then here again we have some uh, <laughs> doses, right? So same thing: 150 mg by D, 150 mg by D, or maybe 300 mg, right? So if you multiply 150 by two, right? So that will be 300. Similarly, if you multiply 100 by two, because this is by D, uh, twice in a day, right? So we have a 100 uh, 200 mg okay so this is the part now we have a treatment durations then other information let me move to the uh, efficacy part okay so i'll first explain this part this is a flow chart or trial summary right so this explains at which path at which visit or at which time point what we'll do right so if you notice here we have a widgets so we have total uh, x to the and this 9 10 and this is 11 so 11th is a follow visit fu means follow visit then we have 10 this is eot end of treatment and here we have one right so if you notice this one is a minus 6 to 0 so this is a sort of window period right so if you notice this is a some sort of duration right this is not an exact time so why we have set some duration here because we wanted to perform these many activities on the particular day right on visit one right so suppose we wanted to take the informed consent so this is the first part then we have to take the demographic information then we have to consider the uh, we have to uh, jot down all the patients right and here we have how many subjects we have here total 750 subjects right so we cannot capture all the information that are mentioned on a visit one in one day right so that's why we have some buffer we have a buffer of six week right or you can convert into a day right so we have minus 42 day one right so within that we can uh, we can uh, enroll those subjects and we can capture those information that are mentioned here in the first column right 
okay so that's why we have here the buffer minus means uh, this is a uh, some sort of extra days that are provided right so because the, we have here 750 subjects and all subjects cannot come uh, in one day right the side side so that is uh, one thing that uh, we have to adjust so this is sort of operational challenge that will generally face when we design the clinical trials right so sometimes if you are designing some sort of oncology trial or cancer trial right so in that case the patients are a bit rare right or there are some taboos that the patient doesn't enroll uh, himself or herself to the clinical trial uh, due to various reasons right due to some sort of societal reason due to some sort of uh, confidentiality and other part right so they just uh, they just uh, don't enroll themselves right so in case of rare disease we should have some more time right to enroll those patients and if you notice at the second visit so we should capture these many informations all right so uh, we can uh, we capture the vital sign physical examination then vital sign then here we have 12 lead ecg then a laboratory test pregnancy and other similarly we have the other widgets and we'll capture those information that are uh, uh, marked here with the X, okay? So this is a flow chart or trial summary, but we'll do at which uh, widget, right? If I move to the next part, so these are also some, some sort of uh, part that are uh, included at the bottom, right? Now I'll move to the inclusion exclusion criteria. So any questions so far? Now we'll move, move to the uh, some other concept. Any questions? Anything? Am I hard first? <laughs> or is everything clear to everyone? Can anyone confirm? No questions, Ranjit. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Okay. So, hope this is clear to everyone. So, now I'll move to the inclusion criteria, right? So, there are various subjects that uh, arrive at the center, right? But we cannot include all the subjects. We should have some predefined criteria, right? So, based on that, we'll include those subjects who satisfy our uh, criteria, right? So, what these criteria means and why we are including these criteria? Because we cannot randomly select all the patients, right? Suppose we wanted to create, uh, we wanted to uh, develop one drug for the hypoglycemic patients, right? Or diabetic patients. So, so we cannot include the subjects who have a, a very high hypoglycemic level, right? Because anyhow, for those subjects who have very high hypoglycemic uh, indexes, so our drug may not work, right? So we should have some criteria, moderate to mild hypoglycemic uh, label or indices. And based on that, we'll include only those subjects that have some moderate level of uh, hypoglycemic, right? So in case of COVID also, if we, if we observe those trials, so they are not taking the serious, severe patients. They are taking the patient from moderate to mild, right? Because uh, for the severe patients, so drug may not affect, uh, may not work, right? But for the moderate patients, the drug is very effective, right? So uh, there are other criteria. Also, we have to also look for the lab parameter, right? Kidney parameter, right? Bilirubin, AST, ALT, right? Whether those organs are working properly for the patients or not, right? Because those are the very vital organ that will respond basically the uh, drug, right? So if those organ like kidney or or liver, if those have some defects, right? So in that case, whether it is our whether our drug is working or not. So for those patients who doesn't have a, a kidney or liver in a good condition, right? So that for those patients, the drug will uh, will be not effective, right? So we have to also keep those things in mind, right? And the other aspects, if we talk about the inclusion criteria or exclusion criteria, uh, uh, based on the statistical analysis aspects, right? So we wanted to uh, include the patients that have same profile, right? Because if we have uh, inherent variability uh, among the subjects, that may cause uh, differences at the end, right? Suppose some patients have good uh, good profile, right? So they respond the uh, drug very well, right? But if the patient doesn't have a good uh, profile, so they may not respond the patient, and they may not respond the drug, right? Very well. So that may create differences between the, within the studies, right? 
so so for that for mitigating those uh, variability so we wanted to select the patients that have a same or almost same because we cannot create the <laughs> exact copy right so but but uh, we can create as similar as possible right using this inclusion exclusion criteria and within that if we have if we don't have other variability other than the treatment then we can uh, measure the effect of the treatment very well right so that as that is the main rationale why we include here the inclusion exclusion criteria right because we wanted to select the patients more homogeneous right so we wanted to select the patients that have a same or almost same uh, clinical background or clinical profile right because if we have uh, if we don't have other variability apart from the treatment right so we can if measure the effect of the treatment in a very uh, clear way right so that is the rationale hope this is clear to everyone okay i'll consider silence as yes so now i'll move to the end point part right so if you notice here so if, here we don't have uh, explicit inclusion criteria right but if you see the exclusion criteria we are not including patient who have ast or alt so these are the lab parameter and here if we have if some patients have 1.5 fold of uln upper limit of nitrogen phosphate i guess so we are not exclude, including those patients because those have some toxicity right uh, so and also the bilirubin uh, bilirubin uh, label right and other part right bleeding risk because it may create some issues at the, at the or maybe in course of the clinical trial right so now i'll move to the end point because these are very important uh, end point yeah so if you notice here we have a primary endpoint so what are the endpoints so suppose here uh, we have uh, some objectives of the clinical trial let me pull the objective first we have saw objective at the top yeah so if you notice so we wanted to prove the long term safety of uh, this drug right and for that we have a endpoint so if i go to the endpoint part So these are the endpoints. So in our clinical trial, we have multiple endpoints: so primary endpoint, secondary endpoint, exploratory endpoint, and all right. So primary endpoint is our main endpoint, right? So based on that, we'll do the, uh, we'll prove our uh, objective, right? And there are some supportive or other part that we wanted to prove as well. So those are secondary endpoint or exploratory endpoint, right? So these are basically hypothesis generation. Right, so secondary and exploratory are the hypothesis generation uh, endpoint. So maybe we'll we'll capture those indication in this studies and based on that we'll gen we'll uh, design another study. So that is the main purpose, right, for the exploratory and the, and the, this secondary endpoint part, right. For the primary is primary is our main part, right. So here based on that, uh, based on this primary endpoint, we'll prove our uh, effectiveness of our drug, right. So if you notice here, here we have primary endpoint as incidences, number and percentage of patients of overall adverse event uh, over the course of studies, right? So because we wanted to prove here the long-term safety, yeah, I saw uh, earlier, uh, I show you earlier the objective is to prove long-term safety, right? So that's why we have here the incidences and number of and number and percentage of adverse event because safety is related to uh, adverse event, right? So if we have lower adverse adverse events, that means our drug is safe. Okay, and uh, here we are also uh, populating or providing the incidences for the serious adverse event as well, right? So this is the basic endpoint, uh, primary endpoints we have here, right? And if I go to the uh, later section, so these are other aspects assessment of safety so we are also doing the physical examination test then we have a vital sign so it will tell which parameter we are capturing here right so hematology under hematology we will capture the uh, red blood cell count hemoglobin and etc and then we have chemistry then we have coagulation right and uh, I'll, I'll just walk you through the different sections other safety part then we have assessment of adverse event right so it will disc describe here what are the adverse event 
the definitions the serious adverse event definition then intensity right causal relationship to the uh, adverse event right and the other information so uh, so there are various sections and all are covered in more detail right so this so this is very important document so protocol is very important document and if i go to the analysis part so this is the safety analysis so if you notice here all the patients is treated a treated set will be included in the safety analysis right and this is definition of safety now we have uh, at the top we should have primary endpoint right so here also we, uh, number and percentage of patients with uh, with adverse events so all are here right and then uh, we have to when we creating the sap statistical analysis plan so that is another document that basically biostatistics will create right so they prefer this uh, protocol for creating the sap and in that sap they describe uh, this uh, this uh, analysis aspect in more detail right so they uh, design uh, the table tfl cells they uh, design so there are another document i will show you here so maybe i'll walk you through some other aspects of the protocol then i'll move to the sap so here if you notice is some sort of interim analysis so interim analysis is basically analysis that we we'll do during the course of the trial right and these are basically for two purposes so they they generally do for the efficacy part uh, they generally do for the safety part and sometimes they also do for the preliminary efficacy part right so there are two main objective of uh, the interim analysis so preliminary uh, they do for the safety aspects right so they wanted to prove that uh, yeah our drug is safe enough and there are no serious or maybe there is no major adverse event that were happening during the course of the trial right because if if that is the case so they may decide some sort of uh, termination of a trial right and they also do for the efficacy part and if they decide that our molecule is working so they go for the final analysis if if based on the data if they decide that our molecule is not working so they can also decide to terminate that uh, particular trial right so these are the aspects of the interim analysis then here we have a handling of missing data so how we'll do the missing data imputation right so missing data imputation means sometimes we don't have the uh, records for a particular visit right so there might be the case of the patients uh, come to the site but they didn't uh, didn't record those informations right lab information or vital sign information so for that those information remains blank right so how will do those imputation because if you not do, do the imputation so uh, those information uh, were not included in the analysis for those subjects who doesn't have the data at a particular visit so we have to uh, we have to do the missing data imputation if we want to so that may create some sort of uh, power issue at the, uh, the later stage of the clinical trial right so if we have a whole lot of missing data right so maybe you can consider the covid cases so during the covid so every where there is lockdown right so the patient cannot <coughs> sorry patient cannot go to the site for the for for providing the records right providing the assessment right so in that case there are a whole lot of trials that are uh, failed due to this missingness of data right because if you have a large amount of missing data so we cannot prove the effectiveness of our drug right because and anyhow we need the data to prove those effectiveness part right so that is the complica uh, complications that we have to deal with so for that we'll do the missing data imputation so there are various way of doing the missing data imputation so if you proceed the course i'll show you in our how we'll do those uh, missing data imputation part right then we have a randomization so this is extension trial so we don't have any randomization part then we have a simple size uh, determination so as we are uh, having here extension trial so we are just capturing all the patients from the previous trial and we are not doing any formal simple size calculation here right so these are the part then we have uh, this uh, informed consent how we'll do those informed consent what are the different guidelines and all right different uh, sops we have to uh, follow sometimes we have to also record the videos while provide uh, while taking those informed consent and capturing those data right so because there might be some 
tempering or some sort of uh, data breaches that may has may happen right during the informed consent and capturing of records so that we have to keep in mind so basically we don't have to keep in mind because the, those are uh, responsibility of the operational people right but we have to also aware that these are the uh, these are the challenges that the operation people also faces right so this is all about the protocol i'll i'll go to the end part let me see is there anything that i wanted to explain here uh, no and there are various documents that uh, this protocol refers so maybe if if we wanted to read more so we can refer those part and so basically these are basically a uh, detail or uh, detail or mechanism of action so how the drug works so you can refer the investigator brochure so this describes in more detail about the mechanism of a drug right and some sort of they also refer the other studies they also refer the labels so these are the another document that we usually create uh, while designing the clinical trial right IB label right SMPC document and then other health authority uh, aspects right so any questions so far so now I'll move to the next part okay I'll consider silence as no maybe you can you can pause or you can if you have some questions or maybe any any thoughts if you wanted to share your, any experiences if you have so maybe you can you can unmute yourself and you can tell <laughs> otherwise maybe i'll move to the next part okay so let me put into the presentation mode so once we have a trial protocol so we, then we'll have a site selection so sites are basically hospitals though this may be primary health care center or it may be secondary health care center or maybe tertiary right so based on the severity of the uh, disease condition right uh, we, we will generally select those uh, hospitals and there are uh, various aspects here as well so we wanted to select those hospitals we which comply right which captures the data uh, uh, more clearly or they doesn't have compliance issue right so for that we have uh, we have to do some sort of analysis so those are feasibility analysis so we'll select those sites that are very responsive very compliance right compliance uh, and it doesn't have some data breaches right so for pharmaceutical company or the CROs so they have those informations that this site is performing well from last few years right and accordingly they they choose uh, specific slide, uh, sites right because they didn't they didn't want to put the patient on risk or they didn't want to waste the money uh, on, on on a lousy or a bad site right so for that also we do some sort of analysis but that is not the responsibility or uh, work of our programmer but generally the biostatistician and other colleagues they do those analysis or maybe operation people right so they do those analysis before selecting a particular site right so after the site selection will uh, provide the will will get the approval from the ethics committee right so local ethics lo local board here we have a medical professional some sort of uh, drug advocacy group a member right and other uh, other parties right so we have to submit our protocol we have to submit our design and we wanted to get the approval from those uh, bodies right because they just wanted to see is there any trial breaches or is there any uh, safety concern that may arise during the course of trial so based on that they provide their suggestions they hardly do any uh, any major uh, findings right because we 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 have to already provide all the information in the protocol right so that doesn't uh, get affected by these bodies right these people so they generally approve they provide some sort of suggestions that uh, here you may find some issues right and based on that we can we can modify our protocol or the aspects of the clinical trial right and once we get the approval from the, this board so we'll move to the patient recruitment right so we'll recruit the patient based on our inclusion exclusion criteria right if the patient satisfies all the inclusion criteria or none of the exclusion criteria will include those patients into the site right and we'll capture those uh, record at the baseline after that we'll give the medication based on the trial schedule right or trial uh, do dose administration uh, schedule right and those 
part will be captured in the CRF, right? All the information, like I'll show you the CRF as well um, in a minute. And those information will be captured in the CRF. So there are various CRF, paper CRF or eCRF. So uh, earlier, so we used to have some sort of, uh, some sort of CRF like this, right? This is the paper CRF. So we have some A4 paper and over there we have a whole lot of information. So if you notice, so this is the dummy one, right? And if you notice here, this is the site number. We have to write then subject number. Because why we write here the subject number? Because we wouldn't want to uh, write the name of the patients. That may have some data issues, data privacy issues. So instead of that, we'll uh, provide some sort of number to a particular patient, right? And after that, we have to capture this uh, date of birth of a particular patient, then age, then age units in years, right? Then we have to capture the sex information, ethnicity, and race, right? And we'll capture into this. And after that, we have to we have to send this CRF, a paper CRF to the site, and they will uh, upload those data to the database. So there are another CRF as well. So we have here annotated CRF. So if I show you, so this is basically the same document, but instead of the full text, right? So this is the birth date because we cannot write a whole text into the database, right? Because database have some uh, some challenges. We cannot write the variable name with the spaces, right? And we cannot have the this uh, large number of variable, right? So instead of that, they just create few variables based on the CDS guideline, right? And they just annotate so in the crf if you look in the crf we don't have the birth uh, date as a variable name we should have this brt h d a t right and in the label you'll find this birth date similarly for the age we should have the age age unit we have should have uh, age u in the database and in the label you'll find this age unit so that will simplify our work right and accordingly they create the, uh, these variable in the database and once the database is uploaded, right? All the information uh, is uploaded on the uh, database. We can utilize those database and do the uh, coding and write the code to generate the, uh, those different tables, right? So this is annotated CRF. So if you if if see the previous one and this one, so there is not much difference. Uh, uh, just a second. Uh, I'll show you one second. I don't know. Let me open first of this CRF part. So this is without any annotation, right? But in case of annotated CRF, we have some variable name, right? So that is the main difference here. Okay. Perfect. So now I'll move to the uh, presentation part. Any questions so far? Okay. I'll consider silence as no. So after that, uh, once the data is loaded, right, uh, um, uh, on the papers uh, created on the, uh, or maybe information is uh, jotted on, all the information that nurse or maybe doctor writes uh, for the individual patients on the paper CRF, and then it sends to the data entry or validation operator, right? So they do those, those uh, they do those data entry and validation part, right? So first they intro, uh, entry, uh, they do the data entry of all the paper CRF and after that some other person or some other team do the validations. So whether those uh, informations are loaded correctly or not, right? And then we'll, uh, we'll move those, uh, send those information to the database and uh, we'll load those information to the database, right? And then they lock those database. So once the database is locked, so we cannot do any sort of modifications. So before uh, locking those database, so we have to see is there any data query that we are having or not, right? So we'll assess all the aspects, right? And if there's some data query, we'll uh, try to resolve that, right? Uh, before uh, before the database lock, okay? And once that is fixed, we'll proceed for the database lock and we'll submit the uh, database to the database server and we'll receive the uh, feedback from all the team that uh, they reviewed those data and they didn't find any major uh, discrepancies okay and sometimes when we have uh, some issue that cannot be resolved so before that we'll file here some sort of we'll do some sort of documentation that is called note to file right and 
then we'll move to the data analysis part right so once that we have a data uh, data uh, into the database right so so the, the r programmer or uh, responsibility of the r programmer started right so we'll we'll take this data and we'll write some r script and create the uh, report right we'll create the table we'll create the listing we'll create the figure right and based on that we'll submit to the the team right so they uh, will submit those team to the result meeting right so there is one meeting where various stakeholder like clinician statistician and other programming colleague right or a clinical trial colleague so they sit and this uh, they analyze those results and if we need some additional table or additional information they can ask the programming team uh, to generate those if you don't need any additional table they just proceed uh, with the report and they submit to the uh, health authority right so for a, for a notation purposes i have uh, written here the fda so there might be some other health authority as well so the fda is a food and drug administration this is a health authority right a regulator in a usa right so similarly we have pmda for the japan similarly we have a center for drug uh, sorry uh, drug controller general of india for india so there are eu european ema so european medical agencies for europe and so on right so similarly sfda for uh, saudi arabia uh, health authority right so i'm not able to recall the exact name but this is uh, some sort of uh, abbreviation sfda so maybe you can find and so these are the health authority that just review those data those reports those uh, those uh, tables right and based on that if they agree that, that this particular molecule is working for a particular disease condition so they will just approve those molecule and then uh, the particular molecule will come uh, in the market for a general public use right so we can buy those medication and we can utilize those medication based on our need right so that is the clinical trial processes right so our job as a pro uh, clinical trial programmer lies here mainly for the clinical trial analysis and reporting right so other than that we can have some uh, input in data entry and validation because if if we have a small cro so mostly we have to collaborate with the other stakeholder right and other team very diligently right if we have a large pharma company we have a devoted team that will handle all the aspects so it depends on the uh, on the hierarchy part or it depends on the uh, uh, it depends on the uh, uh, the organization right and the way of working a particular organization right so we have to also provide the feedback or some sort of input or advice to the database lock or database load uh, data entry part in crf designing also we have to provide your expertise how we can capture the data right we have to also validate whether the all the variables uh, or all the flow chart right or trial summary that are mentioned in the protocol are popular are available in the crf or not right so we have to also validate or maybe review those crf right so these are the various aspects uh, that we have to uh, work on right so this is the clinical trial processes any questions so far i'll move to the next part okay so i'll can i'll move to the next part so now i'll move to uh, i'll walk you through the clinical uh, trial programmer uh, role and responsibility and here we have at the trial protocol so in that case we have to some sort of provide some sort of uh, rational but or maybe some sort of feedback or advice in the trial protocol design because this is basically a higher level job so if you join as a as a trial programmer so early trial programmer right or maybe at the junior level so you will not have those activities but at the senior level they may ask your advice uh, while designing the trial protocol right and these are basically related to the operational that may be related to the analysis aspects right or way of how we'll capture those data right so they may ask on that aspects right similarly if we, some other colleague provide maybe clinician provide on the medical aspects right 
some sort of uh, CRA will provide on the uh, data capturing or site handling part, right? So there are various, so there is not a responsibility of one person, right? So this is a basically a team effort, right? So we have to, uh, we have to provide your expertise or your knowledge, uh, right? Uh, as suitable, right? So after that, we have to provide our feedback or maybe advice while CRF designing, right? We have to also validate those CRF, uh, right? So we have to uh, we have to see is uh, all the variable that are mentioned in the protocol, right? Uh, summary or flow chart are capturing in the CRF or not, right? So this part, uh, this this we have to review, and sometimes we have to uh, we have to provide your feedback on the trial designing part as well, uh, and sometimes we have to just review those uh, aspects, right? So it depends on the organization whether we have a devoted CRF designing team or not, right? so then we have a ecrf so ecrf is basically a what a electronic version of the crf so in crf we have a paper a4 size of paper right and over there will capture all the records but in case of ecrf we should have some laptop or maybe pda device right personal assistant device it may be tablet it may be a mobile or some app right and based on that will feed those data so what is the advantage of having ecrf because once we feed the data, it directly sends to the database, right, on a real-time basis. But here, in case of paper CRF, we have to just jot down all the information on the paper, and after that, some data entry operator will upload those data to the uh, to the database, and then some other person will validate, right. But in case of eCRF, we directly upload the data to the uh, server on a real time, right. So the, here, the, we can save the time, right. And we can do this analysis on the real time, right? If we upload the data in a, in an hour, right? So after an hour, we have the database ready, right? And we can do the exploration, right? So that is the advantage of having uh, latest or maybe uh, advanced tools, right? So here we have uh, we have some advanced tool, right? So that we can uh, utilize. Now we have an annotate. So annotation means annotation of the CRF. So I just showed annotated CRF where we have a variable name, right, instead of full label, right. So that is the responsibility of the R programmer. So we have to annotate those eCRF and we have to provide those to the team. Then we have to create the SDTM. So SDTM is basically a standard data tabulation model. So at the part two, I'll, I'll discuss in more detail and I'll create for you the SDTM from uh, the raw data set so here we'll generally use the raw data set and create some sort of uh, standard data part right using the uh, cds guideline right so cds is basically a consortium and they provided some sort of guideline for the variable name and for the uh, creation of data sets so <coughs> so we'll use those guidelines to create those uh, data sets okay after the stdm creation we'll submit those xpt package so it, xpt is some sort of a pile extension so we'll create the stm and we'll convert to the xpt file format right and we'll submit those data to the fta so this is our main role right after that we'll create the atom data sets so using the stm we'll create the atom data sets okay so this is basically an analysis data module and this is basically for the analysis purposes okay so we'll create the atom using the stm and we'll submit those to the fta Okay, so this is the second part that we are submitting. So first is STM in XPT format. Then we have to submit the atom. After the atom, we have to submit the TFL cell, right? So table listing and figure. So we have to use this atom data cells and we have to create this table listing and figure. Okay, I'll show you what table listing and figure means. Okay, in a minute. And we have to submit those to the FTA. Okay, so we are submitting here these part and our uh, main part, main job responsibility right will lies here we have to create these three aspects of the clinical trial and we have to provide to the fta or health authority right so other health authority regulator so maybe you can you can think of pmda for the japan suppose you are submitting not to the usa you are submitting your drug uh, for the approval for the japan so you have to submit to the pmda okay similarly if you want to submit to india so you will have to submit to the dcgi okay so this is the main responsibility of our uh, uh, clinical programmer okay 
so now i'll show you what tfl means yeah someone is a hello uh, hello yeah please yeah i have a question here ranjit so yeah, what uh, as a r programmer our role is in uh, what are the involvement of a r programmer in the submission process uh, you mean to say is the derivation of sdtm data set adam data set and tlf exactly. is that you mean to say exactly exactly or is there anything else is there anything else when it come to submission process mm -hmm. what, uh, that is what i just want to know mm -hmm. what is the invo what is the involvement of an r program in the submission process yeah submission purposes what we generally do in the sas right so basically we create the xpt package right over there we have a different yes. data sets and then we have a tfl set so uh, if, so if the, mm -hmm. yeah please please go yeah yeah please so go. maybe um, maybe we have to submit those part and some sometimes if we are working as a clinical r programmer that are mainly working for the submission part so we have to submit those part if we are working as a validator so you have to just validate those tfl cells and all right so it depends on the whether you are uh, on a higher level right or whether you are at a junior level right sometimes your job will just uh, here lies in the creation of sdtm right or maybe sometimes you have to just focuses on the annotation part right so it depends on the uh, the year of experiences or year of ex or expertise uh, right so but holistically we have to uh, support uh, on these three aspects tfl adam and stm submission and apart from this we have to also provide your uh, advice or feedback to the trial protocol design part crf designing part ecrf designing part and the annotated uh, designing of the ecrf right so these are the main aspects okay so you also have defined dot xml here in our program as well uh, yeah yeah so we have uh, we have different way to uh, convert those part right we we can create the sas okay. datasets and maybe you can use the sas uh, macro that we usually use right to convert or yes. maybe yeah uh, but we can create those uh, here as well because this is also a similar sort of programming right so we can convert and we can uh, define that okay? okay 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 thank you thank you so uh, much for, for your clarification uh, thank you so now i'll move to the uh, i'll show you the tfl uh, for time being uh, what tfl means so some someone doesn't have ex experiences in a clinical uh, trial part right so uh, so it doesn't have some idea so maybe i'll show you demographic so this is a uh, tfl says so tfl says is a just a document where we have a table listing and figure so table is table representation of the data right so this is if you see so this is the data right so here we have to table the safety population so safety population is type of uh, group of subjects that have the same as that have some criteria right so we have to just provide here how many subjects are available in our studies similarly we have pharmacokinetics populations so we have to provide how many subjects are available in the uh, pharmacokinetics population and other populations so in the table basically we'll provide the count and percentage if we have a categorical data and if we have a continuous data we'll provide here the summary mean median standard deviation uh, minimum and maximum so this is the part so this is the table representation means table and let me show you the uh, listing so listing is basically we have to report the individual patients right so i have created few listing maybe i'll show you the listing uh, as it is that will be more useful So if you notice, this is the abnormal biochemistry values, and this is the listing, right? So if you notice here, we have individual patients, then we have a parameter label, right? And then we have a visit and the normal uh, low and high values, then actual values, right? This is the range, normal and high, and this is the date of measurement at which time we have captured that information, right? And then we have a flag, right? So these are the individual because here we have we have to show each subjects right individually but in case of table let me show you the table here if you notice in the table we instead of showing the individual patient will summarize those results 
on a parameter basis or in a time point right or visit basis and here we have n median um, mode maximum minimum right across different treatment arm right so this is the test drug then reference drug and this is the overall right so this is the table and the previous one was the listing right so this is the listing and then table and sometimes we have to also create the figure figure are basically pictorial representation of our data right sometimes uh, figure shows or maybe figure tells more uh, information right rather than this uh, table and listing right so we have to also create some sort of figure for primary and uh, secondary endpoint right so this is the figure similarly we create the figure in the parts uh, uh, two of the uh, of this course right so we'll create those uh, listing figure data set also will create adam sdtm data sets right and table okay so this is i just wanted to show what the main uh, objective is so our main objective is to creating this table listing figure creating data sets so data sets includes stm data sets atom data sets right so while creating the stm data set we'll take a raw data set as an input and we'll convert into the stm one right so i'll guide you in the second part of the course how we'll create using the cds guideline so basically what we are doing basically we are just renaming the variable we are transposing in a different way right that is the suitable for the health arteries right and similarly we'll create the acid adam using the stm data set so adam is created basically for the analysis purposes and stm is basically a standard a standard data tabulation model and this is basically for the health authority to see the data right so they have different uh, uh, tools that can use the stm to do create the table right so they do the validation on the stm level as well as the adam label right so they do very extensive validation so if you have some idea so you can you can refer more clearly right so they have very sophisticated tool that can utilize the stm to do the table creation and they can validate those number right and why we are creating the stm because if we don't have if I, i'll explain in the next slide what is the utility of the stm and all right so this is all about the clinical uh, r programmer role and responsibility now i'll move to the next slide so cds cds is just a non profit profit organization and this is basically to support uh, the acquisition exchange and submission and archive of clinical trial data and metadata right so this is basically a consortium this is a non profit body that provides some sort of guideline to facilitate the submission right basically so this is the main objective and prior to the stm uh, so we have a different module so every pharmaceutical company have uh, different standards right and they submit to the fda based on the different variable names right and then fda uh, takes whole lot of time to validate those data right so that's why this organization come into the picture and they create some sort of guideline to harmonize that processes right so uh, now we have stm if we create the stm so they can the regulator can review the data right in very small amount of time right so that is the benefit so using this stm guideline we'll create the stm uh, using the cds guideline we'll create the stm and we'll submit this stm to the health authority right after that uh, we'll create also the adam data sets using the stm uh, guideline right uh, stm data sets and cds guideline and we'll submit to the health authority so so our responsibility lies here in creating the stm data set in creating the xpt file uh, from stm creation stm to adam creation from adam to tfl cells right so this is our main job and responsibility right so what is stdm so before the stm or before this uh, the cds so all the pharmaceutical company like novartis merck roche gsk right so they have different standards of capturing the data and based on that they provide those information to the fda so fda process those data if uh, they have some annotated part and based on that they uh, see uh, the feasibility or working mechanism of particular drug and they take whole lot of time to review that but once we have stdm we'll provide the stdm and then they review in a very small amount of time because all the variables and all the data structure remains the same right so that is the benefit of creating a stdm data set now i'll move to the potential of clinical r programming so here we have a very extensive uh, potential and we can harness those uh, uh, for our uh, our 
job profile right so this is uh, some sort of uh, uh, what uh, this is some sort of uh, research that is done in 2021 so as of to, uh, so in 2021 r uh, is one of the four uh, one of the five programming language of that year right so and this are this is very fam uh, famous or favorite amongst the data analysis and research programmer so this is a very unique feature and this is very popular in data analysis uh, data analyst and research programmer so basically in academia or maybe in clinical research uh, this uh, R tool is used very extensively, right? And here we have a, a variety of uh, industries used, right? So whether it is academia, fintech, government, whether it is FTA or weather, uh, weather stations, right? So weather forecasting and all, whether it is a re retail, social media, data journalism, manufacturing, healthcare and anymore. So they all uses the uh, R tool to do their day-to-day -day job right and do the analysis so basically these are basically uh, do the analysis aspects right so in case of social media so they just do the sentiment analysis right what are trending nowadays in case of retail they just wanted to see what are the different products that that are uh, more prevalent among the customer right so more famous so accordingly they feed you on a particular uh, particular day right? based on your interest so they do the backend and based on that they they provide a particular feed okay and i already told this is a platform independent so this is uh, that is why this is uh, this r is a cost effective because we know need to buy a sophisticated operating system with a uh, high configuration of ram and all right we can use a simple or crude system right to run the r script and here we have a whole lot of packages so we have a, a library a repository cran repository i'll show you in a minute so over there we have a more than 10000 of packages and every day they just upload the new one right and we can utilize based on our need i'll show you in a minute and it is a great tool for statistician right so here we have a whole lot of packages are shiny that we can use for our statistical analysis right our report creation okay so we'll see in more detail uh, in subsequent uh, classes this is just an outline and it is well suited for the machine learning and data visualization so yesterday i saw some part of data visualization maybe in upcoming videos when we do the figure listing and uh, figure part so i'll show you different aspects right so it has very powerful uh, are very it can create a high definition or very sophisticated uh, uh, figures right uh, and it is uh, this r programming is very useful in data wrangling or data processing right so we have a various package like deployer tidyverse that can do the uh, wrangling or processing of messy data uh, into a structured data right on a structured data it can convert the uh, unstructured data to a structured for format right so these are the basic advantages of using R and those are very easy right so pipe operator or maybe mutate we can create new variables right and we can do various transformation at the same time right and R is still growing and R keeps evolving and growing constantly and it updates based on the various needs right so suppose you are working on a particular thing and if you find some issues so you can write to the support community team right and they can resolve those uh, issues and they can fix those issues right in a very small amount of time right so that is a, a very unique uh, way of uh, working here in r right so we have a very solid community now i'll move to the uh, let me move to the let me show you this uh, cran so this is comprehensive r archive network and here we have a whole lot of uh, packages so this is a main pack, uh, page for r so here uh, we can download the r based on our operating system right we can download for the linux mac os and all and if you go to the packages so if i click here so it will provide this page and if you notice here table of available packages 
or you can uh, open this sorted by date of publication so if i click here so these are the all packages if you see the scroll bar right if i go this is the uh, uh, today date 9th of feb 2023 and these are the packages nlsr this is the title function for nonlinear least square solutions updated 2022 so maybe this is uh, earlier one maybe they have the updated few things and they provided here similarly we have a line corp, uh, corpus toolkit i don't know then we have here applied statistical hypothesis test so this is uh, hypothesis testing uh, packages similarly we have whole lot of packages so if i drag down uh, so these are the packages it will pop up right it will go further down right so various packages we can we can read right suppose i wanted to read this applied statistical hypothesis test right so what we'll do we'll here click on the on the package part and it will land on the, this page right so this is applied statistical hypothesis test it will provide some sort of background right and then it will provide here the dependencies so it takes the stat package so stat is the basic package right and then exact ci so this is also another package so based on different things they just club and they created this uh, applied statistical hypothesis test package right? okay so if you go to the reference manual here you'll find the pdf of this uh, outline of this package right so you can read you can see what are the different features here right you can uh, drag down so these are the uh, different uh, if you notice this is a non parametric ac abc interval right so uh, we can we can uh, we can read and we can utilize based on our need right so there are other packages as well so we can we can go to the and if you notice here these are the download we can download in the zip format right we can install also using the install dot packages command and within the parentheses and within double quote we have to write as ht right because this is the package name similarly if i go to the back part so here also we have whole lot of package so let me show you some uh, favorite one deployer yeah so this is a grammar of data manipulation right so this is very uh, handy package we usually have when we wanted to do the data processing part right so this is the one thing so if you wanted to read more we can click here and we land to this page we can read the pdf manual right and here we have whole lot of functions right this is the topic wise so we can read to another one we can move to the particular page right and we can uh, we can we can read if i go to the i don't know why this is not opening let me write here eight okay so if you see this is arrange functions and this is a function that allow us to sort the data right so how we have to pass so we have to write here the data set name right and then by variable and here we have to pass the variable name right it provides some a sort of example at the back end as well right so if you notice this is an empty car so this is the data set that we have in r right so similarly what we have the data says uh, what we have in sas the sas help library right so in sas help library we have a whole lot of data sets that we can uh, utilize for our uh, learning right so here also in r we have various data sets so one of them are this empty car so this is basically car data sets here we have a different variable this is cylinder this is disposition right displacement sort of and using that we can sort so first of all we have to pass the a data set name and then we have to pass the variable name so this is the way how we'll uh, sort the data similarly we have other auto.copy so we can copy those uh, file those data set to another location right some other function we can have here between and bind underscore call so this is used to bind multiple data set by column right so this is the different feature and uh, we can we can uh, read these and we can utilize so i'll i'll explain in more detail when we'll do the deployer right so because this is very important package so i'll explain each and every bit in more detail okay any questions so far anything any suggestions any 
any advice hope hope this is clear to everyone can everyone <laughs> provide their input yeah yeah uh, you are doing good uh, ranjit it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we don't have any issues with your teaching mm -hmm. but Maybe. i have one generic question yeah, yeah so i have one generic question here mm -hmm. so the r which you are teaching is only with the uh, you know in correlation with the clinical trials or it's the general syntax we are learning with respect to clinical data what uh, yeah. is it uh, so basically we are uh, we will consider here the clinical trial data right and we'll focus our uh, what data manipulation report creation only on the clinical domain. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I got that point, but the syntax usually will be the same throughout the R. Exactly, meaning, right? exactly, yeah. So if you wanted to use so the economic can, data set, you can mm -hmm. pass the economic data set, but syntax remains the same. Yeah, because even in SAS, mm -hmm. if you learn SAS, we can use it in financial sector exactly. as well as the clinical sector, exactly. right? That, exactly. that is what my question is. Like, whatever the syntax we are learn, learning here is going to be the same, but we are learning in here with respect to clinical data. Exactly. Is exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, anyone, anyone have some issues, doubt, questions, or clarification, right? Maybe you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Maybe if I am going fast, so maybe I can I can go slow, or maybe am I going very uh, too slow, so maybe I can increase my st uh, speed as well. So maybe you can provide your uh, advices here. So we are. Uh, we have six minutes maybe we can have some discussion anything is that clear what i have explained today or maybe uh, the previous two classes everything clear any questions from the previous classes or this classes any doubt okay so i'll consider silence as no so maybe i'll stop for the day and we'll see some more topic tomorrow okay thank you everyone thank you for your time see you tomorrow So welcome everyone and this is the second class after the two demo classes and uh, hope everyone uh, who wanted to join with us so have paid the uh, fee or maybe you can contact the course coordinator if you have some issues related to this fees part right and if you wanted to pay in two slots or more than two slots right so you can you can talk to them so hope you have uh, did that and maybe if you don't maybe you can you can Take the opportunity and uh, complete those part uh, at the earliest right okay because uh, they will change the meeting invite and they will share the first meeting invite to all of them uh, who have who will pay the course uh, payment okay so now we'll move to the next part and uh, i already told about myself so i have 12 plus years of clinical experiences and uh, i have some sas expertise as well as the r so in R, I have uh, exposure of different domain, right? Different packages like Deployer, Tidyverse, uh, ggplot2, right? Uh, Lubridate, Lubri, uh, Lubricate, right? And the other packages, okay? So now I'll move to the agenda. So today we'll see some more topic, why, uh, and here we'll see first what is R, right? So some basic outline of R, then uh, as, we all know that r is derived from the s language so we'll also see what is s and their uh, mechanism of working right the philosophy of s after that we'll back to the uh, r and we'll see some more uh, topic uh, and in more detail then we'll move to the basic feature of r so what are the basic features and that we'll use here right after that, we'll see the free software mechanism, right? So R is a free software. There are various types of freedom, right? We'll see those in uh, more detail. And then we'll move to the design of our system. After that, we'll move to the limitations. So, so there are a few limitations 
uh, what we have in R. So we'll see those. And there are various uh, organizations and various groups that are working on to mitigate those limitations, right? So there are limitations regarding security, right? There are limitations regarding uh, uh, close environment, right? And reproducibility of the different packages. So there are various groups like R validation hub, R core group, right? So those were working on to mitigate those part, right? And then we'll move to the question and session at the end. So if you have question in between, you can you can just stop me anywhere and you can ask your question. Okay. Uh, so before moving to the uh, our agenda, so any questions what we have in your mind from the previous classes? If you wanted to uh, express your doubt or any questions that you have uh, while uh, having those classes. I'll pause for a couple of seconds and then I'll move to the agenda. Any uh, question regarding the course uh, content and if you wanted to uh, uh, if you wanted to know more about that, so you can you can you can take this opportunity. Okay, I'll consider silence as no. <laughs> Maybe I'll move to the uh, agenda here. So what is R? So R is a uh, language, right? And environment for statistical computing and graphics. So this is the main uh, main building block, right? Or main part, statistical computing and the graphics. So if we see R in, in the domain, what uh, what we are using here in the clinical domain or other farmers or other domain like uh, manufacturing or um, media analysis right journalism so they basically create uh, this uh, they basically use this R programming for the statistical analysis and for reporting of graphs right or data visualization so because these uh, this R software has very powerful tools for those two aspects statistical computing and data visualization so data visualization and graphics means the same right so basically figure creation or chart creation. So uh, these two domain that uh, we will we'll, uh, utilize here in this course in more detail, right? So we'll create sophisticated uh, data visualization part uh, graphs and we'll create the different and uh, very high level analysis like Kaplan, Mayer, Cox and some other uh, statistical analysis, right? So we'll create some sort of uh, uh, p-value or hypothesis testing using chi-square, Fisher, uh, Clopper Pearson, confidence interval, and other uh, many more uh, tools that we'll uh, use here. Okay, so this is very, uh, very, uh, very important feature what we have in R, right? And this, uh, the R software is basically meant for this statistical computing and then graphics, right? Because this is the main language and main text what we see in all the domain, all the areas where we have our software and our programming right so and it comes with the command in interface right so we'll write the command and it will execute uh, one by one right so that is a very unique thing right we cannot uh, write a whole line of code right uh, 50 line or 30 line of code and after that we have to run all the line in one go, right? So we can write one by one and we can execute those uh, line of code uh, uh, separately, right? So that is a very advanced advantage of having us. Okay, suppose I wanted to uh, I wanted to load few data sets. So what I'll do, uh, let me copy a few part. Just remove the remaining one that are not needed. Okay, so this is the uh, R Studio. Uh, let me make it full screen. And this is the keyword, right? So here I have used the Heaven package, and this is a very handy package if you wanted to import SAS datasets into our environment so we'll use this heaven package okay into our environment 
so once we have to install so what how will uh, install that we'll write here install dot packages and here we'll write the heaven in double code okay so this is the way how we'll install i have already do that i already did that so i will not install once again and similarly we can install the deployer one using the uh, installed package keyword and after that we have to load so this is the way how we load uh, this uh, individual package okay so then we have to just import so if you notice so here i have just defined the path right and this path uh, contains all the atom data sets right if you notice here and over there we wanted to import this adsl okay so we have here the uh, function read underscore sas okay so it will just go to the individual path and it will uh, read the status sets and it will uh, store into the adsl okay after that i have used here pipe and i have applied the filter right suppose i wanted to run up to this line so what i'll do we'll just select uh, here uh, the line that we wanted to run and we can run this part uh, okay so i have to just call this library first okay and if i wanted to select up to this line and wanted to run up to this part so we have run at this line and it just call this adsl data set it has not applied this filter of itt okay itt population filter so here we have 116 observation and 55 variables if you wanted to run the whole line so we can run uh, just press the cursor here and press the run button or uh, using the keyword you have to press control and enter it will run a whole line so the unique feature here is if you wanted to run up a specific line right so you can just select this line and you can press the run button so it will run and it will provide the data here if you wanted to create the data as well so what we'll do you'll just press the cursor and you can select the line that you wanted to run so if you press here it will create the adsl without applying this filter okay so this is very unique thing right and here also uh, you can you can suppose if we have some more complicated uh, filter out there right so suppose i wanted to apply some more filter uh, right filter or some sort of uh, maybe i'll apply filter on the some other variable like age greater than 40 right so what i'll write i will write age greater than equal to 40 so if you notice the observation further reduces so suppose this is the line of code that someone has written suppose i didn't want to apply this filter so what i'll do i'll just select up to this line and run uh, this part so it won't apply the filter of age and here we have this much of record okay so this is the way how we can uh, run a specific line of code uh, after selecting a particular line that we wanted to run right so this is very unique and very a good feature right so uh, we can we can see the data on real time what are happening after applying a particular filter right and after after don't applying a particular filter so we can see those differences and accordingly we'll decide uh, what are happening inside that uh, data okay any questions here so I, this i just wanted to explain with you all okay so now i'll move to the presentation part so this is a command line interface and r is available across wide uh, widely used platform like windows linux mac os right so it works for all the operating system and this is the latest uh, cutting edge uh, tech, uh, r programming uh, tools we have here so there are machine learning tools there are there are a sophisticated data visualization tool there are dynamic fi uh, figure creation right and there are different neural networks and also all the sophisticated or, or advanced analysis what we listen across the industries right so we have all the features here in r so we can use those individual packages and we can do our job um, based on our requirement right and r is a dialect of s so r originates from the s language so it has a similar sort of uh, nomenclature and similar sort of uh, uh, variable naming conventions 
and data storage, right? And uh, the, 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 because it originates from the S, so it inherits all the property what the S language has, right? So we we all doesn't have much expertise on S, right? So if you have some, so maybe you can utilize those S code, right? And you can write here in R and then run your script. Uh, but S is a sort of another uh, software or another tool that is basically meant for uh, statistical computing or statistical analysis and data visualization. So R is also uh, originated in the same domain, but here uh, the difference in R as an S is, so the script of S is a bit complex, but here in R, so while designing, so they written all the code in C language. So the, the core code, what we have right now is written on the C language, right? So yeah, so that can easily be debugged, right? As compared to the S. Because S was originally written on the Fortran uh, library, right? Using the Fortran uh, keyboard and the code, uh, coding conventions. So that has some uh, differences here, okay? Now I'll move to the next slide. So now we'll see what is S. So S is uh, as another language, right? That was developed by John Chambers and others at old Bell Laboratory. So this is very famous laboratory. So if you if you heard about various inventions that are uh, invented in this uh, Bell Laboratories, right? So S also originated at the same place, right? And this is originally a part of A and T Corporation. So this is a, a sort of company that uh, basically worked. And it is initiated in uh, 1978 as an internal statistical analysis environment. So if you notice, so S is also created for the statistical analysis part, right? And it is originally implemented as a Fortran library, right? So Fortran is another programming language. And using that, they created this uh, S language mainly for the statistical analysis part, right? A statistical analysis means we wanted to uh, do some sort of data uh, if, if you have some data sets and you wanted to do some sort of analysis, if you wanted to extract the information, right? What we have in the data, that means it's analysis. So you'll create the table, you'll create the charts, figure, and based on that, you'll see what the data actually wanted to say, right? So that means the analysis. And in 1988, uh, the system was written in C, right? and begin to resemble the system that we have today. So now we have a C script for the S as well, and it was written in 1998. But after that, the book of uh, book programming uh, with data uh, by John Chambers. So he written one uh, very famous book, uh, data pro uh, programming by John Chambers. And over there, they uh, document different version of the language, right? So different version of S language, right? And based on that, they finally uh, did the uh, exploration and uh, invented this R, right? But prior to that, so fundamentally, uh, fundament, fun, the fundamentals of S language itself has not changed dramatically since the publication of this, uh, this green book, right? Uh, book programming uh, by John Chambers in 1998. So all the basic or fundamental part, right? The coding convention, the variable nomenclature, right? The way it stores the variable, all remains the same. So S also stores all the part in the RAM, right? So for that also we need a large amount of RAM if you wanted to import or if you wanted to work with a very large data set, right? Big data. R also, it stores all the data on a physical memory, right? So if you wanted to use a very large data set, so you have to have some uh, large uh, RAM size, right? So that uh, it will work uh, smoothly, right? And in 1998, the S, the programming language, won the Association for Computing Machinery Software System Award. So this is a prestigious award in the, uh, in the field of computer science, right? And it won that uh, award in 1998 uh, because at that time this S was very popular and very supposed, a very advanced in the domain of statistical analysis, right? So that's why the, uh, that's, uh, it won the, uh, this award, right? Computing a machinery of a system of software. 
and after that i'll show you the philosophy of uh, uh, s language so s is originally uh, generally the general s philosophy is important to re uh, realize particular use of s and r right the s language had its root in data analysis right so we saw in the previous slides that it is meant for the statistical analysis right our data analysis and this uh, this is the traditional way how they, they created the s language right so this is basically meant for data analysis and this r is also originating from the s so it also meant for the data analysis or statistical analysis right so this is the thing that we have to keep in mind because the inventor or those who have invented this r or s they have some uh, so they, they wanted to focus mainly on the data analysis aspects right and they wanted to uh, make it more easier right so those who doesn't have the programming back background or doesn't have the core programming skills they can also do the analysis right uh, so that is the main thing uh, what we have uh, this uh, s philosophy right and they built language uh, that uh, that would be suitable for the interactive data analysis right command line uh, based right so we can write the command and we can execute that particular line of command after writing the particular line right and it will execute line by line and uh, it will be easier for the, the the person who doesn't have the very sophisticated programming skills uh, to understand right so um, it's very simple or very naive uh, programming skills person can also understand and they can also interact with the data right so that is the benefit here and like sr is very interactive right so i just showed how the individual bit of uh, script we can run and we can see the result uh, line by line right or chunk by chunk okay so any questions so far uh, up to this line S, S philosophy, what is R, what is S? Uh, no questions, Ranjit. Okay, uh, perfect. So now we'll move to the R, right? And we'll see some more feature here. So what are the development and how the R developed across uh, different years, right? So in 1991, this was the um, main year, and they created R. And the person here is the Rashi Hakka and Robert Gentleman, and they created uh, this R in the in, uh, Department of Statistics at University of Auckland. So, so if you notice here, sorry, if you notice here, this was created in the Department of Statistics. So that means that this is basically meant for the statistical analysis or data analysis, right? and these two person uh, also have the user of s right so they use s extensively i guess they they are also some sort of core group uh, member of s language and they just wanted to simplify further the the coding uh, domain right and coding paradigm so they created this r in 1991 and in 1993 they first uh, uh, first announcements of R was made to the public, right? So for two years, they just built some sort of solid background and after that, they did the announcement to the public, okay? And after that, uh, the Ross and Robert experience developing R, R documentation. Uh, developing R is documented in 1996 paper right and this paper was a uh, journal of computational and graphical statistics so uh, so today class you you see a whole lot of uh, history historical part right so this is also some sort of uh, some you, you have some idea right how this originated and what are the mechanism right so because this is not very much important but if you know this this background so you have some idea why they have created r uh, when they have the s language right because they just wanted to simplify the coding paradigm right so so this this may be some sort of theoretical class we don't have any uh, uh, here codes and all right but believe me maybe this will uh, will be helpful in your later section of the course and in 1985 
Martin and Marshall made an important contribution for convincing uh, Ross and Robert to uh, to use the general public license to make R a free software. Right. So before 1995, so R was not in a uh, in a free or uh, free software tool. Right. So this this Martin has convinced this Ross and Robert to make uh, this R software as a free software. Right. And after that, they did just register for this. A free one. So 1996, a public mailing list was created. So this is mailing list. So you can, you have, if we have some issues and if you uh, write your code and if you find some bugs, so you can uh, raise your question to this R help group or R develop group, right? So if you are R developer, so you can uh, pose your question to this R developer list. And if you are, if you are just a user, you can uh, use this R help, right? Uh, so this is basically a mailing group. A mailing community you can mail your questions or, or queries and in 1997 so our core group so this this uh, this uh, working group is still there and they generally handles all the core uh, uh, core source code right uh, this is a very important group what we have today itself and they generally initiates all the developments right and they are very much active right and so in 1997, this R uh, core group was formed and containing some people associated with the S and S plus language. So S and S plus is S plus is some sort of advanced version of S, right? And so uh, uh, containing those people, those person who have expertise in S and S plus, they created some sort of uh, small group and using that, they just maintain the R uh, working uh, and R, R software source code, right? So currently also, so this uh, group is very much active and they control all the source code and all the developments that they wanted to uh, see in the domain of R programming, right? So they, they facilitate various changes like they wanted to create some sort of uh, harmonization across all pharmaceutical industries so for that they created our uh, validation hub so and there are other really uh, other initiatives also so all the pharmaceuticals company like Novartis, TSK, Merck, right? Pfizer they created group and they generally uh, the art consortium I guess they created and they generally uh, give presentations and they share their uh, their experiences of R and what the tool new tool that they have developed, right? And as this is the open source, so we can download those uh, lecture series, we can download those packages, and we can modify based on our need, uh, need right? And we can use those uh, uh, tools. Okay, I'll show you one by one uh, what are the different tools. And uh, finally, in 2000, the version 1.0.0 zero was released to the public right so this is a uh, the first person first important release uh, what we see in the in the in the public right so from 2000 onwards so r was a major uh, stakeholder in the market and it has to compete with uh, various software like uh, like s s plus stata and excel sas as well so it has it has uh, shown a very uh, sharp growth right and in 2020 so we are in 2023 so in 23 years so it has uh, reached a very uh, good uh, good uh, good height right in their development so it has we, we cannot see this uh, it has challenged the sas because we we cannot see uh, we cannot think in that domain because all the software has different utility right so r has free software r is free and here we have a whole lot of tools so why not we we can uh, utilize this uh, free part and we can work accordingly and we can modify our uh, our our job what we usually do with sas we can we can utilize those to uh, to do, do the same same uh, work using R. So this is the one thing that we can think of. We cannot see as a competitor, right? But maybe in the in the near future, uh, there might be the thing that most of the pharmaceutical company they may uh, use R more extensively, and after some time they can just rely with R and they can uh, 
uh, not use other tool because of uh, free and others uh, other uh, utility perspective right because here if you wanted to modify a little bit suppose if you wanted to calculate some sort of sophisticated methodology so here we have a source code we can go to the source code and we can modify based on our need right but in the other software like uh, like sas we don't have the source code right so that have some added advantage uh, of using r so there are pros and cons so we have to just see the pros part and accordingly we have to adjust our need right okay uh, any questions so far Okay, so I'll move to the basic feature of R. So as as we are discussing, so similarity with S. So R is very much similar with S language and user-friendly coding paradigm. So it has very uh, user-friendly coding, right? So we can write the code in plain English, right? So if you wanted to sort, we can write arrange and we'll pass the variable. If you wanted to apply the node key, we can write distinct and we'll write the variable name. So it will apply the node of key part. Suppose you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to report, so we'll write report. If you wanted to create the plot, we can write just plot and we'll pass the X and Y variable. It will do the plotting. So all the coding is very user friendly and it is in plain English, plain English, right? So the keyword, all the keyword that they have created. So they kept in mind that the user may doesn't have the uh, very high, uh, expertise in the programming right it doesn't have the core programming skills so that's why they created all the keyword in a user-friendly manner right and that makes it simple and the other feature is uh, R runs on our platform OS uh, Windows Mac right and other operating system and it has also uh, presence on the cloud part right so we have the cloud version of R as well and it runs on tablet, phone, PDA, right? So that make it more feasible, right? So suppose in case of data, so I have some example, real example. So uh, one CRO, I guess I am not able to recall the name. So they just wanted to uh, create the eCRF, right? And they just wanted to utilize this R. So they created a database using R, right? And they fed those up application to the uh, tablet and using that they just captured all the records and then fed to the database right so this is the utility suppose if, if you if you're not able to install your software on a tablet so you cannot do that you have to bring the laptop on the site and you have to do the uh, data entry part right but if you install your software or your software runs on a tablet or phone so you can you can run on that and you don't have to bring the laptop with 1.5 kgs of weight right you can bring the tablet that is very easy to carry and all and we can do the data uh, data entry part right and it has a very frequent release so recently we have a 4.0.1 version of r and over there they just modified a few things they just added naive pipe so i'll talk in more detail later part of the course uh, so they just uh, fix and they uh, have a very frequent release of different versions right so that is uh, thing that they just wanted to update right they just wanted to modify optimize the code right if you have some bugs so this fix as soon as possible so that is a very good feature and it has very rich graphic capability so these are the various packages lattice uh, ggplot2 right there are other plotly and uh, other uh, graphing tools that can do a uh, dynamic uh, plot right and it is also suited for the machine learning so there are various uh, packages the ml3 right for the machine le uh, machine learning part and like s r has maintained original philosophy of interactive and powerful programming language so this is the main objective or main thing that we have here right it maintains the fundamental what we have in s right so this is the purpose 
main building uh, main purpose why they have created R okay and apart from this R is still growing and R keeps evolving and growing constantly and updating uh, and upgrading so thanks to the uh, solid supportive community with uh, more than 10,000 so it is various packages uh, let me show you once again and yesterday we saw that various packages were uh, uploaded on the CRAN so this is the uh, let me move to the uh, let me go to the main page so this is the um, main page of CRAN so comprehensive R archive network and here we have all lot of uh, files and codes right so uh, if you go to the packages i'll show you some other aspects of this page so sort by date and publication so if you notice so this is uh, 10th of feb right and here we have a uh, library date so making dealing with the dates and little easier so library date is very handy package i guess they have updated something here so if you if you see this is 1.9.2 version so they fixed something and this is very handy package while um, working with the date and time right so we'll use this package more extensively in uh, subsequent classes right and here we have various things so you can go to the uh, manual you can see the uh, do more with the dates. so it will open one page and here it will give a whole lot of examples and how we'll uh, do uh, imputation or some sort of processing with the date right similarly if i go to the earlier page so you can download this i show yesterday right this part and here we have different uh normally i just wanted to show okay so he, these are the url various urls you can you can read and you can go through so this is the original one uh, this is another page that for the liberated and here we have a whole lot of uh, you can download the cheat sheet we don't have uh, cheat sheets right now cheat sheet is basically a big page uh, let me see is that working or not okay so this is not working so far so you can download uh, let me show you the cheat sheet for the other one Uh, it uh, sorry uh, for tidy first to know with it okay so cheat sheets basically it describe all the functions right in one uh, pdf right so this is uh, data camp cheat sheet but we have the similar sort of cheat sheet for the other packages uh, let me check uh, deployer yeah this is for from the r studio so they they discuss and they de uh, discuss in more detail right uh, with codes right so here we have codes and then how it does the data right how it reshape the data similarly we have subsetting right so you can uh, this is very useful when we have uh, visualization part right so if you see these are the summary functions so here we have a whole lot of observation whole lot of uh, rows and if you apply the summary function it reduces to a single observation right so that uh, that is very elegant right so we can see it pictorially what it happening basically right so this is a cheat sheet and uh, let me go to the another part so if you notice here whole lot of packages right and if i go to the r journal so here we have mailing list so this is the article type history editorial so the all the all the different members right 
and if you go to the our foundation so this is also one organization that is very important right so you can find resources there as well right you can go to what's new so these are the announcements right various new updates and packages right so we can read those apart from this uh, there might be something here reporting work so if you wanted to report some sort of bugs or some sort of issue that you are facing so you can use this page and you can use this text right this uh, guideline we have to report and you can report those uh, to the uh, to our right similarly after that we have here conferences right mailing list so here we have mailing list our help that i talked about and then we have here uh, develop uh, our develop so this is for the developer and this is for the general the above one is for the general so there are other special group right our special group on the mac port of r so this is basically for the mac operating system similarly for the database right working group for devins and then special working for dynamic simulation model right so if you see there are a whole lot of group so using r in ecological data analysis epidemiological data analysis so based on that you can you can support you can write to a specific group that you are interested in right so high performance computing so we'll see the parallel computing at the end of the course so these are the various group right robust statistics uh, teaching statistics and more using R so this is one group so these are various uh, groups that works on a specific area right and they they uh, they wanted to uh, they wanted to do some sort of research and they wanted to modify right what what we can do better right in that particular uh, area okay so there are general instructions here how we have to email right how we have to raise your concern here we have a general email a request at uh, at our project.org right so this is our help mailing list similarly we have here developer page it is uh, yeah so this is developer page here we'll see the new uh, notices right news and uh, if I scroll down here, we have a different versions of a particular package and then different text. So maybe if, uh, just walk you through this page and then you'll find a whole lot of uh, information. So here we have our blogs. So they write different thing, right? So this is on 7th of, okay, so this is quite old, but this is some sort of uh, issues while switching R to UTF-8 and UC. So this is encoding basically utf is encoding so uh, suppose you wanted to uh, encoding is basically a machine language right so how will uh, write your uh, our internal code right and how the machine reads so these are the basically interaction with the machine so over there we use encoding so these are the utf 8 is a sort of encoding different type of encoding then concordance so there are different high level things so you can you can read based on your expertise right and based on your interest and they are here our foundations so board members donors donate so uh, and help with our getting help so you if you go there so it, it will help you from from the scratch right so how we'll read if you have any questions you can use this help keyword or question mark and then write the keyword so it will move to the help window and it will provide the help right then here we have documentation frequently asked questions so if i go to the frequently asked questions so over there we have a whole lot of r frequently asked or r mac os frequently asked then windows frequently asked so this is basically a frequently asked question specifically for the apple operating system or microsoft operating system right and if you wanted to see the channel frequently asked so you'll go there and these are the various table of content right we can read those uh, text from here okay so this is all about the uh, grand and all the uh, our feature what we have here right and if i go to the packages so i saw yesterday i already showed all the 
uh, if I go to the packages part so yeah so this is the packages and here we have a whole lot of packages yeah if you notice here we have 19,000 uh, yeah 19,169 available packages for now all right so this is the added advantages right so we have a whole lot of domain and various packages and we can use based on our need okay and now i'll move to the uh, presentation part okay so this number is a bit less so now we have more than 19000 uh, packages okay and it has very active our help and our develop mailing list so they can respond your queries in very small amount of time right so that is very useful okay so now i'll move to the next so it has a very great tools for statistics so uh, statistics are very big thing today are shiny and all right so they created sophisticated app that do the analysis and report creation right in very small amount of time so for that also so this is a very good uh, uh, programming right that we can utilize so maybe uh, this course doesn't uh, discuss about the r shiny app but maybe if time permits at the end i'll show you some glimpse how to uh, how the r shiny looks like and how we can create those in very small amount of time right and if I move to the next, so this is a very good platform, right? I'll let you to perform data wrangling. Data wrangling is basically data processing. What we do uh, we, we, when we have unstructured data set, we'll convert to a structured one, right? So that is the called a data wrangling part. So transposing of data, renaming the variables, converting variables into a different unit, right? So those we can do very easy in R. And there are various devoted packages like our uh, deployer tidyverse right so we can use those packages and we can perform those activity and now we will move to the free software so any questions so far i don't know why uh, is that everything clear to all or none of them are clear hope the first is true to all <laughs> Uh, it's clear okay okay perfect so uh, maybe i'll move to the any any questions anything uh, if someone because i see a sweta replies uh, very frequently and other one doesn't maybe if you have some question maybe you can you can unmute yourself and then if you don't have maybe i'll move to the next okay so pause for a couple of seconds and then i'll move to the next part okay so the free software so the major major advantage that r has over other statistical software that it is absolutely free uh, right so we no need to pay anything to anyone right we have to just download those packages and uh, those software and different packages and within that also uh, we don't have to pay anything if you if you wanted to use a sophisticated package so we can utilize that and uh, we don't need to pay any any pennies to anyone right so that is a uh, free software means and here we have a different uh, type of freedom so before moving to the freedom part i'll just uh, describe here the copyright the copyright of this primary source code so so primary source code is uh, mainly handled by this R working committee or R foundations right so they basically uh, held those source code uh, the copyright of this uh, source code and then uh, they uh, they publish and is published under this uh, general public license version 2.0 so this is basically a guideline or maybe some sort of a copyright part right and here they use version 2.0 so this is not required to remember all the lines but uh, we have to recall that primary source code is held by the r foundation so they may ask someone some sometimes maybe in the interviews they may ask what is do you know what is for our foundations so maybe we can reply yes our foundation is the core group or maybe a working group in r that mainly uh, have the copyright of the primary source code of r right 
so this is a very uh, uh, important uh, body so according to the free soft foundation so this is a non-profit organization right and this uh, this facilitates uh, the free software exchange across uh, across different region right so this is a very uh, big uh, big uh, organization right and this discuss four type of freedom so uh, the freedom first that is f0 is freedom to run the program for any purposes so whether you wanted to run on uh, on uh, our code or whether you wanted to utilize uh, your r code for running a clinical trial uh, tables right or clinical trial analysis or some sort of finance and all so you can run for any purposes right now the second freedom is uh, the freedom to study how to uh, how how the program works and adapt it to your needs suppose you wanted to modify uh, something in the code right so you can do that so that comes under the second freedom that is f1 then we have a third freedom so freedom to redistribute so you can modify and you can redistribute among your peers right so that uh, that is the third freedom that is freedom f2 then the fourth one the f3 is a freedom to improve the program and release your improvement to the public suppose you find some sort of uh, bugs on some sort of uh, uh, issues right and you have fixed those issue you have improved those issue right and if you wanted to release to the public so that everyone benefits um, of your work right so you can do that so that is the fourth freedom that we have here so we have here all type of freedom under r so you can run for any purposes you can modify the code you can share or redistribute your code with your peers you can improve the program and release the improved version to the public right so these all are available under r right we don't have uh, available uh, we don't have this freedom for the other software right so that is the uh, added advantage uh, of using r now i'll move to the r uh, design of r system so here uh, the primary uh, r system is available from cran uh, uh, repository so comprehensive r network that i just showed the website right and cran is a central software repository supported by the r foundation so i just showed so this is the cran uh, repository i'll move to the home page so this is the home page of uh, cran right and this is maintained by the r foundation so if you go there this is the r foundation section and this is the uh, not for profit organization working in the public interest right and these are the core uh, core team right and they support mainly this part and these are the free software foundation and then other aspects other informations right so the board you can see uh, this is not required right but maybe we can we can just uh, go through that uh, different section members these are the members so if you notice the, all the members are of different origin so mainly uh, the, there are various people from india then usa germany right so you can see uh, uh, wide uh, representations right and then donors don uh, donate so these are the donors supporting new, uh, natural persons and remember say fear for the supporting okay so these are the fees that they just uh, take right for supporting member okay so no no so th they will give some sort of uh, uh, annual membership fee for supporting members okay so supporting member will get, receive this amount of fee i guess and these are the patreon member right and donors so these are individual donors right so these are the uh, our foundation right and this is the CRAN page. So if I go to the home, so this is the CRAN. We can download the R and we can install. I'll show you the next class how to download and install those. Here we have a R Consortium YouTube channel. So this is also a very uh, a good uh, body. And this facilitates the use of R, right? Across different industries, not in the pharmaceutical. It facilitates the use of R in industries like manufacturing production 
service industries like uh, pharmaceutical and other uh, like uh, TCS and all other, other organization, right? So across different industries, they facilitate the use of R and they create different uh, lecture series, webinar and all, right? Okay, so now I'll move to the presentation. So this is all about the CRAN repository and this is supported by the R Foundation, okay? So CRAN also hosts many add-on packages uh, can be uh, that can be extended the functionality of R. So I already showed uh, the packages, right? Different packages and uh, uh, let me show once again. So here, if we, if we go to the CRAN, uh, So this is our practical. Let me select your CRAN, and this is the CRAN repository. So here, if you go in the project section, you can you can find here the source code, our source. So here we have a source code. We can we can download the source code, but the copyright issue is still available here, right? So this is the general public license, but uh, we have some. Uh, some copyright we cannot reproduce and all right but if you guys if i go to the uh, package section so here we have various packages uh, that are available in the table format right so this is the different packages and there are other uh, news or maybe manual so here introduction to r we have different different uh, different uh, for different people this is our release the latest one this is our pass so, so there might be something that they fixed and you can download in pdf html and epub right different file format and you can read those part All right so now i'll move to the uh, presentation here so those are uh, add-on packages and after that, we have here, uh, the R system is divided into two conceptual parts. The first is base R system. Uh, if you download your R software from the CRAN, so that just contain the base part, right? And if you wanted to increase the functionality, you have to use the different packages, right? So like I have installed the deployer, so that is advanced one, right? So, uh, so uh, that comes under everything else. So second part, you have to optimize or you have to enhance your R uh, functionality. So you have to use those packages one by one based on your requirement and you can increase those uh, and can, you can do your work. And if you define the functionality of R, so the, the first is base, so that contains uh, R system contains so no need to download anything if you install R so it contains the base part and over there the base packages which is required to run R and contains most fundamental functions right so most basic function it uh, basically contains so I'll show you what base contains suppose you wanted to plot so plot is a base part suppose you wanted to read some file so read dot CSV uh, is a base part right some other function like keyword like if you wanted to draw the pie chart so pie is a function that written under the base right so there are not simple uh, simple functions so there are other sophisticated function like pie chart box plots that is also uh, available in base but over there we have some definition uh, uh, we cannot create it uh, we cannot create a high dimension figure right so for that, we have to use some other uh, sophisticated uh, package that can do that uh, job in more uh, more detailed manner, right? And then we have other packages like uh, Dipla, other packages like advanced uh, thing, right? So if if you if you first uh, the other package contained in the base one is a stat, right? And data sets. So a stat is uh, this is utils. The first is utils. And then second is stat. Stat, this is clear in the name, right? So this is for the statistical analysis. Data sets, this contains the data sets. So in SAS help, as in SAS we have a, a library SAS help that contains various data sets. So here in R also we have a package data sets that contains a whole lot of data sets that we can utilize for our uh, programming activities, right? And similarly we have a graphics. Graphics is for uh, creating uh, figures. 
then we have tr graphics so advanced version of that then grid grid is also a sort of uh, data visualization tool then we have methods tools parallel so parallel is for the parallel computing i'll show you this package in more detail in the later section of the course similarly we have compiler to compile the part spline uh, is i don't know what it means basically it it is for the line diagram i guess and then stats for is the modification of this uh, our updated version of this start package right so these are the basic r uh, uh, package that we have here in within the r system and there are also some recommended packages like post class cluster right uh, code uh, tools foreign right lattice and all so these are recommended ones so that are very much required in our day-to-day uh, -day activity right so for example if you want to do the couple and mirror analysis so you have to use this survival one right if you wanted to do mixed modeling we'll use this mass data set if you wanted to do some sort of uh, smoothing so you have to use kernel smooth right if you wanted to do the plot so you'll use lettuce so no need to worry i'll i'll show you each and every package uh, one by one and in more detail so there are various packages that are being developed on our repository like github or a bit bucket so these are uh, repository and over there you'll find various packages you can download those packages from the cran uh, source as well so these are the thing you can you can see the source code here as well github or bit bucket okay now we'll see some limitations of r so there is no major limitations but there are things that i wanted to cover here so not efficient in handling large data sets so this was the earlier uh, 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 maybe in now as well so because this here large data sets means so very big data sets like um, one tb data sets right or some sort of real uh, real uh, real world evidence data sets right? over there we have a millions and billions of records right so in that case because r stores all the data in the physical memory right so in that case it have some issues so that have also uh, uh, that can also be uh, <coughs> that can also be give me a second <coughs> okay so this this limitations uh, is uh, can be handled using uh, different tools right suppose we wanted to have uh, if you have uh, a data set that have millions of records right and if you need only two variables out of that so what we can do while importing you can just specify those two variables and in that case the size of the data reduces further right because in in the data set that we wanted to fetch over there we have thousands of rows right thousands of columns but we need only two so if you wanted to import only those two so that we can do very efficiently so that is the way uh, how to uh, mitigate these limitations right if you have data sets that have numerical as well as the categorical variable right and if you wanted to import whole the data sets so if you specify which variable is of which data type right so that will reduce your uh, size of the data and it will execute your uh, or it will do the impu uh, import of particular data in a very less amount of time so that is the way uh, we can handle this uh, limitations right so i'll i'll discuss maybe in i guess sixth or seventh class uh, this part uh, the memory calculation of uh, imp while importing that uh, any file from the external drive right so i'll discuss those part in more detail and the second is basic security so earlier the r is a free software and everyone thinks that this doesn't have the security concern right doesn't have the foolproof security right so why every, uh, why anyone can rely on those part but the r foundation and the r working group they have created various uh, uh, working group right so if you uh, i saw just uh, the other working group right so there are various working group that are working on to enhance the securities and they also provide some paid versions so over there they provide some sort of uh, extra layer of securities right so they provide all the stable packages right to those uh, who who paid basically for the r right so mainly for the pharmaceutical industries pharmaceutical company or the cro they use those paid version right 
because they just wanted to uh, have some extra layer of security because clinical data uh, data and other data are very sensitive right so that has also been addressed uh, but earlier it was the issues and in the free version also so this is the limitation for the uh, security part apart from this not having customer support so in r we don't have any devoted customer support but we have here the uh, solid r community but if we have some customer support we can uh, we can raise our concern 24 by 7 so that is lacking and uh, for mitigating this uh, error uh, mitigating these limitations so our validation uh, our core group is creating one sort of uh, very uh, devoted customer support so maybe in coming future we'll see some sort of customer support here in r as well and not efficient in working with the cloud so earlier version of r it was having this issue but now we have the cloud version of r so if i go to the r studio part r studio so earlier it was r studio but now they have changed the name to posit so if i go to the uh, accept all here you'll find the cloud version uh, uh release desktop older version uh, i don't know where it is let me check I don't know, uh, they, they changed the space uh, a little bit. So here you'll find the uh, earlier it was, uh, the cloud version was also available, right? I don't know why I'm not able to locate that part. Let me check. Yeah, so they created another website, posit.cloud. So, so this is earlier. Uh, those two are on the same page, right? So that's why. So we can we can here have some uh, benefits, right? So, right to choose your plan. So if you have individuals on, so they may charge you uh, less, right? So five dollar per month, right? But this is not required. Why you download this cloud version? You can install in your PCs and you can work there. Right, but for the premium one and other, so they have some other advantages, right? So up to 16 GB of RAM per project, right? Four CPU per project. So this is the uh, they utilizes basically com parallel computing part. So I'll show you how the, we can utilize four CPU on the same uh, system, right? Or more than four CPU, right? So based on that, they charge uh, more, right? And based on the functionality, right? Unlimited project, unlimited share of spaces, 200 computers per hour per minute, right? So this is uh, using this uh, subscription, we can run up to this 200 computers. Compute, right? Sorry, compute. Okay. So similarly, we have organization here. Uh, so they have some sort of extra uh, security layer. So maybe uh, they will uh, discuss somewhere. Okay. So we have to request a code for the organization, right? So this is all about the cloud part and they have created the cloud, but earlier that was the issues. And for the uh, for the free version also, the, uh, we have this issue for the um, cloud part, but they have resolved that. A spread across various packages. So this is the main thing. So here we have uh, various packages that can do same task right so same pack as various packages can do the same task and within that we have some discrepancies but if we talk about the limitation because this is not limitations because different packages have different assumptions and based on that they create different uh, uh, descriptive statistics or different analysis so here we can think of this limitation as an advantage but because we can have uh, different module different uh, methodology right and we can utilize based on our need so we should not think uh, this uh, as a limitation here we have freedom to see 
what are the values across different assumptions right so i don't think this is a limitation as such but here this is one challenging because the, those who have who are new in r so they can they can they can miss that part right so some package have some suppose if you wanted to teat if you wanted to do the t test so first of all we have to see the normality of data right if we don't have the normal data sets so it doesn't make sense for creating the uh, hypothesis uh, test for the uh, pair t test or for two sample t test right so first we have to see the normality of the data and then we can move for the uh, t test but here we have the tool that can do a non parametric part without having uh, checking the uh, normality assumptions so that is added advantage we cannot uh, if, you, if, you, if our data doesn't have the normalities then we have to rely on the, uh, the other part non-parametric part but here the system itself moved to the non-parametric based on the internal filter if, if internally they check the normality of the data and if data is not normal they directly move to the non-parametric approach of uh, t-test right so that is the advantage of uh, uh, using different packages right but we have to keep in mind um, because for the early user this may be a nightmare right they cannot uh, visualize those differences right and that create issues okay so any any questions so far uh, because this is all about i want to cover here for this class any questions any clarification anything you wanted to say here uh, hi, Randy. Yeah, please. Uh, how much of percentage R is using in the companies? Uh, yeah, because uh, all the companies, so based on the resources, right? So in the CRO, they doesn't have full-fledged team, right? Because of resource crunch and all. But in the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. company like Novartis, GSK, Roche, so they have devoted team of 50 or 60 members right they create the data science tools as well they create the app they create the reporting right they create the operational app using r so they use very extensively and this is very simple to no need to worry so you can you can learn this tool in one and two months right so this is very simple and because uh, this is a trending because if the company switch to this free software tools so the the cost of inventing a particular drug reduced drastically right so mm -hmm. that is also a added advantage so that is the benefit for all of us right if the pharmaceutical company or drug development company may move to a highly paid software like SaaS to a free software so the price of the drug or accessibility of the drug reduces further right or accessibility increases uh, so that is uh, one thing Okay, and this is very simple. Believe me, you don't find difficulties if you if you give some uh, of your time while learning this tool. Okay. 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 Thank you. Then. Okay. Welcome. Any further questions? Hi, Ranjit. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, could you bring your mic to the because your voice is not clear i guess uh, can you hear me now yeah i can hear you but please speak so uh, a little bit louder okay mm -hmm. uh, my question here is uh, we joined just now mm -hmm. i don't know how many slides we missed uh, yeah yeah no, you'll you'll get the recording no problem okay mm -hmm. so this is the uh, uh, before this class we have two demonstration class and one uh, basic class where we have discussed the uh, our risk programmer responsibility and role right and what are the clinical uh, uh, clinical trial processes right protocol development what is the protocol crf ecrf right and the other part right what will do the sdtm creation what is sdtm what is adam and all right so maybe you can you can uh, you can visit those uh, lecture series and you can if you have some questions maybe you can pause here I'm happy to help. Okay, uh, uh, you go from base to base to advanced, right? Exactly. In R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start from the beginning. If you don't have any uh, knowledge, so that will be good. 
because if you have some knowledge so you have to erase that and you have to feed but if you don't have fresh brain so that will be easier okay so we'll start from the scratch and we'll move up to the high level okay mm -hmm. is it the same time you your class gonna start or how yeah yeah the same yeah. time maybe uh, they will they will because uh, once uh, all the participants who wanted to join with us so they, if they paid so they create some sort of new meeting invite right uh, because this is uh, for uh, this is uh, access to all right so they create some uh, secure environment right and over there they will assign you you uh, some sort of link right and we'll keep us at the same time but you will receive a fresh email invite, meeting invite. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll talk to the course coordinator and and try to pay the course fee and accordingly they will share the details. They also share the uh, some sort of uh, uh, tool over there. You, you can access the portal and you can see the recording and the code, right? And slide deck. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any question? Any further question from anyone else? We have ten minutes. Maybe we can we can have some discussion and some. If you feel in that way, can you please open the initial slides because we joined at the end. So, okay, so for this the, class, right? Um, yeah, for I uh, just want to know the overview. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, let me do that. Uh, I don't know. Yes. So here our agenda was uh, the basic one. What is R? What is S? S is the programming language. What is the philosophy of S? Then we'll see some feature of, uh, saw the feature of R, right? After that, we'll move to the basic feature of R, then free software, then design of R system, then limitation of R, and then question association. So this is basic one. So you will walk through the video and maybe you can, you can visit the video. Uh, I won't think it will be hard for you, right? To understand. What is this language? Sorry? What is S language? So S is a programming language that uh, is the precursor uh, for this R. So using that R, they derive those uh, this pro uh, the, the, the tool, right? So they, uh, the R originated from the S language, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that, they, they created S, then we have S plus, right? So another advanced version of S that is S plus and uh, using S, so they created this uh, R, right? So they further reduces the complexity right, of writing code. And these tools, the S and S plus, as well as R, so all meant for the data analysis or statistical analysis, right? So, and this is a very simple one. So because the purpose of the creator, that those who have created, right? So they keep in mind that all the coding, right? All the coding domain and what we wanted to write those may be user friendly right or interactive because there might be the cases that those who are utilizing those tools they doesn't have the uh, very sophisticated programming knowledge right so that keep in uh, keeping in mind so they created r okay and these are the various timelines um, uh, on the development part so these are the for the s similarly we have uh, the philosophy of s because this is for the command line prompt uh, and interactive data analysis tool so similarly they created r at the same time and this basically for the data analysis aspects right and after that uh, here we have uh, development uh, regarding r right on different years the mailing list the core working group right and all right so finally they released the uh, version 1.0 in 2000 and then we have a, a basic feature of R. So it runs on our operating systems and user friendly and all right. Okay, so maybe you can, you can watch that video and let me know if you have any issues. I'm happy to help. 
ओके ओके एंड प्रोजेक्ट वाइज विल यू गिव फ्रॉम फ्रॉम बेस लेवल टू लाइक फ्रॉम क्रिएटिंग एचडीटीएम्स टू ऐड एम्स ऐड एम्स टू और टीएलएफ्स विल यू गो फाइंडिंग यूजिंग और या 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 सो हैव यू अटेंडेड द यस्टरडे क्लास नो आई थॉट दे शेयर्ड मी टुडे द डेमो okay okay oh i see so let me for i i thought maybe you have attended the study class and then okay no problem maybe i'll explain you a bit the, the demo session uh, yeah so demo right. session we have already completed right so there was two demo session and so these were the contents so we'll cover this course in two part right so in first part mm -hmm. we'll cover the uh, basic one we'll create here the building block we'll train ourselves for the the main main work right so here we'll learn what are the so this is the third uh, this is the third one right so here we'll discuss this part so uh, limitations of our resources and after that uh, we'll start getting started with our so nuts and bolts some basic features right uh, mixing vectors creation missing data data frame right data in and out right and uh, imputing of data right memory calculations deployer package and other aspects right subsetting of data and all so if you see all are the basic ones so here we'll create the building and we'll create uh, we will train ourselves for the final one so here we'll create the simulation part right here we'll have uh, the profiling of our code so profiling means if if you write your code and if some part takes more time so how will resolve that okay so that is called the profiling so we'll see those part will have the debugging so suppose you're writing your code and you have some errors so how will you resolve those errors so that comes under debugging right similarly you have here the expressions suppose you wanted to uh, work with a string right characters or character vector or a string so how will modify suppose uh, in sas we have a scan function compress function so similarly we have here at uh, the various functions so based on that we can do those um, uh, optimization and those uh, modification right so these are the various packages uh, various uh, functionality we'll cover and then after that here we'll do the random number generation then we'll take one studies uh, one data sets and we'll do the all the all the thing what we have learned right so we'll start from the beginning we'll do the subsetting part we'll apply the formats we'll apply the reports we'll create the report listing and figure Uh, in class 23 right and we'll load the data set process the data set modify and we'll see the result as well after that we'll see the parallel computing so parallel computing means so suppose you have a one task of creating 100 tables okay suppose you create all the tables in a series right and if one uh, creating one tables uh, takes 5 seconds right so 100 into 5 so it will take 500 seconds right if you create in the series suppose you what you'll do you'll uh, you'll divide your cpu into 10 parts right and you'll assign your uh, all 100 tables to all the 10 cpus so the one cpu need to uh, complete only 10 table right so your time reduces further right so this is the concept of parallel computing so i'll show you those concepts and i'll uh, present here a real example okay then we'll move to the second part and here we have the listing creation first okay so these are the listing then after that we'll create the table these are the tables here we have demographic table then vital sign table then adverse event table then here shift table here we have efficacy table okay after that we'll create the figure here we'll create kaplan meier figure change from baseline figure box plot uh, and other plots right mm -hmm. line plot and all right after that here we'll create the adam adam all adam will create adsl admh ada cm vs right adtte as well and then we'll create the stm data set using the raw data set so and maybe if time permits maybe we'll we'll do some some uh, we'll do some sort of uh, more topic if if uh, if you all suggest at the end right okay so this is all about the course uh, content do you have a, a existing reference program will you suggest to existing reference programs for us a existing reference program means uh, you already had experience working as uh, working as a clinical r programmer right mm -hmm. 
so do you uh, uh once if you start giving training mm-hmm. in future do you give existing reference programs like whatever we created in class uh, yeah, yeah 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 so i'll i'll share with you the code i'll walk you through i'll write the code in the in the class right and if you mm-hmm. see here in the class 4 i'll write the table table of uh, subject assignment to analysis purpose and how we'll create those tables i'll share the code i'll share the recording with you right you can you can write on your own and we'll provide here the data sets right and we'll create we'll provide you the protocols crf and all the documents sap tfl cells right okay mm-hmm. uh, got it okay okay Mm-hmm. Okay. Any further uh, questions I'm, from anyone? Okay. No problem. Thank you. Do you have any idea how much percentage of uh, submissions are going with R? Uh, so it depends on the uh, industries, right? So if in the pharmaceutical industry, so I saw uh, Roche and I guess Novartis. So they have completed full submission from the beginning to the end using R. So they they trying to utilize those tools but in the cro they they doesn't have a full flesh team but in the pharma they have that team that facilities okay mm-hmm. good okay perfect any further question from anyone else no thanks that's from my end okay thank you Thank you then. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow with some other topic. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome everyone for this session. And today we'll cover some more topic. And uh, so far we cover the history and the R programmer job and responsibility. So any question from the previous classes? If you have any doubt, and uh, maybe you can you can unmute yourself and you can raise your doubt here. Okay, so I'll consider silence as no, you don't have any doubt, perfect. So now I'll move to the agenda first. So today we'll, uh, today I'll, I'll walk you through the installation part. So getting started with R, so I'll first of all install the R, then we'll install the R Studio, and we'll see some more uh, window and the features right so of these two uh, software so r is the base software right and r studio uh, uh, is a graphical user interface so before moving to that so maybe i'll show you here the uh, interface of r so this is r interface so i'll uh, in a minute i'll just download this software and i'll open this and then show you the, the, those windows and those uh, different functionality but this is the r console and uh, this is uh, here we have only one window for the r console and if, if we go into the file section and you can open the another window that is for the editor right so i'll show you in a minute so this is our interface and uh, this is the r studio interface so in r studio we have uh, various windows so the first one is the source right so the arrangement may be different you can arrange accordingly right so this is the source it contains all the uh, code right and where you will write the code right and this is basically also called an editor window so we basically here we write the code and uh, once you execute that code it will send to the console and whatever the data set and file that will create it will send here in the environment or history section right and all the files plot and help uh, this is the help window on the right hand side so here we'll write the code in the editor window the top left hand uh, corner and console will evaluate all the source code okay and if you don't save your source code uh, so in the r studio if you don't save your source code it will automatically uh, saved here under the utils uh, and with some name right and titles with some name and uh, that is a benefit right so we, we can just uh, close the session without saving and it will uh, it will be automatically saved for, uh, for, uh, with a different file name right uh, but this is not uh, in the uh, not the case in case of uh, r right so that's why we'll prefer the r studio because it automatically saved the code it has multiple windows so that we can see all the uh, uh, files all the uh, all the things in one window right 
so we no need to move here and there and in the environment here we'll see all the objects objects mean the data sets variable name right and here we can also uh, visit the history right so which line of the code that we have executed first and after that uh, which line of code uh, we have executed uh, uh, next right so those history we can uh, we can find here so you can you can uh, you can say this history is a log kind of right but console is also some, uh, some sort of log it provides the line by line uh, line by line uh, execution of a particular line of code right and the file it contains all the help window here right so if you notice in the help so we can we can if you have some doubt right how the particular script uh, will be written right so you can you can search here in the search window and we can we can see those uh, script so i'll show you uh, in more detail uh, in a minute right any questions here so far for the r studio or R interface any clarification okay so first of all uh, the process here is first we have to install r and then we have to install r studio right if you try to install r studio first so it will send to the r page and uh, first of all we have to install the r then only uh, we can use the r studio uh, functionality right because r studio works over the r so first of all we need r and then we can we can work r and we can perform our uh, task okay so now i'll move to the uh, web page and i'll show you how to install that so for installing we will just go to the cran page comprehensive r archive network right and if you notice here uh, we have here download and install r okay so on the first part and if you notice based on your operating system uh, you can install so i have already uninstalled my uh, r and r studio so that i can show you how to install and my machine is windows so i'll go for this window so maybe at the same time you can also uh, do first of all i'll download for the window maybe parallel you can also do for your own machine right and maybe if you have some issues so you can, you can tell at the same time and i can help otherwise maybe you can do on your own after the class and let me know if you have any issue okay so i'll download this one this is the latest one and it takes some time and here if you notice if you drag down here we have a whole lot of questions frequently asked questions so you can you can read but this is not required so maybe you can skip those part and so maybe it will take some time the first will install R and then I'll show you the uh, features of R. So this is not a big, big software, right? So it, it will not put heavy weight on your operating system. So this is very light and this is a small one. Yes, so we have to select next so this is a copyright part right general public license and if you notice we have a version uh, 2 and 1991 because 1991 is the year that they originated right and they, they created this uh, software r okay and this is uh, another information other information regarding this copyright and all okay so maybe i'll just this here next so i have already installed so maybe i'll uh would you like to install the, uh, yes so this is the maybe you can select all all, all three no except default so no need to customize just install full part it will take few seconds
perfect so it is done maybe i'll move here okay so this is the r interface here we have one window uh, we have console right we can write our code here suppose i write name and i write ashok suppose i write here neil right and if i run this so if i name so this is a nail right suppose we wanted to write another name And suppose I wanted to write more than one. So how I will do? We'll use here combine operator C, and we'll provide the another name within a quote. Andrew. Okay. If I just wanted to print, so we will write here name. So if you notice, if you write the code in the console, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot save right. And this is not this doesn't look nice, right? Because here we have one script, and after that this is the output. Here we have another script and we have the output, right? So this doesn't look nice, right? And we cannot uh, save all the code that we wanted to write, right? In one, because here if we wanted to copy, so the code as well as the result, both will appear, right? So what is the way? So way here is if you go to the file and you write here new script. So it will open an editor window, right? And here we can write, the code. Uh, suppose I write name uh, the same way. Anil, right? So if I run this, so it will send here. Uh, if I run with Control Enter, or uh, I uh, I have to use some other Control R, I guess, uh, because we hardly use this R. <laughs> I, I prefer using uh, R Studio instead of R. Mm, I don't know. I guess control R we have to press here control and then R oh. yeah control R we have to write to execute a particular line of code right so if you notice so here once I run this line of code in the editor so it sends into the console right and if I write here name and press control and R so it will print here so this look nice because whatever the code that we wanted to execute it uh, all are there in the editor window and the result will appear in the console right so once you run a particular line of code uh, uh, using the here uh, let me write uh, for running a particular line or we have to press control plus r okay so this is the way and these are the uh, command suppose i wanted to uh, write a print statement i'll print name so it will send the same line to the r console and it will print the values okay suppose i'll create two vector uh, in the same way and uh, name and then i'll create here c combine operator a nil Andrew Ashok Akhtar Right, I'll use here. Maybe I'll include Sweta Okay, and if I run this so it will automatically send this line to the console right here it it appears okay and once we have an error so it will just show the error also right so let me write over and then show you how it shows the error part right so if i run this so here we have all the five uh, names okay suppose i specifically write some some sort of uh, different nomenclature so that it shows the error right so suppose i'll write uh, without this hyphen right so that is not assignment operator so it shows error it will show error right so suppose i'll write here a nil and if i run this with control enter control r so if you notice so it it gives some sort of different output right so what it does it basically 
it 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 just compares right so if you notice the so name is a one way vector right here we have one vector and here we have five names okay so what we what it does basically it just compare with the name what we have here in the vector so if you notice at the first first position this is false the second position is true and then third position it is false then true and false i don't know why how it has executed but it compare from the vector because at the first position we have here anil right so it it should give the first position as true right but this is not giving so maybe what i'll do i'll just write this one uh, i'll write uh, i just wanted to show how the error appears in the console right so if i run this Okay, so if you notice, so we have not provided here to the code, right? So that's why it has uh, provided here the plus. That means we have to provide some input here. So if I write here uh, code, right? And if I run the particular line, so it will show here, right? And it now it is, this line has executed. So let me print name and then control R. So if you notice, we have Anil and, and this is new line because this uh, quote is uh, this uh, quote is coming at the next line that's why we have here uh, uh, this slash symbol and uh, and this is the indication that the next part is at the second line okay suppose instead of a small n i write capital name uh prop case name right and if i run this so it will show error because this this name object is not available in the uh, previous r uh, output right in our uh, names or whatever the create whatever the vector or the name vector that we have created right so we don't have the prop case name we have here a small case here also we have a small case right and here we have also a small case so if i run this so it will show error so if you notice so this is the way how it shows the error this object not found right suppose i wanted to create the uh, numeric vector so how will do that so this is the way Suppose I wanted to create uh, age, right? So suppose I'll get 12, 24, 25, 35, uh, 25, right? 29, sorry, 29, 28, 27, right? So this is the way, and if I run this with Control R, so this is the age here. And we can print using print keyword or just write the name okay and control r okay so any questions so far so this is the editor if you write the code in editor we can we can save this file right so i can go there i can save as and i can save on a specific location right and this saves uh, in the file extension dot r because this is a r file okay but if we write the code in console itself so we cannot save right suppose we wanted to see how many variables we have here in in r right so we'll write here ls ls means so it will show all the objects variable whether this is a variable or data sets right so it will show all the objects what we have created so far so if you write this so these are the two objects so if you if you wanted to check something that we don't want to save here so we we'll write in the console and we don't write in the in the uh, in the editor window right but the, if you write the code in editor so here it shows the output as well as the the script right and this looks messy right so better to save this uh, this editor part rather than uh, console okay any questions so far? I hope this is clear to everyone. Can anyone come from our I want it to be more interactive, so please <laughs> support. Uh, no questions, Randeep, it's clear. Okay, okay, perfect. 
and I'll show you some other part here. So if you notice, so he, this is a file, uh, file, uh, uh, file options. So here we have whole lot of. So if you wanted to save this workspace, so workspace means all the objects that we have created and all the uh, console script, right? And editor space. So if you wanted to save, so you can save here. Yeah, and if you wanted to load the previous uh, saved workspace, so you can use these options, right? And new script. So if you wanted to uh, open another editor, so we'll press here, and another editor will appear, right? Now we have here uh, the other option, edit, edit. So you can copy paste, right? Clear console. Suppose you wanted to clear all the part. So what we'll do? We'll press here, con uh, Ctrl and L, or what you can do? You can go there in editor and right here clear console right so here we have the uh, shortcut okay then we have a miscellaneous here we have a lot of other options <coughs> because we hardly use this uh, our interface right because this is very clumsy right and if you notice the other disadvantage of using our uh, interface is so we don't have other windows like we cannot see the real time how many uh, data sets or variable we have created right so for that we have to you run this co code ls keyword right and then we can see how many variables or data set we have created so suppose we have a very large uh, script right so you can you can uh, you can write same name twice or thrice right and the previous things will be replaced so that is not a good way okay give me a second So this is the disadvantage of using R. So we use, we prefer R Studio over R. And if you notice, we don't have also the plot uh, plot here, right? So if you wanted to create the plot, so at the time the plot window appears, and then after that it will disappear. So once you close that, so it will not appear here. But in the R Studio, we can see those plots on the real time, right? And we can move around so previous one so uh, we if we wanted to create uh, multiple plots like if you wanted to create 10 plots so we can hover from 1 to 10 anytime right but here we don't have uh, that options we have to run all the 10 plots at the same time and then it will appear okay suppose i'll create here one weight variable and then i'll uh, plot age and weight uh, maybe i'll uh, a dummy number so this doesn't mean anything so maybe it's 55 56 50 58 60 52 okay so this is this should be five so okay control r let me print Okay, so if you notice here in the age we have five values and in the weight also we have five values so we can use the plot keyword a plot and then we'll write x is equal to age and y is equal to weight. Okay, if I run this. length d first okay so this is five and okay so here we have six so maybe i'll remove one or maybe i'll add okay so i thought maybe five so maybe i'll include here 50 okay control r okay so this is the plot so once i hit this uh once i run this plot line right so plot uh, function so at the time this window appears right and once we close this so this will disappear right so we cannot see how many plots we have created at the same time right so again if you press then, then that will uh, appear so this is the plot window and it appears once you run the uh, any plot or uh, graphics functionality right and after that it will disappear once you close that window so this is the way uh, and this is the uh, disadvantage of using R instead of R Studio. So I'll show you R Studio in a minute and then you'll find those differences.
okay so any questions so far maybe i'll move to the r studio So maybe I'll uh, I'll just close this R part, and now I'll move to the R studio. I'll not save. So for R studio, I have to download R studio. R studio. So this is the web page, and yesterday we saw that. So if I go down, so here we have a download and install R. And this is for desktop uh, for Windows or here also we have a lot of uh, for other operating system so based on that you can download so maybe I'll just download this one for the Windows 10 and 11 so it will take some time maybe uh, so for time being what I'll do I'll just uh, go to the other section here so if I yeah so products so a whole lot of thing so this is uh, our packages are shiny so we have uh, various uh, shows resources right so you can you can go there and then quarto is another uh, type of package that is basically markdown so earlier uh, the markdown was uh, so now they have renamed as quarto right so that is for uh, creating uh, creating a very sophisticated uh, diagram or uh, that is basically for the manuscript and all right publication purposes so they create those part similarly here we have open source and uh, for different operating systems and you can download in the zip uh, uh, tar file as well so and you, after that you have to unzip and then you can install right and here we have a, a desktop pro version right and older version you can you can if you wanted to use older one right so you can use that sometimes if you sometimes we need the older one right why because uh, suppose we have created some sort of r shiny app on a specific uh, r studio version right so we have to replicate that right otherwise there might be some uh, some error you will notice so what we'll do we'll download the older version and accordingly we'll install those uh, or we can run those uh, r studio uh, or r shiny app right but the recent version they just what they do they just create one environment and over there they copy all the uh, dependencies right all the files or packages that the particular arshani app needs right uh, in the uh, latest version right they just copy or they mimic those uh, utility uh, the dependencies and they can uh, and this will run in a very smooth way right so these are the uh, way okay and here we have also the cloud version so cloud earlier the cloud and the, uh, and the, this desktop version are on the same web page but now they have uh, they have created a separate page or a studio so they create posit cloud right so so if you go there okay so i have to uh yeah so i i don't have the access i don't have the account maybe i'll not go there so they have created also uh, some sort of cloud version right and over there you can also download for a couple of days uh, but that is uh, that is uh, pros and cons also so for the cloud version you can use your uh, personal system or you can use if you if you have some academic work right so if you wanted to use the same system in at home as well as the in, in colleges right so you can go there and you can access the same machine so that is the advantage of having cloud uh, our studio but uh, better to prefer at the initial stage better to prefer the uh, local part right so uh, the desktop part so this is the this is the main thing and here also we have a whole lot of trainings and material side right? So you can you can go through the blog and documentation. Right? So this is the blog. You can search based on the topic, right? So different different submission and different packages that they will update here, right? 
so this is our package and our shiny for ft clinical trial submission so, so you can you can read based on your need right based on your interest so this is our consortium this is very uh, active group right so they create a whole lot of thing for the clinical submission and all right they also create okay and other uh, major uh, body is our uh, in pharma right or uh, use R. so use R is an initiative for uh, from our consortium so similarly we have other other bodies like R validation hub right so they have uh, they, 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 that is basically a group of pharmaceutical company right and they collaborate together for uh, utilizing the R tool as a validation right or in the process enhancement so they utilize R in operations they utilize R in uh, table creation listing creation right and they also use R in uh, other application right? uh, like like SOPs uh, in SOPs derivation right or maybe database designing and another application as well so they basically create some sort of tools for the clinical trial operations right they create tools for the randomization part so maybe if, if you have some time maybe we'll walk you through this this uh, initiatives that will be really helpful okay so these are the various uh, initiatives and if you go here so we have your cheat sheet so it will show various uh, cheat sheets so you can download and you can read right so so dev tools and this is uh, basically for installing our packages right and then we have sparkly so this is i guess for um, big data science uh, big data and machine learning part then Python with R uh, and then deep learning cheat sheets. So other R studio cheat sheets. So if you if I download this, so it will provide a PDF document, right? And over there you have a whole lot of options and shortcuts, right? So that will be handy. You can download and you can keep because you cannot remember all the part, uh, right? So this is very useful. So maybe you can print this PDF and you can keep with you. That will be really helpful right so it tells about the r markdown so r markdown is renamed as in right and uh, the, this is the previous name uh, and here we have a lot of how to share the project so the r studio workbench and then other keyword right so, uh, control l is for the clear clear console right escape is for interrupting a current command right then control arrow for search command history okay and then other options here and then we have here a whole lot of uh, functions and a whole lot of command okay so maybe you can walk through i'll show you a few of them uh, let me install first so my r story is downloaded and maybe i'll install So it will take some time because this is a bit heavy software as compared to the R, but it also not take too much of time. So maybe I'll, I'll walk you through here. So this is these are the version, right? So you can you can see and the version control. So here we have version control. Suppose you write some code, right? And after that you sub modify there. So you can see what are the changes from the previous version. So that will be very handy. And if we, if multiple people are working on a particular file, so that is very useful to see what are the changes and who made the particular changes and why those changes were made, right? So you can trace back and you can you can see those lines where the where the other person has modified, right? And there are also debugging tools here, right? So I'll show you uh, maybe uh, in the uh, in subsequent classes how to debug the code. Suppose you encounter a particular error. So if, if if you notice this, these are the keyword, right? So these are the symbol that it appears in the R console, right? So to so trace ball. So if you place there, so you, it will 
it will go to the uh, code once again write the script and it will show where is the bug right so this is the uh, mechanism of, of finding the bug okay so this is fine so now okay, i can ins uh, open the r studio So I recommend to download this cheat sheet and keep with you so that it will be easier for you to remember all the lines, right? All the all the command, right? Because it is a bit, bit hard to <laughs> remember all. But if you have if you have the print of or maybe hard copy with you, so you can you can recall and you can uh, look the uh, page and then you can refer those uh, keyword, right? So so this is my R Studio. So I have written previously some code, so it is appearing, and we can we can write some line here. So I will not. Okay, so maybe I'll start some something, and maybe so first of all I'll show you the different windows. So I have rearranged in a different way, and I'll open one by one. So if you see top left part, so this part is the cons uh, the source, or you can say editor, right? And here we write the code, right? And if you execute a particular line of code, it will send here in the console. So this is console, the top right, uh, top right hand side, right? And if you see that uh, this left hand, uh, left hand part. So here we have files, plot, packages. So here we have a lot of packages. We can update. We can uh, we can uh, download, right? So these are the packages list of packages then we have help so here we'll write something suppose i write here uh, names uh, or maybe ls if i write ls and then if i press enter so it will oh. so it will search here and it will provide the uh, keyword right so we can read and these are the various lines okay give me a second so this is the way how we can search if we don't have the information about the full script right so or if you, if you forget about some line right or some keyword so you can type here in the help or what you can do you can write here in the editor uh, uh, with with a question mark right so it will open this help window at the same time suppose i write mean right and i'll press here the question mark so and press enter so this is the help window for the mean right suppose i wanted to write uh, you, you can you can also open this help window using this keyword help h e l p and then we have to write the keyword suppose i run this with control enter so it will open so these are the different ways of uh, looking for the help right uh, okay so and if you notice if i if i run a particular line of code whether it is a help or or anything so it will send here in the console window and it does and if if you, suppose i write here name and i have not created name uh, in the previous uh, line of code so it will show error so if i run this with control enter so it will show error in red right and this object is not available right so this is the way how it shows the error okay and if we if i create the name here again if i create name and i'll write here a nil and if i press enter control enter so this will appear in the environment window right and here it creates values and the specific values is name anil and this is the name right or object so 
name is object and it contains the value anil okay so this is the way how it execute okay and then we have here uh, let me show another part okay so for running a particular script in our studio we have to press uh, to run any script we have to press here control plus enter okay but in r we have to press press control plus r right so this is the difference okay and we can see all four windows at the same time right basically it has more than four windows right because he can, here we can see plot packages help and we were right here also we can see the history right so these are the history we can see the connections connection if you wanted to establish a connection from the outside or some url so we'll see here the connections okay and then environment similarly we have your terminal so this is a way how we'll uh, interact with the uh, the uh, r right without having editor uh, keyword right without using editor so i'll show you some some uh, later of the course so how to use this uh, terminal we hardly use this terminal because this is a hardcore programming right so we'll avoid those part and suppose i wanted to see the working location working directory so i told earlier so we have the keyword get wd and if i run this so it will show the uh, this is the working directory location so by default it saves on the c drive right so if you wanted to change so you can change so basically uh, so we should not prefer creating any files to c drive right so because that have some uh, size limitations and all right so suppose you wanted to format your c drive so all the code and everything will disappear right so better to store your uh, or better to point your working directory on a different drive right than the c okay so that is the advice i'll suggest here so maybe uh, i'll point to another drive right so for that we can set the working directory using the keyword set wt and here we have to place the location so suppose I wanted to uh, sit on a particular D drive. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll training classes, I'll, I'll point here. So how we'll do, we'll write the set WD and then here we have to place the uh, location in a double quote within the parentheses, right? and we have to change this one slash to two slash or maybe we have to change the direction so i'll show you what it means so this is the way uh, if you press control enter then our working directory is set to a particular location so if i wanted to check one second so get wt and then you have to run with control enter so if you notice this is the working directory okay suppose i wanted to set the working directory on the same location but if I wanted to use another uh, slash, right? Another way. So how we'll do? We'll just write. Uh, we'll write here the set wd, and then we have to place the location, and we can change this slash to another one, right? So this is uh, backward slash. This is forward slash, right? And using this also, we can change the working directory location, right? So if I run with Control Enter, so it will store here. Uh, our working directory or it points the working directory here and the R training in D drive okay so suppose I wanted to see so we can use this get WD command and we can see those uh, uh, the working directory location okay so let me comment here so this is the setting working directory okay um, this is method one Okay. So this is the way how we'll set the working directory. Now I'll create the variable at the same time. Name, I'll suppose I wanted to create name, so I'll write here and nil. Ashok. Just 
Twitter, Twitter, and I'll place here combine operator because we have here more than one name, right? And if I press enter, so it will be available in the value section, right? And these are the different values. Suppose I wanted to print, so what we'll do, we'll write here name, so we can pass the variable name and pr press control enter, so it will print here, right? Or what you can do, uh, we can write explicit print option or print function and pass the variable name. So this is the way uh, of printing the particular vector. Okay. And if you notice, so once I run this name, so it appears here one. And this is the first object. So that's why we have one. And this is the second object. This is the third object. This is the fourth object, right? Suppose I wanted to create some more. So what I'll do, I'll add here. I do and Emma right so if I run this and if I run name so if you notice so here we have one right at the first position and this Emma is at eight position right so then Gia is at seven position Anil is at six the knight two is at fifth position, Sweta is at fourth, Akhtar is at third position, right? Suppose you wanted to, <coughs> suppose we wanted to uh, extract a particular name, right? Suppose we wanted to extract the knight two, so knight two is at fifth position, right? So we wanted to write here uh, the first the variable name, so variable name is here name, right? And if we wanted to use five, if we wanted to extract the knight two, so the position of the or index of the knight two is fifth. So we'll write here fifth and then it shows the result night, right? Suppose you wanted to uh, extract here name is equal to uh, this Ashok. So Ashok is a second position. So we'll write here two and then it will appear. Okay. Suppose you wanted to extract this uh, the name Sweta. So Sweta is at fourth position. We'll write here four and it will execute, right? Suppose you wanted to uh, extract from second position to uh, to position fifth, right? So how we'll write? We'll write here name. We'll write the big bracket and then write two, two, five, right? So it will extract all the name from the second position to the fifth position, right? So if I run this, so if you notice, so this is the second position, then Akhtar is third position, and Soita is at fourth position, and then Naidu is at fifth position, right? And we can suppose we wanted to assign another object. So what we'll do? We'll write here name underscore updated, right? And we'll write here assignment operator. So once I run this, so if you notice, it will create another variable here, and it will store these four objects, right? It will store here the, these four names. Okay. So this is the way how we'll uh, create the subset. Similarly, we can do the same thing for the numeric objects. So let me create here age. So I'll create here age as uh, maybe I'll uh, create the numeric. So I will not use the quote. So double quote or single quote uh, is used for character uh, character data type and without quote, we can use for the numeric one, right? So 23, I'll just write any number. So don't <coughs> don't point <laughs> don't see the number and maybe i'll write 27 uh, I, how many numbers so we have six and then here three and three six to eight so three three six and we have to pass two number 32 then 23 Uh, do I miss anything? Yeah, so I have missed one comma here Okay, now we can use this age Okay, so here also we have eight uh, Element and in case of name also we have eight element so we can uh, Do the subsetting for uh, the age, right? So we'll write age we'll write year two so it will extract the second element. The second element here is 35. Okay. Similarly, we can extract the other element so like four. So fourth element is here 
28 right so r is very user friendly right so suppose i miss here i provided additional space so still also it will work right and here also i have intentionally provided a space right so this is very handy so if you provide some sort of extra spaces in other uh, software like sas <laughs> so it will give error but this is quite handy but some other times because this is uh, this is case sensitive so in that case if if you have uh, if you are if you are a sas user earlier and you are switching to r so you'll find those uh, case sensitive issues very frequently right so over there we have a tendency to keep the variable copy the variable and paste as it is but here it will not work unless it has the same case right so that we have to keep in mind but after some time you will find yourself uh, very handy here suppose you wanted to extract second element to fifth so what i'll write i'll write here so it will ex uh, extracts at the same time okay now i'll create a data frame i'll use this name and age and i'll create the data frame df right so i'll write here df as a data frame name and i'll write the keyword data dot frame okay so if you notice once i uh yeah, just a second data dot frame i don't know why this is not okay okay let me write once again data dot frame so if you notice here so this is coming under base so this is the base functionality of uh, R right because we have not installed anything any uh, uh, package yet right because I have only uninstalled this R Studio and R and I am uh, using the fresh one so these are the base functionality so we have data dot class data dot uh, frame and this is the base func uh, functionality of R similarly we have here utils so it is another uh, uh, base functionality we have here okay here also we have data sets so it contains whole lot of data set i'll show you in some time so first i'll create data dot frame and i'll pass here the name first and then age if i run this so here it will create one data df and if you notice here we have eight observations and two variables right so if i open this df uh, for opening maybe you can press here this is one way okay so another way is you'll just write here df and it will open in the console right or what you can do you can use the keyword here view and df so it will open in the editor okay suppose you wanted to compare so one you can open in the console and another you can open in the editor and you can compare one by one right so this is the way and here we have variable name so these are the variable name and these are the individual uh, records and here if you notice one two three up to eight so these are the uh, observations okay and one thing if you notice so name is left aligned so all the character what we store are uh, left aligned and all the numerics will be on the right aligned right so this is on the right hand side of the uh, column right so this is the way how we can distinguish so suppose I wanted to create another variable and I store this age as a character. So how we'll do? We'll write here. What will we can do? We can uh, just write. Uh, sorry. We can write here df, and I'll create dollar symbol, right? And here I'll uh, write age. Okay. And what I'll do? Uh, I'll write age one. Okay, and then I'll assign this df, uh, sorry, df uh, dollar age. Okay, and I'll convert this as dot character. If I run this, so if you notice, so earlier we have a two variables here in the df. Now we have three variables. Why? Because we have just created an additional variable age one. Okay so if i just open this df so if you notice this is the third variable that we just created and if i open here if you notice the age one is the left align because we have just converted here as dot character is the way to convert any numeric objects or numeric data type to a character data type right 
let me write here comment as dot character right so this is the way similarly if you wanted to convert uh, a character data type right so numeric that is stored in a character uh, to a numeric data type so what we'll do we'll write as dot numeric right so we can convert this character To numeric okay so if you notice so uh, in our data set uh, this age one I have uh, earlier this was in numeric data type right this age variable uh, and then we have converted to character suppose I again wanted to convert this age one to a numeric one so how we'll do we'll write here same thing we can create additional variables right suppose I'll create here uh, let me write uh, age underscore num okay and I'll assign uh, because I am assigning so that's why it will create an additional variable right additional uh, column and we'll write as dot numeric and I'll pass here df so df and then dollar symbol age one right so df dollar symbol h1 so this is the way how we'll call a particular variable so suppose i write this line of code suppose i have highlighted df dollar symbol h1 so what it does it basically go to this df data sets and it pulls all the records what are available in the variable age right so if i run this so if you notice so it has pulled all the records what are available under this data frame df and the variable h1 right so this is the way how we'll and what we are doing here i am just passing that variable that are available in df right and i am just using this function as dot numeric so it just convert all the uh, values that are stored under this df and h1 variable and it will convert into a numeric one right so if we, if i uh, run this line of code oh sorry yeah so it is uh, fine now so i'll just if i print this so if you notice so is num is again converted into a numeric one okay so hope you understand this point so there are two things so i uh, here i'll just write let me write here comment df uh, data frame data frame dollar symbol variable name the name is used to call a particular variable right so this is the way this is the way of referencing i'll show you in subsequent classes in more detail right so uh, we can uh, we can just use here some some part so suppose i wanted to call the name so if I write here name, so it will not appear. If I write just name, so it will appear this one, right? So suppose what I'll do, I'll just uh, use another function. LS is the function to call, uh, to see how many objects what we have created, right? So if I run this LS, I'll show you one by one. So it will show that A is the first object. So if you notice A is here, then DF is a data frame. So DF is here, uh, and then we have name, and then name updated so it pulls all the objects what are available in our r environment right so this is the global environment because we have created uh, so far the global environment itself right we have not created the local one maybe in in the classes in the subsequent classes i'll show you what that local and global environment is right and so this will let me comment here this will fetch all the objects that are stored in our environment right okay suppose I wanted to clear some or remove some particular uh, R object so what we'll do we'll use RM function RM means 
it will remove a particular objects right suppose i wanted to remove from uh, from uh, i wanted to remove name from this environment right so if you notice so here we have name right so once i run this so if you notice name will will no more there in the r environment right so this is the way of removing so rm moves our objects from our environment okay suppose i wanted to remove more than one so how will you we'll write rm and we'll write here combine operator and we'll pass name then we'll have here sorry name is not available now we have age and name updated name underscore updated so if i run this so it will remove these two oh uh it must correct okay so must character i don't know why this is not working so there are other another way so i'll write here list uh maybe i don't know why this is not working so ls and then we'll remove those part so what it does basically this is the two way right so first it runs this one so it stores all the objects what are available right these three are the objects and then it stores within a list right so list is another type of r object so i'll show you in uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow class so different atomic objects there are five type of atomic objects right and one of them is list right so uh, i'll just store all the objects that are available in our environment within a list and then i use the rm function to remove all the objects so if i run this so it will remove all the objects that are available here in the r environment so let me show you if you notice everything is clean so we don't have anything so if i use here ls so it won't give anything right character zero okay so this is the way so this is the way to remove this will remove all the objects that are available Our environment right so this is the way how we'll uh, this is some sort of preliminary i just wanted to show so from tomorrow onwards we'll see the name and naming convention and other part right so any questions so far hope this is clear to everyone okay. yeah please oh this is Ashraf. yeah a couple of things I just wanted to discuss. Mm -hmm, please. Uh, yeah, can I? Can we have a brief discussion after the class? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, hi Ranjit. Yeah, uh, we need to install uh, all the packages like uh, our shiny like we need uh, to install. Uh, no, no, As no. So gradually, I will show you which package is required, right? So no need to worry. So first, you, what you'll do, I'll, uh, you just install the R first, and then after that, okay. R Studio, right? And gradually, I'll show you which package is required, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Thank okay. You. So maybe uh, let me know if you have any doubt in installing. I will happy to help. But don't don't go fast. So first install R and then R Studio and then gradually we'll uh, install one by one. Okay. Uh, okay, Perfect. okay. Thank you, Shri. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, this is very short class. <laughs> so... Okay, if you don't have, so maybe I'll give some time to you. Maybe I'll just stop for the day and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay.
so uh, this is the fifth class and here we'll cover some more topic some basic are nuts and bolts and entering input we'll cover then after that we'll see the evaluation part then we'll see different r objects after that we'll see the numbers and different type of number what we have in r okay so here we have minus infinity plus infinity na and other of, uh, different type of numbers then we'll see the attributes so attributes are basically metadata uh, data about data uh, here we'll have the uh, labels here we have the uh, uh, the type of variables right and all then we'll see how to create the vectors so in r we have uh, five types of vector right so numeric vector real vector then we have character vector logical vector and then we have a complex vector so we'll see all those five types of vector and we'll see how to create that and how to use, utilize that into our programming uh, domain right then at the end we'll have some questions a session so if you have questions so maybe you can stop me anywhere and you can pose your questions Let me close this part uh, okay let me write here rm list is equal to ls so this is the uh, keyword uh, we have here to clean the R environment, right? So I have explained this part earlier. So this is the LS keyword. So LS means it will just provide all the uh, objects what we have in the R environment, right? And after that, we are assigning that object to the list. So list is a different type of R objects, and we'll cover maybe to, uh, uh, in in one or two classes after this class and uh, we are just using this rm function to remove all the r objects what we have here right so this is maybe you can if you have some uh, sas knowledge so you can uh, you can correlate this keyword uh, this command to this uh, kill option what we have in the sas right so we can clean also the console uh, we don't have here any options as such okay so first of all we have to just look the working directory so let me check which uh, what is the working directory for this r session so uh, this is the working directory and here i have created some code so that's why it is uh, pointing on a particular locations okay so maybe because uh, i just wanted to set our working directory here so maybe we'll do that so for setting a working directory on a particular location we have to write the set wd command and within the uh, within the parentheses we have to write the uh, location right uh, within the double quote or you can use your single quote as well so this is the first way right if you wanted to see whether it is set on a specific location or not so you have to write here get wt and once you run it will provide the location so if you notice the earlier working directory is in drive our training and learning material right here but if we if i use this one set wd and provided this path so now the working directory is pointing on a particular location right we can have a different way also to set the working directory and here instead of double slash we'll use here single uh, for, for backward slash right okay so this is the another way and if i see so this is the same thing so these are the two way how we can set the working directory okay so once that is uh, fine so uh, if, if you use this type of slash right so this is a forward slash so if you use this type of slash so it will not work right because r doesn't recognize this uh, slash right so either you have to use two uh, slash or we have to you use one uh, forward slash okay so this is the way so we, we we have to keep in mind that this type of uh, work setting working directory will not work either we have to use two slash or we have to use another way right the second way hope this is clear uh, up to this line so when we start the session so first of all we'll have to see the working directory and here we have two keywords get wd and set wd so get wd is for 
uh, looking the location where our working directory is pointing out right so initially if we have uh, if you close the r session and if you open once again so it will point in the c drive right so let me do that uh, because by default the location will be in the c drive uh, so let me close this r session and if i open once again So if I show you, so if you notice, it is in C drive. So for every system, so because basically all the software and all the software will generally store in C drive. That's why it points in the C drive, right? Uh, but if you specifically install your R Studio or, or R in D drive, so by default it uh, it uh, points to a particular drive, D drive or E drive, right? But generally we will store all the software in C drive. That's why generally we have at the c drive as a default uh, working directory location right but we can set into another one because we hardly avoid uh, storing anything in the c drive right so that is the one thing hope you hope everyone has installed the r and r studio uh, while watching study videos right and i, I don't think hey, do you have any issues or uh, in installing or not so do you have anything in installing? Maybe you have any questions and you find some difficulties, maybe you can pose uh, your concern here. Okay, so I'll pause for a couple of seconds and then I'll move to the uh, R nuts and pose. So the nomenclature of R variables and all. Okay, so uh, now we'll see the nomenclature and naming convention what we have in R. Okay, so we have a general naming convention. So uh, we can uh, the first rule here is uh, the valid variable names consist of combination of alphabets, numbers, and dots, and underscore as a character. Right. So here, uh, if we compare this naming convention with SAS so in sas we don't have the option of using dot as an uh, in the name right but here we can use dot in the name right so where underscore one is a valid name similarly where dot one is also a valid name uh, similarly we can write here where dot another uh, where dot uh, test right so we can write this is also a valid name uh, control C so control C control shift and C is the keyword that makes a particular line a comment right so if you press control shift and C so it will do the comment okay and if you again press this control shift and C so it will remove that comment part right so it will basically add hash before a particular line right okay so this these two are a valid name okay similarly apart from this dot underscore operator uh, so if we if we write here where dollar symbol one right so and where uh, hash one these both are invalid because we cannot write a special character in, in name right so here we apart from this dot and underscore we cannot use other special character in the name right so this is the way uh, this is the second rule okay so where underscore one or where uh, dollar symbol one is not a valid name right or where tilde is also not a valid name so we cannot use the other special character other than dot and underscore in the naming convention okay so this is the other rule now we, now the, the, the next is variable can start with alphabets or dot character right so dot uh, where we this is a valid name or where is a valid name but uh, we cannot have uh, three uh, where right so we cannot have two where right so these are not a valid uh, variable name right because this starts with a digit we can only start with the alphabets or dot okay similarly underscore where is not a valid name but this is a valid name as per the sas so if you have SAS knowledge, you can compare here. So here we have some sort of flexibility. 
uh, with respect to dot but here we don't have the flexibility with respect to underscore while using underscore at the initial stage right okay similarly dot three where is not a valid name uh, right because if a variable starts with a dot the next thing after the dot cannot be a number right so dot where is a valid name but dot three where is not a valid name right so this is a this is the differences so here if you notice dot four c h a r is not a valid name because after that we are having a digit right but dot c h a r is a valid name why because after the dot we have here character or alphabets so this is the valid name okay so here we have this type of basic rules and uh, this is the variable nomenclature what we have in the r this is uh, this also follows uh, for the data sets the same rule applies for the data sets as well and uh, and the variable so for the variable as well as the data sets the same naming convention applies okay any questions on this Okay, so I consider silence as no. So next thing is assignment operator, right? So if you are creating any variable or data sets, you have to use this assignment operator because anyhow, whatever the values or whatever the data set are you are creating, you have to name something. Uh, for a particular data set or variable right so the assignment operators helps in naming a particular r objects okay so here we have basically two type of assignment operator left assignment operator and right assignment operator right so if we talk here so there are and if we dig down so basically under left assignment we have here uh, less than and then hyphen symbol so this is one then we have two less than and hyphen symbol then we have another one is equal of assignment operator so this all comes under left assignment operator okay why we have left because if you notice these three so here the less than equal symbol points on the left direction so you can remember on, on this line right similarly for the right assignment operator so the arrow points on the right hand side okay and this is the exception so equal is also a left assignment why we have the uh, why we call equal as a left assignment because uh, it assigns a value whatever the variable that it is uh, on the left hand side right so i'll show you how it works okay and then you will appreciate that uh, okay so maybe i'll first go to the local or global assignment operator so this single arrow single arrow that is pointing on the left hand side is called a local or global assignment operator right so it depends whether it is uh, defined in a global uh, or whether it is defined in a local right local uh, environment or in a global environment right so if we define our uh, this assignment operator within a function right as a single assignment operator right so this is single assignment operator and this is a double assignment operator because here we have a two arrows right so this calls uh, calls as a double assignment operator right so if we assign this uh, local assignment operator in a variable right so in a global environment so this is all a global environment right so if we assign this uh, local assignment operator here so it will work as a global why because here we are assigning in a global environment right so if you notice here under the environment section under the global environment we have here one vari uh, variable x and it contains the value 4 why because we have defined this uh, assignment operator in a global environment that's why it is appearing here right i'll show you in a minute what is the uh, local environment and in that case we cannot call that uh, so if we define any variable in a global environment we can call anywhere okay but if we define any uh, variable in a global environment uh, in a local environment we can call that variable within that environment only right so we cannot we cannot call that variable that is defined in a local environment 
into a global one right because that we don't that we don't have the freedom okay so this is the differences of local and global so every uh, so within a function whatever assignment we do this generally works as a, a local assignment operator but here also we have one catch right so if we use this double arrow whether it is pointing left hand side or right hand side so this work as a global environment whether you define within a function or outside the function right but generally if we use this single arrows assignment operator and if we define this single arrow assignment operator within a function so it will work as a local variable right but if we simply assign this single assignment operator outside the function like this so this work as a global uh, variable right so this is the differences okay so this is the differences of local versus global okay now the second here is how this uh, assignment works so first of all so this is the local one and how this works right so if you notice so this uh, i'm assigning here x and then i'm using here left assignment operator okay and then providing four so what it does basically this four is assigned to x right so whatever the variable that is left uh, that is available here in the left hand side the values uh, these four values will be assigned to that uh, objects right so if you notice here the text the value from the right hand side value from the right hand side is four right is inserted into the object on the left hand side so this is the uh, this is the way because whatever the value that are available on the right hand side it is getting assigned to a, a object that are available on the x hand side right on the left hand side right so this is the way because it assigned from uh, uh, from right to left so that's why it is called as left assignment operator okay similarly this is the uh, right assignment operator so how it works so whatever the value that are available on the left hand side is getting assigned to the objects that are available on the right hand side so because the value uh, so it is working in a other way right so it is working in a uh, uh, opposite way right so whatever the value that are available on the left hand side is getting assigned to the object available on the right hand side that's why it is called as right assignment operator right so i write here right right assignment right similarly this is uh, this is an example of left assignment okay now we have a global uh, global left uh, assignment operator right so this also works whatever the object that are available on the right hand side is getting assigned to the left okay is inserted or uh, to a left uh, hand side right so this is also called uh, this is also a left assignment okay but the uh, this is a global one right this is the global one uh, but uh, this because we are defining this outside the function right so anyhow whether it is a local or global this works as a global uh, variable right so this doesn't make sense here but if we assign this uh, global assignment operator within a function so in that case it works as a global assignment right and we can see those value here right in the global environment but if we use this local assignment operator here within a function so in that case we cannot observe that uh, this y1 in here in the global environment right so i'll show you in a minute so this is the left assignment left global assignment operator and this is right global assignment okay so whatever the value that are available on the uh, right hand on the left hand side is getting assigned to the object that are available on the right hand side right that is b so because assignment is occurring from left to right so that's why it is called a uh, right assignment operator and here we have a two arrows so that's why it is called global assignment here also we have two arrows so we'll call this as a global one global assignment right and but these are the local one but we are assigning these two also in the global environment so that's why this works as a global right but if we observe here so uh, what i 
uh, what I'm doing here I'm assigning this y1 as 4 right so if you notice once I run this line 68 so here we have y1 and then value is 4 right so this work as a global a variable why because we are uh, we have defined this variable y1 into a global environment so that's why it is appearing here right but if I write one function my fun and here what I'm doing I'm just providing two values x1 and y1 right and I'm using x1 as a global assignment and y1 as a local assignment right this is a local assignment and if I run this so if you once once I run this so if you notice this is the function that I'm, I have created here right under the function my underscore fun and if I call that particular function so once I call this function so if you notice here the value of x is created with 2 okay the uh, variable is x1 and the value is 2 and then if you notice y1 so y1 is 4 right because it is still calling this one it is still uh, providing this information right it has not stored this one this y1 is equal to 3 because this is a local this is a local uh, variable local assignment and this work as locally right so uh, if i if i just call x1 right so if i call this my fun right so if i run this my fun see if you notice we are getting here 5 so how we are getting 5 because here we have 3 and here we have 2 right and it is just adding these two number and it is providing here the result as 5 but if i call x1 if you notice x1 is 2 that is perfectly fine but if i call y1 so we'll not get this y1 is equal to 3 right because here we are getting y1 is equal to 4 why because it is available in the global environment that's why we are able to uh, fetch those but this y1 is equal to 3 is defined within that environment right that's why we are not able to call that fun uh, that variable okay so this variable is called within that function but outside that function we cannot call that variable okay so this is the difference of global and local assignment operator okay so if i do uh, global here uh, let me do here okay so i have did here i what i did i just made this local to a global one right so if i run my fun one and if i run this uh, function so here if you notice still we are getting five that is perfectly fine earlier also we are getting five here right so this is fine but if you notice uh, once i run this so here we have two variable that is created x underscore val that is three and y underscore val that is two so earlier this y1 was not created right but now we have a uh, this variable also in the global environment why because here we have used the global assignment operator okay and here we have used left global assignment operator that's why it is appearing here if we use right global assignment operator also so it will appear in the same in the same way okay hope this is clear any questions so far Okay, so no question. Maybe I'll pause for a couple of seconds. Uh, yeah, please. Ranjit, it is, it is like uh, mm -hmm. macro variables, like local and global. Yeah, it's working country. the same way. Yeah, yeah. So you can correlate okay. those. Yeah, because uh, we don't have here macros in in R. We have functions. Uh, we 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 generally write functions, and based on that we can. Uh, we can utilize our work what we wanted to do right okay okay yeah. okay uh, outside of the function only the global ma uh, sorry variable. global variable will work and the local variable will not work exactly exactly okay. yeah okay thank you okay perfect so now i'll move to the next one 
so here also i have defined these two as a local variable right and if i run this so you will not find this uh, here so let me kill uh, because uh, here we have a whole lot of objects right so if i run my func2 so if you notice this function is created but we don't have any variable right x underscore val2 and y underscore val2 are not appearing right because if you notice these are locally defined right these are defined locally that's why we are not available as uh, we are not able to see under the global environment right but in the local environment these two variables were created and we can we can utilize these here because if you if you if you run if you call this particular function so it is working fine right so three two plus one is equal to three so this is working fine but if i call individually so these two objects we cannot access right so these are the differences of defining variable locally as well as the globally okay similarly we can define this as a global one right so if you define outside the function so whether you will use local assignment operator or global assignment operator so it defined globally right outside the function means we are defining that variable as a global uh, variable right and within that we are uh, defining local within a particular function right so here also this x2 uh, where underscore uh, x underscore where to we are defining locally so so that's why we cannot call that but if you define y underscore so this is a global variable and we can call that okay now here i have used the right assignment operator so here also i have used the uh, local right assignment operator but i define in a global environment that's why if i run this so it will appear here three okay and if i use my fun so it will work accordingly okay we can call x y underscore uh, where to because we have defined this here as a global environment but we cannot call this one because this is defined locally okay so this is all about the assignment one and uh, these are the differences uh, here what we have okay now we have here uh, the, the operators this is uh, this is left assignment and this is equal and uh, this assign the uh, assign into the environment in which they are evaluated right so suppose we are assigning uh, this assignment operator locally so it will work in a local environment if we use this assignment operator in a global environment though in that case it will work as a global variable right and these can be this uh, this uh, left uh, less than an arrow symbol this then uh, less than a hyphen symbol can be used anywhere uh, and it is only allowed at a top level uh, programming so this equal symbol so so in r so we'll prefer this uh, less than and hyphen symbol rather than this equal one right because if you proceed in the class right so if we use this assignment one within a function so in that case it will not work so i have example here i'll show you in a minute so we'll prefer this one as assignment operator and this is for the evaluation okay so let me create one sequence here one to eight so for creating sequence we'll have operator colon right we'll write one colon eight so what it does it creates a sequence of uh, it creates a sequence while increment of one right so if you notice for the first is value is one then second value is two then we have three over five up to eight similarly if we wanted to create a sequence from five to ten sorry five to ten so we'll let five and then ten so it starts from five and after increment one increment of one it will uh, create a sequence and it will end at ten so if you notice we have other function as well for creating sequence we have the function let me write here Oh, sorry. So we'll write here the sequence function is eq, and within that we can provide the uh, element one to eight, and we can use pi is equal to two. If I run this, okay, so. Uh, why this is not working? This EQ. Uh, 
okay so we have to just provide here the number one suppose i wanted to create one to uh, 50. so we'll create that one but uh, once we we'll proceed we'll use some other package and we'll create the sequence by a some increment right by 0.5 by 0.8 right so we can create that so for now maybe we'll uh, move to the next part so suppose that create c is equal to 8. so this is the assignment and we are assigning in a global environment that's why it is appearing here okay suppose i'll write here mean function so it will provide the uh, it will it will because here we are not passing any values right so it will not evaluate and this is this is the function to calculating for the calculation of <coughs> mean or average uh, for mean function mean function this is okay this will provide mean or average okay suppose i wanted to do the average calculation for one to five so how what i'll do i have to use this mean function then within the parentheses i have to x is equal to one to five right so it will evaluate the mean of number from one to five and it gives the result here okay suppose if you notice here i have used the equal assignment operator right so instead of that if i use this less than or hyphen symbol so what it does so if you notice it also provides the mean but if you notice here it also assign one object it created one object x right and here it stores the values so this is the differences right this is the differences between this uh, equal symbol and less than hyphen symbol right uh, these two assignment operator so this this basically equal symbol is only used at the top level uh, programming uh, right and this can be used this assignment can be used at anywhere right what it tops label means top label uh, because if you notice so mean is a function so if i write here mean and if if i just pass question mark so if you notice so it will provide some sort of information here right so this is the mean function and within that we have uh, different keywords right so uh, mean is itself a higher function right so you can use equal symbol here and uh, because uh, if if i go to the individual code of mean so source code so over there we have a whole lot of keywords right and using that uh, they have created some sort of for mean creation we have to just sum the number right and we have to divide the number by the number of numbers right so that is the crude or source functions right but here at the top level if we are using mean we can use this equal symbol right uh, because this equal operator is only allowed at the top level so this means the top level right because we need that we have a whole lot of source code and we are just using that source code to define a mean and over there we can use equal symbol right but if we use assignment operator this uh, less than a hyphen symbol so we can use this assignment operator anywhere and if we use this assignment operator so it will parallelly create the object these objects and at the same time this calls a particular objects and it will create the it will evaluate the mean for a particular object x right so this does the two thing first it creates the vector x and after that it creates the if uh, it evaluates the mean of the variable uh, vector x okay so this is the two thing that it does parallelly okay similarly we have another way to assign so we have the keyword assign right we hardly use this assign keyword but we have the option that's why i just wanted to show you right so we can use here assign keyword and within the uh, parentheses within the double quote we can provide the objects that we wanted to name so this is basically variable name and this is the values right so this is a generic function what we have so you can, you can find here this is the keyword first we have to pass the variable name and then we have to use the values what we wanted to store okay so if i run so this is the way so this is a numeric vector okay suppose i wanted to write here name so suppose i assign name uh, uh, and name as sashang right uh, so so this name is a variable and this name is the value right the second part is the value so if i just call name so if you notice here we have sashank okay 
suppose you wanted to assign more than one object so how we'll do we'll write here c let's see if this works or not okay so if i call so we can assign two or more than two objects right <coughs> suppose i wanted to assign here the same thing we can use combine operator we can write here ashok we can write here akhtar we can write here we can write here swetha we can write here naitu andrew we can write here zia okay if i run this so it will assign okay so here we have to keep the parentheses right so we have to use one parentheses more right for this assignment for this assign of uh, function right so if you run this so here we have all that name right so for all the students all the participants okay so this is the way how we can do the assign using the uh, assign function okay how do the assignment okay so any questions so far now we'll move to the evaluation part No, I need no questions. Okay, perfect. So now we'll move to the evaluation. So evaluation means we'll do some sort of mathematical evaluation or some sort of uh, other evaluation. We'll use other functions, uh, for example, printing or default printing or auto printing, right? Okay. So suppose I create one object x is equal to four, right? And if I call this x, so this is called auto printing. Because if you call a particular object, so it will print the uh, the respective values what we have in that object. Okay. If you use print function, so print is a function that prints a particular objects, right? So how we have to use? So we have to first write the print, and within the parentheses we have to use the variable name. Right? So this is called explicit printing because here we have explicitly providing the print function to call that one, right? We can modify a little bit. We can use this paste zero. So let me write here what paste zero means. So there are two functions, paste and paste zero. So this works as a concatenation of those two parts, right? So we can we can combine, right? So suppose I'll use paste zero, and I just wanted to combine uh, two objects, right? So suppose uh, create. We just wanted to combine with online training create online then training okay so this is the way if i run this so it will combine all and if you notice we have used paste zero so it will combine all three string all three character without any space right okay so if i use another function that is paste so what it does basically if i use simple paste so it will combine with the space right and here we can use a separator as well so we if you if you wanted to use separator sep and we can use different separate suppose i wanted to combine with underscore so we can write here underscore okay but here it just combined without any separator or any space okay suppose we wanted to add a space in between these keywords so how we'll do we'll write specifically space and uh, in that case we can add that okay so what it does basically it treats this space as a another character right so if i run this so if you notice we have here this species okay so this is the uh, function uh, paste function right let me write paste so this will combine Two or more than two string or character. Okay. So what I'm doing here? So what I what I did here basically? 
so i use paste zero function and then i add the text this text value of x is and then i just call the particular values so this look nice right so this will just print the this text and after that the individual value but earlier if if i just run x uh, this one printing explicit printing but uh, line number 155 so it just provided four but if we add some text prior to that value so that looks nice right so we can do that using this paste function okay suppose i write here this welcome to clinical uh, programming and if i run y so this is called auto printing and if i use print y so this is called explicit printing okay so there are two things explicit printing and auto printing if we directly call a particular variable so that is called auto printing if you just use function a function print function so that is called explicit printing and you can use uh, any way you can modify your uh, what we wanted to print with the particular values okay similarly if you wanted to uh, create the sequence so same, same thing we have to use this colon symbol right so if i run this so here we have created x as an object and this x is a numeric vector right and here these are the values so i showed earlier a function str so str is a function that provides the structure str uh, provides provides structure of the of our object right maybe this provide data type data type right etc so if i run x is equal to uh, str is equal and then x so this will provide the integer this is the data type and it provides also the values some values right? because here we have a uh, 19 uh, observations so that's why it cannot uh, provide all the values right so that's why it provided a, a, a particular chunk right okay similarly we have other another function like letters so if you notice this is uh, written in a small case or running later so if i run this so it will print all the sequence of alphabets from a to z in a smaller case right if you notice a to z in a smaller case if this is the uh, this is the function uh, what we have in r so if you wanted to use alphabets or if you wanted to subset so we can utilize these two function right similarly we have a capital letter uh, right capital letters and this function provides uh, as name suggests this provides alphabet in capital letter right from a to z okay and we are, we have already uh, saw that this uh, this is the keyword this is big bracket and this keyword is used to subset a particular r objects right so suppose i wanted to subset this x right the, the x vector right so the, what we have defined earlier so here we have 10 to uh, 28 right so that means 19 observation suppose i wanted to filter a subset from 10 to 15 so how we'll do we have to first write the vector name so vector name is here x right and within the double uh, within the big bracket right we have to provide the indexes so indexes right or placeholder so what we have to do we have to first write I write generic code code and here we have to provide first The vector name uh, vector then within the double big bracket within the back uh, big bracket we have to write the index or placeholder so placeholder suppose if you notice so this is the x let me print x once again if you notice this is the first object this is the second object this is the third object right similarly this is the 16th object this is 17th one, then 18th and this is uh, last one is 19th object right 
so this is the placeholder or indexes so using that index we can call a particular objects a particular values right so what i'm doing here i'm just subsetting i'm just assigning these uh, values to x1 right so if i run this so it will assign here in x1 right and if you notice here we have a six values why because it starts at the 10th position so 10th position is near about here i guess uh, 19th right so this is 10th position then 11 12 13 14 16 uh, sorry uh, 10th 11 uh, this is uh, yeah this is this is the 10th one this is 11 12 13 14 15 then 16 17 and then uh, 15 we have to uh, we have to call from 10 to 15 so these are the number right so if you notice here we are also having 19 20 21 22 23 24 right so based on the indexes a particular location or particular placeholder it just assign uh, those objects to another vector and it prints accordingly right so if i run x1 so if you notice these are the values that it uh, extract okay similarly we can do the subsetting uh, for the letters right so here we have letters so this is a function and here we have 1 to 26 because we have alphabets from a to z and if you wanted to subset from 1 to 13 so we can write here 1 to 13 and if i run this so it will have uh, a to m because m is at the 13th position right similarly if you wanted to do the subsetting for the uh, in case of uh, capital letters so how we'll do so we'll write here my sequence suppose I write my sequence one okay and if i do the assignment i'll write letters capital letter and i'll write here suppose i wanted to do from one to 15 right so we'll write one to 15 and if i run this and if i run the my sequence so we can run while selecting right suppose i wanted to run this one i didn't want to write another function another uh, text here so what i'll do i'll just select those and then and press uh, this run button or i can use the a uh, keyboard control and enter so it will just run that particular uh, values it will provide particular values right so no need to write you can just select and then run a particular line okay so this is the way hope this is clear now i'll move to the some other part any questions so far okay so now i'll move to the uh, some uh, sample creation right so sample suppose you wanted to draw a uh, sample from Suppose you have a, a poor price, right? And if you wanted to give uh, in a class, right? Uh, or maybe suppose I want I have four pen I wanted to give, but here we have uh, ten students, right? Or twenty students. So how we'll do? We have to just pick randomly, right? So for that we have the function here sample, okay? And uh, we will do that. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that uh, sample part here. So how will you use this sample function so here the, the generic function is sample right and he if you wanted to do the sample from this letters so we'll write here the data right x and then how many sample you need so suppose i need 10 sample and then the another keyword is replacement so suppose you wanted to replace right so what it means basically so suppose you have one bucket and over there we have 16 letters a to z and all are in a smaller letter right so suppose how we'll do the sample you will just pick one right you will just jot down oh this is the a a letter so you'll just jot down on a paper a the first letter a uh, first sample was a right then after that you have the choice you can put the first selected sample into the bucket and you can draw the next so that is called sampling with replacement right so if you write replace is equal to true so that box in the same way okay so there are other way also so suppose you have uh, you have you have selected the first sample and that was a right and if you didn't want to put a into the bucket right and then you have to select another one so without putting the previously se selected sample into the bucket and if you wanted to select the next sample 
so that is called sampling without replacement right so if you write replace is equal to false so that means you are not doing the replacement you are doing sampling without replacement you are not putting the previously selected sample into the original bucket from where you are doing the sampling right so that is called without sample without replacement so if you write here replace is equal to true that means you are doing uh, sampling with replacement so you are just putting the previously selected sample into the bucket and you are drawing the next one but if you write here replace is equal to false so it means you are doing sampling without replacement and you are not putting the previously selected uh, samples into the bucket okay so hope this is clear and this is the way how we'll do the sampling okay so if i run this so if you notice a so here we have a sample of 10 right okay suppose i wanted to uh, draw a sample of 10 from this x vector so, so let me see what is x so x is the sequence from 1 to uh, i guess 28 so one, uh, 10 to 28 and here we have 19 observations so suppose i wanted to draw 10 so we'll write here 10 sample then we have to pass the vector and then we have to pass how many sample we need okay so that means 10 so it just provide here unique 10 sequence right and by default it use replacement is equal to a true okay okay perfect so suppose we wanted to uh, i have i have four prizes and we have here 20 students so suppose i'll write few a uh, few more names so like uh, so with uh, i'll write here akhtar i'll write here uh, andrew i'll write here zia emma right uh, sorry i cannot write full name all names right so suppose i write this person of uh, names right and i have here uh, i wanted to s uh, draw a sample of four because i have four pins and i wanted to give all the uh, to to the participants right so here we have all positive participants and i store their name under the vector uh, name right so if i call that so these are the names here we have nine so sorry i cannot uh, write all the names so and suppose i have four pins so i have the limitation i cannot give each pin to everyone right because i should have more right but i have here four so how will do i'll use this sample functions and i'll choose the four so here these are the four winners right so <laughs> you all get one pin each right so the first is andrew then emma then actor then Gia, right so this is the way th that we can utilize in our real uh, scenario right these functions how we wanted to do the sampling okay any questions so far now we'll move to the next part Ranjit, in yes. uh, sampling it is not selecting from the order right yeah it is not selecting. in which way it, it will select so if we, if we, you select in a specific order so that means you are not doing randomly right so randomly means okay. you are not providing you are you are uh, you are just keeping your eyes shut right and you are just picking a uh, person right without any prejudice or without any preferences right so that's why it will not do uh, in a particular sequence otherwise the whole uh, whole purpose uh, fails right so that is the way yeah hmm? Uh, here we are using the replace, right? Replace is equal to true, uh, yeah. means T. In that case, it will read uh, the SAM. Uh, let us will be replaced. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, if you want to replace the letters with other letters, then it will use in this function. Uh, sorry? So for example, if you want, uh, so, uh, if you want to replace the Sveta with uh, Ranjit, mm -hmm. so we can do that in this function. Uh, no 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 so that is a different replacement so see so here uh, what we, what we are doing suppose here we have a one bucket and here we have all the names in a cheat right so a small uh, paper i have jot down all the name individually right and i have nine cheats for each of the name right and i have one uh, one bucket over there i just put all the four uh, all the nine cheats right 
and what i am doing i am okay. drawing the first one the first name is andrew right the first name is andrew okay. so here we cannot do the replacement because uh, there might be the case if i put the the, the first sheet that uh, that appears as andrew into the same bucket so there might be the case in the next row i may get the andrew again right so that we cannot do because we have four pins and we wanted to give uh, to uh, to four distinct person right so that's why we are not putting in the in the same bucket okay okay understood yeah yeah and if you want to you, so you can you can pl uh, place that maybe in a, in a chart example or in maybe die or in case of card you will do the replacement and uh, you will do in that way right but generally we in the real setting we don't do that because we want we, okay. we didn't want to uh, assign one or more than one prizes to a particular person right one pr one person mm -hmm. Yeah, may get two prizes if you do the replacement that way. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank okay. You. Perfect. So now we'll move to the R objects. So basically, here we have five basic uh, atomic objects. So basic or atomic means these are basic objects, right? So it means all the basic element uh, means so all the nascent one, right? So so after uh, af before that we don't have anything right so these are the building block and we have here five different type of objects so the first is character then we have a numeric <coughs> and in numeric we have two first is real one real number then second is integer then we have logical and then at the end we have a complex objects so these are five objects and using that will create complex data right Will create combination of uh, two or more than two or we can uh, have different uh, combinations right so but these are the basic one and these are the building block for all our objects what we have uh, here right so the first is character so how we'll define the character so as usual so we have to define the character within the double quote right suppose i define single one so uh, if i notice here if i define here name a right and if i run this so this is the character right so if i just print x so this is auto printing so this is the object that it stores right suppose i wanted to see the structure so we'll write here str and i'll pass here x so this is the character so this is atomic objects right atomic r objects and it has stored one suppose i wanted to store uh, a b and c all three so we'll use this combine operator and we can store here and if you notice what i am doing here i am just using the same variable name uh, over and over right because i didn't want to create a whole lot of variable here we just wanted to see but this is not a good programming practice and here i did intentionally because i didn't want to create a whole lot of variable and the other thing also if you create a whole lot of variables though uh, and those variables are having larger size so you system ram may use right so better to use the same variable over and over if you are doing a practice but in the real programming scenario you should avoid that part otherwise your data the previous data will be replaced with the latest one right so that may have uh, create issues right that create issues so suppose i create this one uh, the second uh, here we ha i have created uh, different objects right different character so the first is uh, a that is in double quote we can use single quote as well the second is b we have here double quote as well so and if you notice c so here we have single quote so if i just print here x so it will pull all the three objects right and if i use the class so class will tell the atomic class what is the atomic class so atomic class is here character okay we can check the uh, mod in the same way this also provides the uh, atomic class of x right so these are the two functions that pulls the atomic class of a particular object x right similarly we have another data type another r objects and these are a real number right numeric one so because r stores all the numeric one in with the double precision that's why we have uh, two objects right one is real and the other another is integer okay so first we'll see the real numbers so if i create here x 
if I check the class of X so if you see this is numeric and if I check the str this is also tells numeric if I check the mod this also tells the numeric right but if I check type of so this will provide this is a double because all the real number that are available in R are stored with a double precision right so uh, so if you wanted to see a specific objects that are stored as a numeric one and if you wanted to see whether it is a real number or an integer so you have to use your mod of function right this will tell provide the uh, atomic okay so this is the way how we'll define the numeric so we have to just write uh, digit okay after the assignment operator now we have a integer so integer have different uh, nomenclature right so if you wanted to define integer in r so what you have to do you have to write here capital l so this is the way how we define integer so if i write x assignment operator in capital l so it will assign here integer so if you look uh, here the first instance instances it doesn't uh, create any sort of differences if i just run this one numeric one and if i run this uh, x uh, let me write here x1 for a time being and if i write x1 and if i run this x is equal to 3 so if you notice uh, while seeing the uh, console right uh, by seeing the output or result window we cannot distinguish whether this is an integer or whether this is a numeric right but you have to use the type of function to see whether a particular variable is integer or a numeric one right so but at the first instance you cannot distinguish so this is integer if you use class of this provides the integer one and if you use mod this is numeric and if you use type of so this provides the the type atomic type so atomic type here is integer okay now we have a logical one so logical means two four zero one right that type of objects covers under the logical uh, r objects right so you can define here uh, in the same way x and then you have to write false another is true so you have to write in the text with capital letter and you can see this is class is logical mod is also logical if you wanted to define for the true one so how do we how we'll do we'll write here x sorry x then here we have to write t r u e okay so if i run this if i check the class logical if i check the mod of x so this is also logical so true and false these are the two objects that are covered under the logical r operator r objects right and these are the atomic r objects right similarly we have a complex so complex it uh, comes from the same mathematical uh, nomenclature right so uh, here we have the imaginary part as well as the real part right so if we wanted to deal with those numbers so we can define the complex objects and we can do our uh, mathematical operations there right using this complex r objects right so it covers because most of the programming language we don't have this complex part and it arises in us uh, in a, a more complex way right but here we have iota and we can utilize this so iota is the i that covers the imaginary part right and these are the imaginary part 3i and this 4 is the real part right if i check the class of x so this is complex and if i check the mod of x so this also says that this is a complex r objects okay so this is all five types of r objects the first is character the second is numeric and that covers a real number then the third is integer then the fourth is logical r objects then fifth is complex so these are the five basic r objects okay any questions so far
okay so hope no but okay thank you for thank you sweta for confirming i don't know for, <laughs> why i'm not getting for other uh, people response okay so no problem so i hope this is clear to everyone and now we'll move to the data type so data type basically uh, all the r basic r atomic objects will club into the four uh, four type right so because under numeric we have uh, first we have uh, integer then second we have uh, real number right and then we have a character then another is logical then next is complex so these are the four types of data type what we have here right and uh, using that we can do the mathematical relational and logical operator right because we can perform all the operation on the data right so that we have to keep in mind so the first is character and we'll define with double quote or a single quote based on the values right so the second is numeric uh, here we have real number uh, that is stored under double precision then we have an integer that is stores as a single integer type right so for defining the integer we have here we have to write the digit and after that we have to follow with capital l right so this is the way how we will define the integer and mod of the function mod is the function that will pulls the information of a bit, uh, our objects right atomic r objects similarly we have another function type of so this will also tell in the same way so because if you see if you write type of it will go one label inside right uh, and it would push the exact information but if you write mod so it just provide the numeric right and under the numeric hierarchy we have two uh, two sub label right the one is integer the another is real so for picking those integer and real so one label deep so you have to use type of function and if you wanted to see the preliminary level of information you can use mod right so this is the hierarchy uh, now we can define the logic uh, maybe here i'll just write uh, for the real one real number so suppose i write here x1 i let 3 right without l so if if we check mod of x1 so it will tell the numeric part right but if i write here type of no oh, sorry type of x so it will pull it will go oh sorry type of x1 it will go A numeric type of x1 is double yeah sorry <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so type of x1 is double that's why we have, because we have defined here uh, with a uh, without l and it is stored as a real number right stored as a real number okay so this is the way how we'll uh, use this uh, function how we'll define and how we'll utilize those uh, different type of r uh, data type right similarly we have another uh, type of data type is logical one and here we can define with false and true right so if we define x is equal to false so it will store here false right we can check here the class same thing class is just provide the basic level of information the top level hierarchy right if i use mod so it will also provide the logical because here we don't have the uh, sub label right sub data type so that it pulls if you write type of also it will provide the same thing if you write type of x so it pulls the same information the logical because here we don't have the categories sub label right that is the issue similarly we can have complex so similarly we can provide the real part this is the real part this 3i is the imaginary part so imaginary part is that which have the iota so i is the iota okay if i run this so it will also provide the same thing okay so this is different data type and here we have a four uh, distinct data type uh, in r right but in sas we usually have two one is numeric the another is uh, the character so date and all cover under the numeric if you store the date in numeric format date 9 or date 11 or whatever format that come on the numeric one and the other is character uh, the characters covers the date in character and the other, other another character part right another text so but here we have a four type of r object so this is the uh, differences what we have in sas and r right? 
any question so maybe i'll move to the number okay so these are basic one maybe uh, once you'll do the practice so it, it will be clear uh, to all and maybe if, let me know if you have any doubt uh, i'm happy to uh, cover a little as well if you have some doubt while practicing and while executing your uh, with 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 some more example right and let me know if you have any doubt anywhere okay now i'll move to the numbers so number in r are generally treated as a numeric objects with a double precision right so all are uh, treated as with a double precision because uh, we wanted to store larger numbers so that uh, while calculation uh, we don't lose any uh, information so that's why it stores all the numbers with a double precision okay so that is the main thing suppose i create a and if i check the type of a it is double because i have not provided capital l if i write here capital l so it will store as an integer right but when we are creating any number we usually don't write capital l uh, unless until we wanted to store as an integer right so if we write without capital l it will store as a double precision a real number right if i check the mod of a it will tell the numeric if i check the class it will tell the numeric if i check here uh, the in type of so it will uh, it will provide the uh, the exact r objects right so this is double that means this stores as a real number with a double precision okay suppose i wanted to create the real one so i'll provide here one with capital l okay so this is the uh, number that we wanted to store with with the integer right integer data type okay here we can create more than one as well site right so suppose i write here a and i wanted to create multiple objects so what i'll do i'll use combine operator i'll write one three five seven nine okay and we can uh, we can apply the same function on this right so if i write a so it this is all our store with a double precision we'll write mod of a this is numeric right you can check the class of a this is also numeric okay similarly we can do uh, other part type of type of a double class of a numeric right we can assign here also uh, multiple objects so what i'll do i'll just write here combine operator and i'll provide 2l then we can for 4l sorry 4l 6l right and we can see uh, we can write we can check the same uh, same function right and it work on the same way right so all are integer all are numeric okay so this is the way how we'll uh, create the number and here we have uh, some unique operations right so basically if we divide one by zero so it will give infinity right because if we define any number with a zero so it will get the infinity because uh, you are defining uh, something with a very small number so you'll get a very big number Right, so that calls the infinity part. But in other programming language, you will get nothing. Right? Maybe in SAS, I get will get dot if you don't have anything. If you if you have similar sort of structure, but here we have those defined. Right? So infinity is very large number, so you can you can relate that. If you define one with very large number, so we'll get number that is near about zero. Right? So that's why we are getting zero. Okay. And if you divide zero by zero. So this will give another type of objects that is NAN. So NAN is a short form of not a number. So this is not a number because this is indeterminate form. If you talk about the mathematical uh, language, right? So this is uh, this is these these are defined here in R, right? So we have infinity as a defined. We have zero as a defined. One by infinity is a defined number. We have zero by zero is also a defined pair, defined uh, objects in R. But in another programming language, we have uh, 
uh, these issues because these uh, these objects are not defined in another programming language basically okay i hope this is clear this part okay yes one yeah perfect so now i'll move to the uh, i'll create some more objects here so this is the way how we'll create it. if you see so we are basically creating the vectors right so if i just create here x so if you notice here we have a three objects right a a b and a b c right so we can we can create with a various lengths right and uh, if we use C, so that means we are combining different objects and we are creating basically vector. So by default also, if we create anything, right? If we create single object also, so R will create as a vector, right? Because this is the internal mechanism, right? Internal building block, what we have in R. So it treats all the objects in a vector format, whether it is a character, whether it is a numeric, whether it is a, a logical operator, whether it is a, a complex, right? So all will be created in a vector, right? And all the operation what we do uh, is perform in a vector way, right? In a vector manner, right? So this is the this is the way how it works. So we have uh, we we can create vector in multiple ways. So uh, I'll show you one by one. And the first and foremost is the C operator, the combined operator, right? So we can just use the C and we can combine various objects, right? But one thing we have to keep in mind, all the objects that we are combining here, that must have the same data type, right? Okay, so if you notice here, we are just combining all the real numbers, okay? But we cannot combine real number with a character, okay? So that may create issue. I'll show you what that means, maybe in next class, that calls coercion, coercion, right? Coercion, or maybe we are converting, we are providing two or more than uh, two or more than two data type into a one vector. So it over there, we, it 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 stores the objects in such a way so that it won't lose any information, right? So that is called coercion, right? So I'll show you tomorrow what coercion means and how it works, right? But today uh, we have to focus ourselves on vector and vector uh, is the r objects that contain similar type of uh, objects or similar type of data type okay so it only have the integer it can only have the uh, real number it can only have the character it can only have the complex or logical but it cannot have the mixing of one or two right so that is one thing we have to keep in mind suppose i wanted to run x1 so i can select and then press the run keyword or press the control enter from the keyword right so we can do the subsetting we can call a particular from objects right particular element so if you notice three is at third position so if you write x1 the vector name and then three within the big bracket so we can call the third objects okay similarly we can create the integer vector in the same way we can just use c and we'll provide this uh, integer right so it can create in the same way right so while looking these two x and x1 and n you cannot distinguish right which one is integer and which one is a uh, real number right but if you use here str uh, sorry if we use type of type of x1 uh, sorry x1 so this is double and if you use here type of type of n so this is integer right but just looking the individual values we cannot distinguish whether it is an integer or a linear number so we have to use this type of function this is a very handy function okay similarly we can define the character uh, character vector so for that we have to just use the c combine operator and over there we have to pass the a different character right so i have here used same same name uh, maybe we can add other name also so if i run y1 so here we have all the five names okay we can also call here a particular objects using the big bracket okay and let me do that here suppose i write y1 suppose i wanted to call uh, three the andrew so i'll void the placeholder 
and two is at the third position so we can run this we can call okay suppose i wanted to call me so we'll write here four okay so similarly we can call a specific objects okay now we can define complex in the same way this is the complex r objects okay so we can come we can define here we can add more than one also so we can use the combined operator here we can write c and we can use 3 plus 2i we can use here c first then we can use here uh, some other number and we can close that part if you just print this c so here we have two complex r objects right we can define any number of uh, that right similarly we can define the logical with combined operator right and now we can have here so this is uh, some sort of glimpse uh, tomorrow we'll discuss in more detail right what coercion means and if you see here i am i'm defining here anil and i'm also defining one but one is in the uh, in the in within the double quote so that means this one is stored as a character so this will not show any error this will not internally it, it won't do anything it will just store anil and one in the character format but if i run the second one right so if i if, if you notice the first is name is an alphabet and then second is objects uh, numeric objects right so if i just run this one so what it does internally it just assign this one that i was provided as a integer or as a real number and then uh, internally it converted into a character one right so this means coercion so it it arrange or it stores the data in such a way so that it won't lose any information right so if if we if the r stores this one as a, a numeric one or integer one so it it won't uh, do anything with this anil right because anil is a character one so we cannot convert anil into a character into numeric right or integer so in that in that way so they define uh, the objects in such a way so that it stores all the objects uh, and it won't lose any information so the character is the one and only possible way right and so basically it converts all the objects into character and is stored there okay so this is the way similarly we have another objects list right so the the problem here in uh, vector so vector can only stores same type of objects right where it is a numeric whether it is a character right so this is also a vector so why is vector and this is a character vector okay but if you wanted to store character numeric and all different type of objects into one so we have here the list so list can store different type of objects so if you notice give me a second Oh, sorry sorry i was speaking on mute so so if you notice so we are defining here the list and list can store different type of r objects right so if you notice the first is the this is the real number right and if you notice the second and third are 
uh, this is integer okay so we, we are defining here uh, within the code that's why it is not working so these are the integer because we are defining with capital a and if you notice these are the character okay so if we use list so it will store all the objects okay and if you notice this is the the way how the list will appear okay so this is the first part right and it stores these three objects and second it stores 10 and third it stores 4 and fourth is anil and then fifth is night right similarly if you wanted to combine these uh, names into one so we can do that uh, we will do this with combine operator so if i run this l1 so here if you notice so earlier anil and i do was a different uh, objects right so at fourth position at at fifth position but if you combine so this all appears into one uh, location right so you can think list as a uh, vector within a vector right so this is nested sort of right because if you notice so at fourth position we have two objects nil and and i do here at the first position we can define here three we can add multiple layers right so this is the advantage of creating list it can hold different type of objects and it has nested character right so we'll see uh, this uh, real example of list in subsequent classes right we can define vectors using this vector keyword right and we have to use here the character if you wanted to define character vector and if you wanted to uh, and if you wanted to create a character vector of length 10 so we write here 10 right so this will basically create a blank vector right so if you run v1 so it will it will basically create a blank vector right similarly we have a numeric one so it will create the blank numeric vector right okay so zero 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 similarly we can create the data frame data frame d1 and here i have used x1 and y1 right so these are the values i'll i'll show you data frame in more detail in subsequent classes maybe uh, next class okay any questions here i'll pause for seconds hope this is because these are very simple one this is these are very simple maybe you have to uh, you have to keep uh, these jargon right in your head right otherwise all are self-explanatory right let me know if you have any doubt i will be happy to explain further okay now we have attributes so attributes are uh, basically metadata right data about data and it stores uh, a different information about the variable about the data frame right so this uh, this attributes uh, is a function in our language and this is used to get all the attributes of the data so attributes are different objects it may be metadata it may be variable name it may be data type right and all so there these are the various attributes what we have here right so names names is an attribute that extract the variable name column name is another attribute that also extract the variable name dim names is the uh, the attributes uh, and it extract a dimension of the uh, of the data frame or variable right so let me run one by one so names this is very simple right names mean it extract the names of our objects d so, but d here is a data frame and over there we have a two uh, variable x1 and y1 right so we have here the name as x1 and y1 okay if we use call names so here we have same thing we it extract the variable names if we use dim name so it will extract the dimension of d right so if you notice so uh, it extract the variable here and it extracted the values at the same time okay similarly if we use the class so it will provide the data frame if you use class of n so this is integer so n we have defined over there as an integer right uh, here we have defined so that's why it just pulls the information so class is a attributes 
function right and y1 is also character class of l is list label of x so suppose uh, what is the what is the vector x so let me just print here because x is a atomic character uh, right and if you use the label of x so it won't provide anything for the atomic r objects right so that's why it is giving null if you use labels on a d d is a data frame so here also we don't have labels right if you open d so we don't have here labels so that's why it is giving null but in case of label if you have label in the data frame it will provide the informations right okay similarly we have the comment function so it will fetch the comment if we have available in the vector or r object x if you don't have so it will provide just null similarly the another attribute is dim dim is a dimension so if you notice in the data frame d we have five observation and two variables right that's why it has extracted the first uh, is the number of observation and second is the number of variables okay similarly we have lens it will extract the length of x right similarly it will extract the length of y okay and if you notice x if, if i just show you x so x is a character vector of length one right and if i show you y so this is a vector which have two objects that's why it has provided length as two right so length will just pull all the different elements what we have right so here we have two elements that's why it is giving two here okay similarly we can pull the length of d so length means it will just pull the number of variables for a data frame okay similarly we can use attributes of d so d is a data frame so if you use attribute function it will provide a whole lot of information first it will put uh, dollar symbol name so these are the names these are the class class means data type so this is the uh, data frame then row names so these are the rows number of observations so there are five observations two variable five observations and this is the data frame so this is the holistic picture that attribute function will provide right and if you use the uh, uh, attributes uh, on a, on a, uh, on a atomic objects so it will won't give anything right so if you notice n is a atomic objects here this is an integer one this is integer one if i if i just wanted to show you one thing so type of type of n so this is integer and if i use attribute on an integer so it will give nothing right so it will give null okay so this is the this is the way how attribute works any questions so this is all about today maybe i'll show you how to add some useful books here and how to download from the web yeah so any questions so far then after that, i'll move to the book part can anyone confirm no questions from okay thanks so now i'll move to the these are the books so maybe you can read parallelly but i'll cover each and everything but for for references i can provide uh, these these four books uh, these five books you can read any one the first one is i guess i could i'll prefer first one so what you have to do you have to just open the uh, web browser any web browser and you have to write right here libzin right you have to just enter and this first url you have to go so libgen and library genesis right and after that you have to just copy the text here I have copied already and you have to just paste here in the search button and just press the search keyword it you will land on this page right and this is the book you can download any one so suppose i click the first one okay so this is the r4 data science you can just click on the first one here and you can click here the get so in a seconds it will it will download here in the it will yeah so if you notice here it will download this is of 30.3 mb so it will take some some seconds and this is the way you can do for another one also for the remaining one right so is that fine okay any questions for so far any clarification you need any doubt 
uh, i'll pause for a second then we'll be stop for the day and tomorrow i will be traveling so i'm not in position to take the class so i will take on 14th right on 14th of uh, fab that is on tuesday okay india time tuesday perfect any question any clarification last minute comment no thank you okay thank you thank you Okay, so today we'll cover mixing objects and then we'll see explicit coercion. Then uh, the, uh, after that, we'll cover the matrices, list, and then we'll cover the factors. After that, we'll see the missing values and how we'll do the Im imputation part. And then we'll create the data frame. And then we'll create, the, uh, we'll see the names. What are the different options uh, that are available under names? So, names are basically uh, 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 attributes. Of a particular variable or a data frame and after that we'll cover the question and session if you have uh, if you have some burning question you can you can pause me anytime and i'll happy to answer let me make it full screen okay so are you able to see this r studio part yeah okay thank you thank you Ashur. thank you for confirming so uh, today we'll cover the mixing objects the so first part uh, the mixing objects so if we if we create some sort of vector right and where we have a character as well as the numeric right so that's called some missing mixing objects so here basically uh, internally uh, what r does it it basically combines the data in such a way so that it won't lose any information okay so if you're combining a numeric uh, with a character so it stores the converts that numeric one into a character and then it stores uh, the data right it creates a particular vector so for example here in if you notice in x so what i'm doing i'm just combining one numeric that is 1.7 to a character that is a small a right so if i run this so what basically it does it creates a character vector if you notice here it creates character vector of length 2 the first element is 1.7 and second is a right so what it does basically it converts this internal 1.5 1.7 that we have provided as a numeric into a character uh, character type right so this is called coercion right the process of converting this numeric to a character one is called coercion and this is the way uh, that r stores the data if we have a different type of object size right? so if we pass one numeric and another character so it will convert the whole uh, element into a character uh, data type right and it is stores here in x so if i show you here x so this is the two element what we have okay suppose we wanted to see the uh, the print option so explicit print option what we saw earlier so this is the print part Suppose we wanted to create one numeric uh, with a logical. So this is a logical uh, data type, right? False, and this this two is a numeric. Suppose I do uh, combine these two. So what it does basically, it stores the data into a numeric one. Okay. So give me a second. So it converts uh, data. Uh, into a uh, numeric one right so sorry for the background noise so basically my mate <laughs> arrived right so it may have so apologies for that so this is the uh, this is the way how it combines uh, if we pass one uh, logical operator logical data type and the another numeric right so uh, here we have to keep in mind that whatever the logical data type we have in r it also stores that logical data type as a, a form of zero or one right so if we store true so it stores true as one internally and if we create false so false will be stored as zero right so if if i just print y here so if you notice the first element is zero and here we have passed uh, false right while creating this vector similarly if i create this one again so here we have a and then true okay so if i run y so if you notice it convert this true into a 
a character vector right but if i create another one uh, where i'll pass through uh, uh, where i'll include one numeric right so if i create t so if i write true and then suppose one right and if i just print t so if you notice the true is stored as one and then we have the another one okay suppose i convert to another one so that it will not create any sort of confusion so if you notice this is the second element so this is the second element four and the first element is stored as one okay so this is the way how it stores the data when we have a combination of logical as well as the numeric uh, data type right if we if we use character instead of numeric so it converts this true into a character one right we just saw okay it converts this as a character and is stored there okay so this is called mixing objects mixing basically we are passing different type of data uh, type into one one vector and internally the process of converting one data to another one is called coercion so some sometimes we'll write a specific function to do the coercion right so that is called explicit coercion but here we are not writing any functions for the conversion right so that is called this is called basically implicit coercion right because we are passing a different type of data type right so so th that's why it just do some sort of conversion internally so that it stores the data without losing any information right so this is called implicit coercion because we are not passing any function right any question so far now i'll move to the explicit explicit uh, coercion any question okay i'll pause for a second and then we'll move to the another part okay so uh, now i'll move to the explicit coercion so so far we saw implicit coercion where we don't write any function and because the if you pass because here we're passing different type of data type right and we are creating one vector so it does implicit sort of coercion so that it stores the data without losing any information but now we'll use some function and we'll convert one data type to another data type right so for example suppose i create here x is equal to 0 colon 6 so this is the way how we'll create the sequence right so if we use colon uh, between two numbers so what it does basically it create a sequence it starts from the first element and after the increment of one it ends up to the last element right so if i just print this x so this is the sequence it is started with zero and it ends six and it has an increment of one right one two three four five six right so this is the numeric objects so let me check the class okay so this is integer basically okay uh, and suppose i wanted to convert this as a numeric one so how we'll do we'll write here uh, the function as dot numeric okay so this is integer right and we can use this integer to convert the uh, numeric or maybe uh, we can convert to a logical one we can convert to a character we can convert to a complex right so suppose here we have uh, we uh, if you if you wanted to store uh, here x1 suppose i create x1 and suppose i create a few numbers one then second is 12 third is uh, 13 then here we have 17 okay suppose th these are the number and if you notice i have uh, saved as a character one right within a double code so if i show you the structure of x so this is a character okay suppose i wanted to convert this character into a numeric so what i'll do i'll use this function as dot numeric so as dot numeric basically converts this character vector to a numeric vector so this converts
okay so if i run this so you will find here this is the numeric vector okay you can check here the class as well suppose i store here in x1 x underscore num okay and if i show you this oh sorry if i show you the class of x underscore num so oh sorry i have to first create and then so this is the numeric okay so because here i just run the class statement without creating this x1 right x underscore num so that's why it is it was giving error right okay so this is the way how we'll convert character uh, that were uh, the numeric that is stored into character format into a numeric vector okay similarly we can convert this into a, a logical one right so if i use here as dot logical so it will convert numeric to logical okay so if you notice so na 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 so we don't have anything uh, because here we are using x as a character right so so as dot numeric it only converts numeric uh, numeric to logical okay vector or data type maybe i'll remove the vector okay because here if you notice the x what i have used is the character right so that's why it won't convert anything that's why we are receiving we are getting here na na right so if i instead of x if i use x1 right and if i use here so this is numeric and if i use here x1 instead of x right so it will convert right so if you notice the so first is uh, uh, first is zero right so first is zero so that's why it has stored as a false right and the remaining one is one or more than one so if you use as dot logic uh, as dot logical uh, operator right or function and if we have numbers that is more than one or one so in that case it stores as a true true vector right a true data so this is the way how it converts but if you pass here uh, the input vector as a character one so in that case it won't do anything okay so this is the differences similarly we have the another function as dot character so this converts numeric data type to character right so this is the way how it converts so suppose i'll use here x underscore num right so if i use if i run this so it will convert into a character one right so if i just run if i just show you x underscore num so this is the numeric one but if you notice this one so this is with double quote that means this is stored as a character data type right similarly we can create the complex so this also converse numeric okay so if i use here x underscore num so it will convert into a complex data type right so we have not passed anything for the imaginary one so that's why it just adds symbolically zero and the iota term imaginary part to all the number what we have here so first one is one so it has added one plus zero into i then second is 12 so 12 plus zero into i and then 13 plus zero into i and then last one is 17 so 17 plus zero into i so this is the way how it converts the uh, numeric data type to a complex data type right okay so this is called explicit coercion why because we are using the functions or uh, command to convert one data type to another data type okay any questions
so now i'll move to the another one so generic formula here is as dot data type so if you use as dot numeric so it will convert uh, the data that is stored into character format right number that is stored into character data type to a numeric data type similarly we have as dot character so it converts into a character one as dot logical converts to a logical as dot complex converts to a complex data type right so this is the generic formula okay any question okay i'll consider silence as no so maybe if you ask if you have some questions so please unmute yourself and don't hesitate right so all questions are uh, questions right so don't feel that this is not a good question and all right so i'm happy to uh, take your questions any questions okay so now i'll move to another one another type right so suppose i create x vector and this is a character one suppose i print x so this is character so what if if i use as dot numeric right so this will not convert anything right so if you know if i just run this as dot numeric so it gives warning right warning message nan uh, not, uh, not nan introduced by coercion so it won't able to convert anything right so that's why we receive here na okay because it won't convert a to a number right so that is the case similarly if i use as dot logical here also it gives nan nan right so this is also uh, not correct right so we cannot convert character alphabets into a numeric one right similarly if i use as dot complex so it also gives warning and then uh, it won't convert anything right nan right so this is the way it doesn't works with the character uh, or alphabets okay now we have a, uh, another function that do some sort of coercion so coercion uh, uh, here it does basically some sort of matrix creation so it will here we are passing just a sort of sequence one to nine right and we are converting this sequence into a matrix format right so here we have a keyword matrix okay and here we have to pass the data the vector what we wanted to convert into a matrix one and then after that we have to use number of rows so n rows number of column what we wanted to uh, create here right and one thing we have we have to notice here so number of row multiplied with the number of column must be equal to the length of the uh, vector that we are passing right so if you notice here we have nine element total so here that's why we have used here uh, number of row is equal to three and number of row, uh, column is equal to three so if you multiply three with three so we will get nine so that is the way that is the main thing that we have to notice we have to keep in mind and the second uh, part here is by rows so if you use if you write here by rows equal to true so it do the arrangement into a row wise fashion so what it means let me run and show you so if i run this so if you notice so the values are filled in a row wise fashion so this is row this is first row this is second row right this is second row and this is the third row okay so if you notice the first values one is filled here then second then third after that it moves to the second row four five six then it moves to third row five a seven eight and nine because what it why it does uh, the row wise fashion the filling of all the numbers because here we have written by rows is equal to true right so if you if you write here by is equal to false by row is equal to false and if i run this so if you notice so by default it does the column wise filling up the numbers what we pass here okay so if you notice the first column this is first column then we have second column here then we have third column right so these are the rows these are different rows like row one this is row one then row two row three and the top one is column right column one column two and column three so if you write here by is equal to false so it does the row wise uh, filling up the number so one then here we have two then here we have three right then four five six seven eight nine okay 
so based on that what we want and how we wanted to create the matrices we'll use row wise is equal to true or false okay suppose i wanted to see the number of columns and row so we have the keyword uh, dim and dim is basically attribute sort of it stores the metadata and it basically tells the number of rows and the number of columns so the first element is for the rows and the next element is for the columns okay then we have a attribute so attribute is a more uh, generic function that captures the attributes right so it also provide dim here we have a three and three right because this is the basic data type right so that's why it won't provide another uh, any other informations right but if we use uh, attributes and we'll pass here some sort of uh, data frame so it also provide data frame type data type is equal to data frame then different variables name and then the actual observations right so this is the part uh, this is the different information that will get if you pass attributes on a data frame okay suppose i create one uh, one vector m1 and here we have 1 to 10 okay so now we'll convert uh, this into a numeric one so if we if we use here uh, m1 and we'll pass is dot numeric so if i run this so is dot is dot numeric or is dot data type is a function that checks whether a particular vector is numeric or not right so if we use is dot numeric so it it just go to this vector m1 and it checks whether this m1 is numeric or not and if that is numeric so it returns true and if that is not a numeric so it returns false right similarly is dot character it checks for the character right so if if you pass is dot character and then m1 so if if you notice here m1 is a numeric one right so if we if we run this uh, is dot character function so it will give false because this is m1 is not a uh, numeric this is a base this is uh, not a character right so that's why it, it returns false right so if i show you here structure str str or class of m m1 so if you notice this is integer or if i use here the class here m1 so this is integer right because this is numeric so that's why it has provided here false for is dot character um, function right so the generic function here is we have to write at is dot data type to check for a particular the particular data type right so this is the way how we'll check uh, a particular data type okay suppose you wanted to check a logical one so we'll write as is dot logical right so uh, this is very uh, naive right so is is means so if we if you wanted to write if you wanted to ask some questions so we'll write is is something is that right so similarly it if they have the programming uh, programmer of r or maybe inventor of r though so they created the similar sort of function so you are asking is this a numeric vector so we'll write function is dot numeric is this a character one so we'll write is dot character right so the, uh, we can we can relate to that one right so plain english and this command is very uh, handy uh, in remembering those uh, lines right or those functions so any questions so far No, 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 no. So now what I'll do, I'll just do some sort of subsetting. So suppose here we have M1 and in M1 we have 1 to 10, right? And suppose you wanted to extract the second element, so we'll write here the same thing. 
the, the first we have to write the uh, vector name and then we have to write the placeholder for the element that we wanted to extract right so we wanted to extract the second ones that's why we have write i have written here two if you write two so it will provide the second element similarly if you wanted to see the dimension of m so so m is a matrix right so we'll write here dimension and we'll give the three and two three suppose you wanted to write, see the dimension of m1 so let me sh let me show you what it gives so m1 so it it won't give anything it just gives the null right because for m1 m1 is not a matrix m1 is a vector right so it doesn't have any dimension so dim function only applies to a matrix because it provides rows and the number of rows and the number of columns okay perfect so now i'll move to the character matrix so so same thing uh, suppose here uh, here i passed an integer so in, instead of that i'll pass here the letter okay and i'll subset uh, from 1 to uh, 9 so this is the function if i run this one it just create alphabets from a to z in capital letters right suppose i wanted to use first 9 so that's why i have use here big bracket and over there i have used 1 to 9 and then this is the first element uh, for the row and second element for the column so if you won't write so it it uh, it just save as a it takes first element as a row and second element as a column as it is right so this is called uh, place referencing so maybe in subsequent classes i'll show you i'll cover those part so suppose i won't write here and rows is equal to 3 so because the second first element is there for the row so it takes this as a row and this as the column okay and then by row is equal to true so it do the arrangement in a row wise fashion right so if you notice we have a b and c then we have d e f and then g h i so this is the way how we'll arrange the matrix and this is a character matrix okay suppose i I'll use I'll create an a vector uh, one two three, then I'll create a y uh, where we have ten eleven twelve, right? So let me print uh, these two first. Okay, so this is first x one, and then y is ten eleven twelve, right? Suppose we wanted to arrange a column wise, co column wise way. So how will do? So what it means the column wise arrangement? So suppose I write here C bind X and Y. So what it does basically, it creates two vector. The first vector it creates X, then second vector it creates Y, right? And in X in X column it stores one, two, three. Then in Y it stores ten, eleven, twelve. So basically it creates two column here if we use C bind, right? So if you notice, this is the first column X. And here we have first element, then second element, then third element. Okay. Similarly, we have y. This is the first element, this is the second element, and this is the third element. Right. If we use R bind, so this is the row wise. <coughs> Sorry. So, excuse me. So, uh, so this is a row wise uh, combined, right? So here we have. It has combined in a row wise fashion so this is first row and this is the second row okay uh, this is the first row and the second one is the y okay so it just arranges the row wise fashion so this is two different way of combining the data c bind means column bind r bind for the row bind so you can remember c is for the column and r is for the row right so this is the way how we'll do the combining of uh, data sets or some sort of so this is basically a setting of data sets so r bind is setting of data and this is basically merging of data but here we have not used any by variable so but we can use by variable and we can combine those data sets so i'll i'll show you those part when we cover the deployer right or when we see, see the join so here we have a, a function join or we have function uh, generic function merge as well to combining the different data sets okay so any questions so far
Okay. No questions, Ranjit. Perfect. So now I'll move to the next part, the list. So list is a type of object that stores different type of uh, our data, our data type, right? So it stores character, it stores numeric, it stores logical, it also stores the complex. So all four type of data it stores basically, right? So this is heterogeneous uh, we can consider. And if I run this, so if you notice, so how we create the list? So here we have a function list. And within that uh, parenthesis, we have to pass the element, right? So this is the first element, then A is the second element. And this whole thing is the third one, right? And then this is the fourth, right? So if you notice within in the list, we can use combine operator. We can combine different objects, right? So if you notice, this is a combine operator. And here we have combined this true, false, and this capital E. So this is the leverage what we have in uh, in list. Okay, so if you notice, this is the first element, and the first element within that the first element is one. At the second element, the first uh, the first element at the second position is a, right? At the third element, right? Whatever we have in the list, the first element is true. The second element is false, and then third element is a, a right? So suppose we wanted to extract something. So how we'll do? So here we have some differences. So Earlier, we have to just use one big bracket to uh, just uh, reference up or maybe just call a particular objects, right? But here we have to use two big bracket because if you notice the storing uh, part, right? Internal structure of the list here it stores within a two big bracket. Why? Because the first big bracket it refers to individual objects, right? And this is the placeholder for a particular thing, right? So this is the first uh, part. And within that we have a whole lot of thing, right? So that's why we have another big bracket with the parentheses, uh, with the number, right? So that's why, in case of list, you have to refer with two big bracket, okay? So suppose I wanted to extract this one. So if you notice, A is at second position, right? So A is at second position. So we have to first provide the uh, list name that is X, and then we have to write two in Two big bracket within the two big bracket right so if i run this so it will extract this one okay suppose you wanted to extract the third element right so if you notice at the third position we have a whole lot of thing right we have three objects basically so if you wanted to extract the third one so how we'll do we'll write the list name that is x then we have to write two big bracket and within that we have to write three so it extract whole the whole third element right so it extract true false and then a, a okay so if i run this so if you notice so this is the first element this is the second element and this is the third element at the least uh, position with three with a placeholder three okay so this is the way how we'll extract suppose i wanted to extract the third one uh, at the third position so how we'll do we'll first write this one a three three and then we have to again write a big bracket and over there we have to write three to extract the uh, this third element this a a okay so this is the way if i run this so we'll get that so this is the way how we'll extract the element in the list okay we can extract the uh, placeholder or within that we can extract the individual element uh, using double referencing so this is basically called double referencing because here we are just referencing a particular placeholder and within that we can refer uh, for a individual or a specific objects right okay any questions so far okay so now i'll show you how to create a vector of different type so this is list uh, and this is basically creates a blank vector right uh, of a different length so we can provide here length so suppose we wanted to create something and we wanted to store into a, another uh, data type right or another vector so we'll use this function right to create first we'll create blank vector and then we'll store the, the objects 
uh, or process objects into that so for that purpose we generally use this part okay so suppose i create x1 and here we are creating the list so if you notice all list will be created with this two big bracket right so here we have five length is equal to five so that's why it will create a list of objects five right and all should be null because this vector keyword create the null vector right so this creates the vector null list this creates the null numeric vector this creates the null character vector and this creates null complex vector right so based on the data set we can use this and it will create accordingly right so if you notice if we use vector then within the parentheses and within the double quote we, if we use numeric so it will create here the numeric vector if you use character it will create the character vector if you use complex so it will create the complex vector okay so this is the way how it creates a blank vector okay now we have a concept of factors right so factors are basically categorical data having different labels right so suppose in case of uh, responses will generally capture yes no or maybe in case of adverse event will adverse event severity will capture mild moderate severe so those were called factors or categorical data right so categorical data can be ordered or unordered so ordered means there might be some hierarchy right suppose you wanted to uh, store the uh, if you wanted to see the um, severity or as uh, uh, or toxicity of data right so in case of severity we have mild moderate severe so mild is the first order then second one is the moderate then third is the severe right so these are the hierarchy similarly we, we, when we have a another type of data set where we don't have any sort of hierarchy right so there might be some sort of uh, names right so names is also a, a, or maybe communities community 1 community 2 community 3 group 1 group 2 group 3 so these are the also the order data but a uh, categorical data but here we don't have any specific order so this is the way how we'll have the different type of uh, categorical data right and using that we can create some sort of factors so because all the categorical data what we have in r if we wanted to do some sort of modeling and if we wanted to do some sort of analysis so internally it won't process with the, that order right that categorical uh, type right so internally it is stored a sequence of 0 1 right if you have two two different labels right true or false so it stores 0 or 1 for true right or other way around if you have three label three different label like mild moderate severe so in that case it creates a sequence of 0 1 2 because here we have three if we have four di different label right suppose group 1 group 2 group 3 group 4 so in that case it internally create a sequence of four different number right 0 1 2 and 3 right so similarly based on the different type of labels so it creates internally a sequence of 0 and 1 and it is stores right so suppose i wanted to create here the factor and here if you notice here we have a two distinct objects so one is yes and the another is no right and if you use factor function here so if you notice so it creates a sequence of yes and no right and if you if you if you see here in the label so no is coming first then yes right because if we arrange the alphabetic order so n come first then y right so that's why no is coming uh, first so if i use here unclass so it will provide the internal structure right so if you notice so yes is stored as two that's why we are here, here two then again at the second position we have yes so here also we have two then no for no we have one then for yes also here at the th fourth position we have here two right so if you notice the first element first element was no so that's why no is stored as one because the in the alphabetical order n come first that's why no has the internal structure internal storage uh, with the number one and yes is stored internally with the number two right suppose you wanted to so if you wanted to do the modeling so one is considered as a reference and two it, it will compare with the two right or other way around if you do the sorting and if you use descending right suppose you wanted to uh, if you wanted to create the label in other another way right you wanted to 
consider no as the first and uh, yes as first and no as uh, second right so you can you can write here labels and you can specify here which one we wanted to consider first right so whatever the number we write whatever the text or categorical label we write first so it will uh, assign accordingly so if i run this so if you notice if i run x1 and I run class x so if you notice now yes is coming first and yes is stored as one right so yes is coming here first right? because here i specifically provided the label keyword and i just wanted to uh, i just wanted r to consider this yes first then no right because i wanted to do the analysis in that way so similarly if you wanted to compare uh, mild with severe so we'll keep mild first and then severe at the end right so or maybe we can use descending option in the uh, in the modeling statement so we can do that in the same in the in that way also so this is the way how factors work so all the categorical data have some internal string internally they stores r stores as a string of 0 and 1 right and accordingly based on the order right it uh, it compares the data in the model right so this is the way. okay so any questions on 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 this aspects okay so now i'll move to the missing missing values so missing value here we have uh, two missing values uh, two type of missing na or nan so nan is not a number so this is also a type of missing value if we have some sort of uh, different type of uh, division right so if we divide 0 by infinity so it will give 0 but if we divide uh, infinity by 0 Sorry, if I, I have to write capital I by zero, oh, sorry. So we'll get infinity. So if we have infinity, so that is not a number. So it stores here uh, NAN data type, right? And NA is normal, not available, right? And so there are two functions. So the first function is is dot NA. So this tests for the NA, right? Not available part and this test for the nan okay and using this function we can test for the uh, different type of missing values right so whether it is na or nan we can we can see that so suppose here we have infinity and if you divide infinity by 4 so we'll get the numeric type so let me create one vector and i'll show you how to uh, check those uh, missings so if here if you notice here at the third position we have here na right okay so what if you wanted to check is there any missing for this vector x so what, what how we'll do that we'll use here is dot na function and we'll pass the this numeric vector right so if i just pass this one so it it will provide the string of true and false right so it provides true where we have n is right just a second okay so uh, if we use uh, is dot na so it will provide the string of true and false right and if you notice at the first position it is one right that's why it is provided false because this is not na at second position it also provided false at third position here we have na so it has provided true and then at fourth and fifth position here we have false and false right so it just provides the string of true and false and it provides true for the values where we have n is right similarly if we have if you pass is dot n it also do the same thing for the n part right 
because in our data uh, in our vector x we don't have any n so that's why it won't provide it anything for the true okay so similarly if i'll create another vector where we have na or nan both right so if i create this one here we have at the second position we have nan and at the fourth position we have na so if i just check the class so this is numeric okay and this is dot na or is dot nan this only works for the numeric vector right so this is one thing that we have to keep in mind so we can use is dot na here so if you notice if we use is dot na so it also stores it also provides detects this nan as well as na right so if you notice at the third position here we have true and at the fourth position we have true okay so this is the two uh, part okay so th this is dot na detects na and as well as nan but if you use here is dot nan so it only pulls the information for the the part that we have here uh, na right okay so this is the thing that they created in a different way right and accordingly it provides the so is dot na is more generic it provides the information for na as well as the na so this we have to use uh, more frequently right so we generally use is dot na uh, that is more general and we hardly use is dot na but for the demonstration purposes i just wanted to show you the, because this is also another function that we have here in r okay any questions here okay so now i'll move to the data frame and i'll show you what basically this is so uh, so far we saw vector we saw the string right and those captures uh, if we talk about the vector it captures only a specific type of data right it can only be uh, for the numeric one it can only be the character if we talk about the list it can store a different type of r objects right it can store numeric it can store uh, character as well as the uh, other data type complex and uh, logical but the structure is a bit different right so that is not a usual data of one record per subject right so for that purposes for for simplifying those data structure or for analysis purposes for statistical modeling purposes we have uh, the, uh, the r uh, if you see here hardly welcome so he is very uh, may, um, important in developing our script right and different packages right so he has created the concept of data frame right so uh, he mostly uh, provide all the informations and all the books right so you'll find different books uh, right so there are our advanced books our basic books so most of the books uh, were written by this person right and he is very prominent in developing R. okay so he has just initiated the concept of this data frame basically for the statistical modeling applications right and uh, here we have a very unique and very simplified structure right so here we have but variables different variables and different rows so rows have different numbers of records and then variables have different types of data that it is it captures right so if i create here so we saw earlier as well so uh, how we'll create the data frame so here we have a keyword data dot frame so we'll first write data dot frame after that here we have to provide the variable name right or column name so this is the column name this is the id and i'm creating one to four so one column four means it creates a sequence of one two three and four right it sequence uh, of length four and then here i'm creating the another variable and here we have provided different names right so it i'm passing here two variables and passing different values but one thing we have to keep in mind so in case of while we are creating the data frame we should have the same number of element right so if you notice id here we have also four four element so if i just run 
here we have four element one two three four and if i run this one the name uh, here also we have four element right sashank ashok naidu and ranjit right so this is the way how data frame is created right so we should have the same number of element for the each variable or each column otherwise it will not create right so i'll if i run this so this is the data frame so this is the first variable id this is the second variable and these are the records this is first record this is second record this is first values of, of variable id second value is two third value is three and then fourth value is four and these are the names right first name is sashank then second ashok naidu and ranjit and this is the uh, record number this is first record this is second record this is third record and then last is the fourth record okay so this is the way how we'll create the data frame suppose i'll just create here three instead of four uh, let me copy and then paste so that it will be easier uh, first of all i'll just show you the number of rows so n rows just pull the number of rows for this data frame so number of rows means number of observations okay rows or observations okay similarly we have n calls so it extract number of columns so here number of columns means the number of columns or the variables so here we have two variables that's why we are getting two similarly we can create another type of data frame where we'll have the age information also so we'll add another variable and we'll create the uh, age for different r objects right so if you notice here we have four names so that's why we have to provide here only the four age right we cannot write five or six okay let me create uh, another type of uh, data frame where i'll show you a different uh, different type different type of lens right so suppose here for the id i am creating three okay so here we have three objects and for the names we have four right let me create x1 and i'll show you so if you notice this type of error it shows right so if your argument implying differing uh, differing number of rows three and four so one have three rows three number number of rows and the another having four number of rows so if you get this type of error so you notice that you have not passed the equal number of element right so that's why it is giving error right okay similarly we have the str keyword it will just provide the structure so it will provide this is data frame then different names this is variable one this is variable second this is the third variable and these are the data type for each variable right and these are the individual values okay we can use here a uh, different function uh, to convert suppose uh, here if you notice this age is stored as a character one right so we can convert that into a numeric so how we'll do we'll use here as dot numeric function and then we have to use this symbol to extract that right suppose okay so this is the data frame right this x is a data frame suppose i wanted to extract this age information and i wanted to create another variable so how we'll do for extracting first we have to write the data frame name so data frame name is x then we have to use the dollar symbol and then we have to pass the variable that we wanted to extract right suppose you wanted to extract the age so we'll write here age okay so this is the element suppose we wanted to extract the, the other information id so we'll write here id and then run suppose you wanted to extract the uh, name so we'll write here name and then we can extract okay so this is the way how we'll extract those information so here i what i did i just extracted the age and i passed as dot numeric to convert this age that was stored and uh, as a character one to a numeric one right so if i run this so it will show here it will create age underscore num and this is the numeric one we can see the uh, structure as well so this is numeric right we can see the class or str you can i can use str as well age underscore num so this is numeric okay so this is all about the data frame and different options any questions so far
okay so now i'll move to the next part so the next part is names so our objects can have names names mean variable name or column name right so suppose i'll create here id and i'll store id as uh, i'll create one two three and i'll store here id so id is the name right we can create here uh, suppose i wanted to name all three objects differently right so how we'll do we'll write here names and we'll pass id so the variable id itself is store one two three but individually we can name one with ankit two with andrew and three with zia right so we can do that we can use this name and we'll pass this vector here and it will do the naming here so if i use id so if you notice earlier we have just one two three but it just assigned the name so this is column name column name is ankit second column is name is uh, andrew then third column name is zia and these are the different values okay if i use names and id so these are the different names for this vector id okay so this is the way how we'll create the names for a vector okay which it just basically maps one to ankit two to andrew and three to zia so this is the way here also we can create in the same way we can use list and we can assign this is the first first name and these are the value this is the second name and this is the value this is the third name and this is the respective value so we can create in the same way right so if you notice dollar symbol los angeles so this is one value one name then second name then third name so if you notice this is not a good naming convention because here we have spaces but r can adjust that also here if you notice some sort of symbols right this symbols this consider this whole as a one name right but we can create another type of name where we can add this uh, underscore in between or we can just combine we can just remove this uh, space in between right but this is not a good naming convention but r can adjust if we transpose the data right and if we have some sort of uh, different labels with spaces so r create in that way and we have to write this whole uh, text to call the particular object right so if you notice if you wanted to call x right the first element so we have to write whole lot of thing with spaces right so then only we can call the first element right but if if you notice this is uh, we have here space in between so this is not good naming convention so we should avoid that all right so instead of that we should write uh, underscore i specifically i explicitly wanted to show you that's why i have written here but please uh, uh, avoid this and uh, naming convention okay so now we can convert matrices and we can name the matrix as well so if i just run m so if you notice this is column one this then a column two and if you notice this is row one uh, this is row one and this is row two right so we can name the rows as well as the column right so we have here the uh, function dim names so dimension name and we can assign the first element what we'll do it will assign to the row and then second element it will assign automatically to the column right <coughs> so this is the function how it works right so if i run m so if you notice the first element is assigned to the rows so a and b and second element it assigned to the column and here if you notice here we have two columns so we can pass here only two and here we have two uh, two rows so we can pass only two element to the rows and here we have two columns so we can pass two element to the column so this is the way how we'll do the naming so we can change also we can pass c d to the row and a b to the column so whatever the first element will pass it will assign to the row and the second element it will assign to the column okay so if i run this and if you notice so a we were assigned now to the column and cd to the rows right so this is the way how we'll uh, do the naming of column and rows okay any questions so far Thank <laughs> you.
and not only. So similarly, we can assign this function also. Here we have two function, call names and uh, row names, and using that we can assign to the column and to the row name, right? And we have here this x and z and h and f. So, any question so far what we have covered today? Okay, so maybe I'll remind once again if those who have not paid the fees, so maybe you'll do that and you can contact to the course coordinator for that and so that because they will change the uh, meeting invite. Uh, to the new one right so prior to that i'll suggest maybe you can pay the fees and uh, i will be off on tomorrow uh, fi from 15 to 17 i'll try to uh, i'll try to take the class on 17 but i will be traveling on 17 as well so i may miss but uh, i'll i'll maybe i'll uh, if i will be, i will be available so i will take so maybe please wait for five minutes so maybe our class is from seven so we'll wait for seven five and within that i'll, I'll if i able to join so i'll join otherwise i'll take the class on 18 on saturday okay so, so apologies for that and if you don't have any questions so maybe we'll close for the day and we'll meet on 17 or 18 17 if i am able to make it otherwise we'll meet on 18 Okay. Okay, Ranjit. Thank you. Uh, 18 will be Saturday, Ranjit. Yeah, it is a Saturday. Yeah, 18 your morning is 17 in the American US actually. Yes, uh, yes. So, uh, Ashok, we are covering for all the days, right? So, here we are not keeping uh, on the weekend, right? So, yeah, yesterday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, okay. Bye -bye. okay okay thank you thank you everyone so maybe those who have not paid so maybe we'll do that and we'll meet on the next class okay thank you maybe you'll okay. do practice and let me know if you have any questions and you'll co collect a whole lot of questions on your uh, notepad <laughs> and maybe you can pose me on the next class okay perfect thank you thank you for your patient listening and see you in the next class Bye. So, uh, so far we have covered various topics. So today we'll cover some built-in function in R and then we'll move to the reading data from the external drive using this uh, this uh, package read.table. And then after that we'll uh, read some large data set using this uh, read.table uh, package or function. After that, we'll, we'll see how to uh, calculate the memory requirement for a particular data set because as we already uh, already conveyed that whatever the data sets or whatever the external file that will import in R, it need to be stored on the RAM first, right? So it will be stored on your physical memory, right, of your system. So for that, we need some sufficient amount of RAM spaces, right? If we have a large data set so if we have if we are importing a very large data set so you should have some rough guess or rough estimate how much memory uh, it is needed right to import that file otherwise your system may crash and uh, it may give a whole lot of error or sometimes it it, it takes an infinite amount of time while importing those file because it get freeze uh, while importing right so for that we should have some rough estimate how much memory we need for importing a particular large file right so this will calculate at the end and then uh, we'll uh, see uh, this reader package so reader package is also a package that will use to import the external file like csv file and other file extension so we'll, we'll see this uh, reader package in more detail okay so without further ado let's move to the r studio and we'll see those stuff this topic one by one let me make it a full screen so before moving to the class uh, so first of all uh, we have to see what are the uh, working directory right 
so uh, and so for that we have the keyword get wd so i already uh, showed this keyword multiple time uh, this will pull the location okay so if i run this with control enter this will pull the location here if you notice this is in c drive user hp1 uh, drive uh, documents so this is the path where the r has set its forking directory so whatever the file and whatever the data set will create it basically stores here right but for for purposes we hardly store anything in c drive except the software right so better to uh, set the working directory some other location and then do whatever the work you wanted to perform here right so for that we have to use the keyword set wd right and within that parenthesis we have to write the double quote and then provide the location okay so this is the location that i wanted to uh, set okay as a working directory so let me check okay so this is the location now this is uh, set okay so now i'll show you some built-in function so there are various type of built-in function like a string function character function mathematical function and a statistical function right so a string first we will see the string function so a string functions here so these are basically uh, applicable for the string or character vector right so suppose you wanted to extract a few words from a, a string of large word, right? So here we'll use those functions, right? So I'll, I'll show uh, one by one uh, various functions. So suppose I'll create here one uh, one vector, right? Welcome to great online training. And I store here in A, right? So if I print A, so this is the uh, vector, okay? Welcome to great online training. So suppose I wanted to extract few words from here. So what I'll do? So there is one function sub str. Okay. So this is a function that uh, that will scan a few sub a few words. Okay. So the keyword here is we have to first write sub str, and then we have to pass the character vector or string. After that, we have to provide the start position, right? So what this start position means? So it will start from second position second position here is e okay and it will end up to eight so eighth position here is so this is three then four five six seven eight so this is the eight position so it will extract the whole word right so this is the way how it extracts so let me run and show you okay so this is up to t so it starts from the second position and it ends Eight position and whatever the text that it uh, encounters so it will print here okay so this is the way how this uh, sub str function basically works okay and this is used to extract a, a character vector or a string from a larger string okay give me a second sorry so Suppose I'll create another vector x. Okay, so this is uh, another text. Here we have create online training with the spaces, right? So suppose if you notice, this is uh, this G is capital letter and then all are running letter in this word create. Similarly, online and uh, is running letter is all in running letter. Similarly, under for the training, the T is in capital letter and remaining are running letter. Okay. So suppose I wanted to convert all in a running case, right? Or a smaller case. So what is the function here? So function here is two lower. Okay. So suppose I use so, so how we'll use? We'll just use the function to two lower and then within the parentheses we have to pass the character vector or a string x. Okay. So if I run this with control enter, so it will store here, create online training, all in running case. Right. Similarly, if you wanted to convert this character vector x into the upper case, so how we'll do the function here is two upper. Okay, so if I run this, so this is the 
functionality right so it converted all into a upper case okay so this is the way how this uh, two lower and two upper works and this is very simple so uh, no need to remember so this is plain english for uh, what right so suppose you wanted to convert lower case so you have to write two lower upper case two upper right so uh, this is very naive and straightforward okay so any questions so far Lanjit, here won't use the prop case. Uh, yeah. Starting level. So right. So here we don't have a uh, prop case function in simple uh, base R, right? So these are the functionality of base R. So for prop case, I show you here. So for prop case, we have to install one or some. There are various functions uh, similar to that, right? So there are a whole lot of functions. So this is a string R library, right? Uh, string R package. And here we have a varieties of function, okay. And one of them are a uh, prop case, okay. So, okay, yeah. So here we have install. So for if if you not install, so you you can write here install dot packages, and within the parentheses and within double quote we have to write string r. And this is very uh, very useful package when we wanted to perform any data manipulation, right, or data processing. On the character vector, right, or uh, or or a string. Okay, so when we have a text or character or a string, so this package is very handy in that areas, right? So first of all, we have to. So I have already installed, so I will not run this line. Okay, and I have just call that particular package or load. So calling a load, a uh, loading is the same thing, right? So for so in R, we have to first install the package using this keyword, and after that, we have to load or call that package this using this library keyword, right? So library, and within the parentheses, we have to write string R. So suppose I pull this character vector x underscore low that we have created at the top, right? Here, so this is the uh, character vector, and this all are in running case. Okay. So so suppose I wanted to convert into a title right so what title means so title just means that it will convert each word the first word uh, first letter of each word into a uppercase or capital letter right so if i run this so the function here is str to title right so it will convert to a title case so if you notice the g is in capital letter similarly O is in capital letter and T is in capital letter, right? And the prop case case. So prop case, we don't have exact word, but str to sentence. This is the uh, case here. Will uh, it will convert into a prop case? So str to sentence means so it will convert uh, into a sentence case. And sentence case is basically the first letter is in capital letter and remaining will be in the running case, right? So if I run this. So if you notice the G is in capital letter, right? And here I'm passing X underscore low. So if I show you X underscore low, so all are in running case, right? So if I use this function, so if you notice G is in capital letter and remaining all are in running case, right? So this is the functionality of uh, uh, this stringer package. So there are various packages. So we'll cover in, in, in later class much more detail about this package because this is very useful and we sometimes we have to work with the pt text pt uh, soc term right so over there there might be some issues and we wanted to extract few few words from there right so on, in that case this package is very useful so we'll cover in more detail in later classes okay now i'll show you some other function so suppose I create one character vector z. Okay, so let me print this. Okay, so here I have created a character vector where we have a four element. The first element is a b c d, then a b c, then capital a b c d, and then this is also in a running case or a smaller case uh, a b c d e f g h, right? And suppose we want, I'll show you how to replace, how to uh, extract, right? 
for how to search a particular text from this uh, in this character vector okay so suppose i create here a uh, character vector here abc okay and i store here in pad okay so suppose i wanted to search this uh, character vector abc that is there in a smaller case right so for that we have the function grab right and it will search a particular pattern or particular text uh, from a character vector or in a character vector right so this is the way this is the function okay so how we'll write we have to first write grep then after that we have to provide the pattern right so pattern what we wanted to search basically so this is the pattern that we'll provide and then we have to pass here the character vector so character vector here is z so we'll pass z and then we have the keyword ignore dot case is equal to true or false right so so if you so if you don't want to uh, uh, consider or consider the uh, the case right whether it is a lower case or upper case while searching so we'll write here ignore dot case is equal to true right so in that case it will not uh, consider the text uh, while searching right so and if you write ignore dot case is equal to false so it will consider the text so what it means basically is right so suppose i write here ignore dot case is equal to false so in that case it will consider the text while the uh, consider the uh, case while searching right so what it means basically so the first here is we wanted to search the pattern abc in the character vector z right so if you notice here we have abc here also we have abc in a smaller case but if you notice at the third position here we have also abc but this is upper case right so if you write ignore dot case is equal to false so it will search this one also right uh, sorry if you ignore dot case is equal to false so in that case it will not consider the case it will not ignore the case in that case it will not uh, search this one right so let me run first and then show you so if you notice it has provided a location at the first second and fourth right so if you notice at the third position here we have abc but this abc and this abc is a bit different right why because this abc what is available in uh, in the character vector z is in upper case but we wanted to search the lower case right and we have used here ignore dot case is equal to false that's why it will not ignore the case while searching okay but if you notice at the fourth position we have abc that's why it has provided the fourth location so basically it will return the placeholder uh, right where it finds the matches okay Suppose we wanted to write here ignore dot case is equal to true, so in that case it will not consider the case. So if you notice, it has also provided the uh, location for uh, the third index, right? And it it basically says that at the third position also it forms the match, right? And we have used here ignore dot case is equal to true. That's why it also provided the match for the capital letter A B C, right? And by default, it uses ignore dot case is equal to false, right? So if you don't write this one, so by default, it will consider the case while searching for a particular pattern. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, so I'll consider silence as no, and I'll move to the next function. So the next function here is sub. So this will replace a particular vector or a string from a character uh, character vector, right? Or in a character vector. So the pattern as a generic function here is we have to use the sub. After that, we have to provide the pattern, and then we have to provide the replacement. Okay, so which text we wanted to replace here? Okay, then we have to pass the uh, character vector that we wanted to uh, do some sort of uh, processing right or manipulation and then we have to the keyword same keyword ignore dot case is equal to true or false okay so suppose i create here one uh, character vector a a1 and over there we i have saved sas programming so if i print this we have here the sas programming right so suppose i wanted to replace this sas keyword right sas uh, text with the r so how we'll do 
will first provide the pattern that we wanted to uh, we wanted to look for and then we have to provide the the, uh, the text that we wanted to replace with right so we wanted to replace this sas with r so we'll write here like this and then at the end we have to provide this character vector e1 where we wanted to do some sort of uh, replacement okay so this is the way how it works so if you notice and by default it ignores the cases right so we have not used here ignore dot case is equal to true or false so we can use that based on our need right it will also work in the same way with uh, what the g rep function uses right so this is the way how we'll replace here okay suppose i create here uh, a3 where i wanted to replace oh, okay so this is same thing so this is the same thing we can use in another way also suppose you wanted to replace sas with ruby so this is a another programming language so this is the way how we'll do that okay so this is the function where we'll do the replacement right sub function now we'll move to the another function any questions so far okay so the next function is paste function so this will basically concatenate two or more than two string right so there are basically two functions one is paste and then another is paste zero right so here we have paste zero and this is the paste so paste basically uh, concatenate or combine two or more than two string with the uh, separator right so whatever the separator will use so it will uh, combine accordingly right so if you want to use any separator it will combine with this piece right so if i just create here y so this is the way so for how we'll do we have to first write the paste then we have to provide the first string with the code it may be double code or it may be single code okay then after the comma we have to provide the second string so this is the second string then after the comma we have to here provide the third string okay and then we have to close the parentheses okay so this is the way how it works so if you notice we have not we have not provided any specific separator right so by default if you notice here we have a space so by default it combines with the space right so if you notice there is spaces between the uh, two text right okay suppose i use paste zero instead of paste so how will do it will just concatenate the two or more than two string without the space right because here we have a zero so it will not use any spaces right so this is the paste and paste zero function now we have a another function trans str split so str is split so this is quite clear from the name so it will just split the uh, text right so suppose uh, i'll create here i'll just print y so this is the uh, text and suppose i wanted to this is the same keyword this is auto printing and this is explicit printing using the print keyword suppose i wanted to split this uh, vector y and I, here if you notice i used uh, the spaces so it will it will take the spaces and it will separate the word right so if i run this so if you notice here we have one spaces between great and online right so it considered this as a separator so this is first word then there is another uh, space where we have uh, between online and training so so basically in the word great online training so here we have a two separator two spaces so it has separated the whole text into three words right because we have we have the spaces between one space between great and online and another space between online and training right so this is the way how this str split function works so we can use here various separator and based on that it will uh, evaluate right so 
this basically uh, creates a if you notice here uh, here so this is the notation right and if you remember what we discussed in the list so this will basically a list so it stores as a list so this is the first element of this is the first list and within that this is the first element this is the second element and this is the third element right so suppose i wanted to extract the second element here so what i'll do i'll first provide the first referencing for the list so this is the list right and if you wanted to extract the second element so we'll write here two in the one uh, single parenthesis right so we'll extract this uh, online suppose i wanted to extract this training so how we'll do we'll write the same thing str split okay then we have to use the character vector y and then we have to provide the separator okay so this will just separate and after that what we have to do we have to just use here first and then if you wanted to extract the third word that is training so here we have to use three if i run this so this is the training suppose you wanted to extract the first word so how will you we'll write here the same thing str split y and then we can use the single quote as well so this is the grid okay suppose instead of this space if i don't use anything so how will how it works so str split if i just pass y and then without any species so if you notice here we have provided the space here we have also provided the space here we have also provided this space but here we have not provided any spaces so what it does basically it just uh, split each word right so if you notice so this will split each word and based on that we can extract a particular one right suppose you wanted to extract a so if you notice a is a 16th position so how we'll do we'll write here double uh, big bracket and here we will provide the 16 right so if i run this so this is the a similarly we can extract the other word based on their uh, position right so this is all about the string function so we'll cover in more detail uh, the string split when we uh, in the later section of the course and now we'll move to the mathematical function so any questions on the string and then the value first we are given is like one what does it mean yeah so if you notice here if i uh, let me create first of all so let me <coughs> so this is the y vector uh, let me print this first so this is the y vector right and here we are using str splits so why uh, so str split basically it splits the word into different chunks right and if you notice it will basically create a list so this is the symbol that it created all the word and it separated all the words in the list format right because why basically this use list because it it might be the case that in your character vector there might be some correct text there might be some word that is stored uh, there might be some uh, numeric number right or digit that may be stored in a character format right so that's why there might be different sorts of data type in your list right so that's why it basically creates list while splitting those part right so if you notice this is the symbol and this this indicators that it will split the word uh, whatever the uh, word different word we have in y and it is stores as a list format right and this is the first element of the list this is the second element of the list and this is the third element of the list. so here we have we know that this is create the list right so that's why we have used here list to extract a particular word right okay, okay, okay. yeah so this is very useful information so this one if if we don't use this big bracket two big brackets so it we, we cannot extract anything from here 
to be show you because this is a list so for extracting a uh, extracting anything from the list we have to use uh, double referencing right so that is called double referencing so if i use single uh, big bracket so it will not do anything it will extract the whole one right but it will not do the particular text because this is a uh, type of list that it has stored all the uh, different port right oh, okay thank you okay. Perfect. so anyone any further questions okay so now i'll move to the mathematical function and here we have various functions so for that i just create one uh, one vector right uh, where i'll store 2.01 this is a single element vector and i'll use the function different function ceiling floor square root right log exponential log base 10 sine and cos so these are very simple one so ceiling so it will just return the smallest integer which is larger than or uh, equal to x right? so this is the ceiling function that we usually have in all the programming language right similarly we have floor so floor basically returns the uh, largest integer which is smaller or equal to x right? so if i use floor and we'll use 2.01 so it will basically return 2 okay similarly we have a square root so simple sqrt so this is the square root of 2.01 then we have the function log uh, exponential so it will just do exponent of exp of a particular uh, uh, particular vector x right so exponent of 2.01 so let me show you what it returns basically so it returns 2.46 right and the value of e here is uh, basically 2. Point something 2.71 exponent but, but that is maybe in case of uh, natural log or natural uh, logarithmic scale right similarly if we wanted to convert this into log of x and this is natural log so you can use this function log and then we have to pass this x in the parentheses so if i run this so this is the log of natural log of uh, 2.01 if i use log base 10 so we have to we have the function here log 10 and within the parentheses we have to use here x so this is the log base 10 then we can use here sine x so sine x is another function and uh, we can use here sine and then we have to provide the uh, value that we wanted to create the sine of so we have to use here x right so it will provide the sine of a particular thing oh sorry so sine of 2.01 is 2 uh, 0.905 right similarly we can use cos of x so this is minus 0.42 right so this is the way how this mathematical function so these are very simple one log natural log so this we have to keep in mind so this is natural log and this is log base 10 right and similarly these are other function these are very simple right so any question give me a second yes okay so now i'll move to the statistical function so the, here we have various functions that we'll use, generally use in our programming right so we'll round we'll create the sum we'll create the absolute change from baseline right so this is very useful function minimum maximum mean right median so this is are under the uh, bracket of a statistical function right bucket of uh, this part so for that i create here a, a numeric vector x so these are the various numbers right and here we'll use a different function right? so suppose i'll use here trunk c 
so what it does basically it, it returns the integer ignoring the decimal part right so it just return the integer and it will just suppress the int uh, integral uh, decimal part so it just suppress 5.5321 uh, here also it just suppress this 40 then this uh, this will be suppressed so it will not do the rounding it basically removes the decimal part right so if i run this i'll show you so if you notice first is one then five then five then seven then minus four and then eight so this is the way how this trunk c function works okay similarly we have the another function round so it basically uses this decimal part and it rounds up to a uh, next decimal uh, next integer part right so if i use this round and if if you round by two decimal points so what it does basically it keeps the integer part and it rounds this four decimal part into a two okay so if i use this so this is the way how it works we can round up to one decimal part we can copy here so how we have to do we have to just provide here one so it will round up to a one decimal point right earlier we have a two right five three so this is the way how this round function works similarly we have the sum of x so it will just provide the summation of all the numbers what we have in the uh, numeric vector x right so it basically add up all the number so this is 23.02 okay similarly we have the another function absolute function absolute uh, value right so what it does it just convert the various numbers into a positive one right right so if you notice at the fourth position this is uh, it was minus 4.0127 right and if you notice that if we use the abs function absolute function so it will convert into a positive okay similarly we have the function minimum so what it does it just returns the minimum value from this uh, vector x so if you notice minimum vector and uh, minimum value is minus 4.0127 so it returns the same thing similarly we can extract the maximum of using the uh, keyword max so this is the maximum function maximum values then we have the another function mean so we can use mean of x 3 point something right so it just add all the number right and it divides the number of number right so here if you notice we have here five or six number the first is this one then second is five then third is this fourth fifth and then this is the sixth one so it just add up all the number and divide by the uh, number of number that is six right so we can verify this one by uh, using this uh, keyword right so we can we can just sum the x right using the sum function what we have used here right and then what we have to do we have to just divide by six so these all returns the same thing right because internally it works in the same way similarly we can uh, we can uh, use this median function to calculate the median of x so we can use here so this is the median okay so what it does while calculating the median so it basically sort the data in ascending or descending order and it picks the middle value okay so this is the way how median uh, basically uh, how we can calculate the median right so i'll show you here the median part so suppose here we have uh, four liter right one two uh, sorry five here we have five this uh, distinct uh, word right and if i and if you notice i have already arranged you know, all the five uh, digit into a ascending order right the first is one then two we have four then five then seven right and if you if, if i if i pick the middle value right so if you notice so these we, here we have five records right so the third position will be the third one is the median right because if i just select this four 
and if a third value right third value is four and if you notice there is two value on the left hand side and there is two value on the right hand side so this four will be the median right so this is the median we can verify this suppose i create here a vector num and if i store this one then two then four then five then seven right so this these are the numbers right and if i use here median right so if you notice it has returned the four and here also we have the median four right so this is the way how we'll calculate the median so this is very straightforward because here we have a odd number of observations right five seven nine so in that case you can find a unique uh, middle value right but what if if we have even number of values right so here if you notice here we have a six numbers so in that case the median may lie between the number four to uh, fifth right so in between uh, the median will lie right so what how we'll do that what we'll do we'll just add these two number right the middle number so here we have six number so the middle value may be four or five right so what we'll do basically we'll write the number we'll we just add up the number at the third position and the fourth position right and then we have to just add those two number and divide by two because median may lie between these two number right and we have already sorted those number right so that is the case uh, so this is the way how we'll calculate the median in case of even right so in case of even in the same method same same mathematical uh, technique or same operation what we have to do we have to find the middle value so if you notice if we if we club these two into one right suppose we consider this four and five uh, one number right so if you notice there are two number on the left hand side and two number on the right hand side so somehow we have to uh, manage with this number for calculating the median so how we'll do we'll just add these two number and then we will divide by two okay i hope this is clear uh, to everyone yes one oh perfect thank you any question from anyone else okay so similarly we have the function mean so it will just calculate the meaning mean uh, or average of the character vector x so now we have the standard deviation so what is standard deviation this is basically a deviation uh, from the mean of, uh, the deviation of the actual value from the mean right so how we'll calculate so we'll just create uh, here we have a values and then we have to subtract the mean from each value right so that is called deviation okay and then we have to just add those deviation and then divide by the number of numbers right so suppose here we have a vector x so x we can use this one right and the mean of x is 3.8 right so how we'll do we'll subtract uh, each value uh, we'll subtract uh, from each value 3.8 right so this is the way so if i just show you the deviation it has the same number of vector right so what it does basically it subtracted 3.8 from this number right so 1.5321 minus 3.8 so we'll have this then again we'll subtract 3.8 from this 5 so this is 1.2 similarly for the remaining numbers right so this is called deviation okay so in r we have very uh, great functionality right so if you notice x has the character vector as a numeric vector and here we have a this number right so six dif distinct uh, numbers right and we are passing here 3.1 so this is a single element so in that case also it does the subtraction so what it does basically it subtracted 3.8 from the every element right what we have in the uh, vector x so this is very unique because it works so that is why uh, this is this is the reason why it, they design the operation in a vector right or why they 
stores each numeric vector or character vector so basically character vector is a uh, different story so if we have uh, if if we store all the numeric vectors uh, into a vector format right so those subtraction and those mathematical operation we can do in very uh, naive way right so this is basically deviation and if you wanted to do the standard deviation calculation so how we'll do we'll sum those deviation uh, those square deviations so we have to just convert this deviation square right so we have to we have to multiply deviation times deviation or we can do the square right power 2 right and then we have to sum and then we have to divide by the uh, number minus 1 so if you notice here we have a six number so here we have to divide by uh, i guess 5 okay so this is the sum of deviations okay similarly we can calculate the square root simple function sqrt we saw earlier and now we can show you standard deviation calculation so sd of x so we can use here sd of x this is 4.46 okay right so so this is the way so suppose just a second just wanted to show one thing So if you notice, so if we do the standard deviation calculation using x, right, using this function sd, we'll get 4.46. And if you use the our mathematical calculation, so we'll first create the deviation, right, using this function, using this uh, keyword, right, x minus x is a individual vector, and we'll subtract the mean from each vector, and then we'll use here the deviation square, right, we'll sum those, okay and uh, we'll we'll take the summation then we have to use here the square root because we are taking the square here right so if you go more deep so what basically we are doing basically uh, here so we are just subtracting the individual value from the mean so what we are doing we are just checking the spread right and we are after that we are just uh squaring those spread to see the to see larger picture right so if we have a small deviation between two numbers and if we do the square it will be large right and if a very small difference between two numbers if you do the square so it will be very small right so what we are doing we are just magnifying those deviations all right and then we are taking the sum and then we are averaging those after that because we have magnified at the initial stage right while doing the square we have to take the square root to return on the same page right so this is the way how we'll calculate the standard deviation on a um, on a mathematical way right so mathematical calculation or and this is the function st and it basically return the same thing so because of internal calculation we have some differences on the uh, at, at the fourth uh, fourth position right fourth decimal part but so this will return in the same way right and uh, almost the same right okay so now i'll show you some other function so suppose i create a uh, 
vector vector uh, numeric vector x so here we have five elements and suppose i wanted to create the range so range basically returns two things the first is the minimum value and the second is the maximum value right so this is the first element this is minimum value this is the maximum value okay similarly we have the quartiles and quartiles split the data into four equal halves right and if you wanted to extend so this is the four equal half so 25th percentile 50th percentile or 75th percentile right so this is the first half this is the middle one so this 50th percentile uh, 50th percentile is called also called uh, quantize is also called median right and this is the 75th percentile okay so if you wanted to see the first uh, quantiles so we'll use here uh, quantile function right we have to pass the vector x and then here we have to pass which quantile we wanted to extract so suppose we wanted to extract the first so we'll use here 0 0.25 so if i run this so it will return the 25th percentile right so here we have a data and this is a five length right of length five so if you notice so this is the middle one right this is the 25th percentile part right because we need that uh, so this is middle one right so 50 percent of data on the left hand side and 50 percent data on the left uh, right hand side right so if you further split this 50 into uh, two parts so this will be the 25th and this will be the 25th right so that's why it returns two because after uh, before two right so we have here 25th percent of the data right so if i use this one so it will return 25th percentile it will return the 50th percentile and it will also return the 75th percentile right so if we go here on fifth position or on fourth uh, position or value five so if you notice 75 percent of the data is below that right and 25 of the data 25 percent of the data is above that so so because this this uh, vector x is of length five right so uh, it should have 25% uh, of the values above 5 because there is one value, right? And this 4 is the median because this is the 50th percentile. And because 50th percentile is split the data into two equal halves. Similarly, the median does the same thing, right? Hope this is clear to everyone. Any question here? okay perfect so now i'll show you how to read the data uh, in r right so we'll first see uh, reading our data into r so there are various functions and the first one is read dot table right so this is very generic function and this function is uh, used to read the text file right so text file uh, is having the extension txt right dummy underscore txt and we'll use this file to import into R, right? So we'll import this file into R. And here the keyword is read.table. So first we have to write read.table. Then we have to provide the file name. So this is the file name, dummy underscore text. And then we have to use here the file extension, okay? Then we have a separator keyword. So if we if our file contains some specific separator, right? So may, there might be colon, there might be comma, right? So we can provide those separator here. If your file doesn't contain any separator, we can use here space, right? Similarly, we have the keyword header is equal to false, right? So if 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 the file that we are importing contains the uh, file name, right, as a header, so we'll provide here header is equal to false. So in that case r will create if if that file doesn't contains the header so we'll provide here the header is equal to false right so in that case r basically creates a reader a header variable for us right so let me first show you this file and then we'll uh, import right get w let me check first dummy underscore txt this is under Get so 
so this is r and r training data so this, this is a file dummy underscore txt that we we wanted to import right so if you notice this is the values right so if you notice we don't have the header header means the variable number name right so we don't have the variable name and from the first position from the first location the observation started right so here we have to provide header is equal to false so that r creates the variable for us right so if i show you the data what we have imported in r so if you notice here the r created the variable v1 v2 v3 v4 and v5 by itself right for all the five columns okay and if you notice the another thing here the value is separated by the space right each value is separated by the space okay for each element right at the sixth position also in the same way so here if you notice so that's why we have provided it separated is equal to space right we can provide but we can keep as it is right so it will work in the same way but if our, our data what we are importing our file contains the variable okay and if we not contain the variable right so suppose this file for example this file this file doesn't contains any variable name right and if you don't write here header is equal to if you don't write header is equal to false instead of that if you write header is equal to true so let's see how it creates the thing so if you notice it won't created the variable here v1 v2 v3 up to v5 but it basically does it just moves the first observation to the variable form right so if you notice the first one was one and then the v2 value is a g k e right so if you notice the first is moved to the first operation is moved to the variable right and it generally in the previous data set where we have six element right six distinct element one two three four five six but here if you notice here we have only one up to six here we have only five records right so this is the way how it works if we don't provide header is equal to false and in that case and also our data what our file that we are importing doesn't contain the variable name right so the moral of the story here is if your data set or the file that you are importing doesn't contain the variable name so you have to write header is equal to false so that r creates the variable for for us and it will not since the first record to the to the variable name right this is one thing if your data contains the variable and in that case if you write header is equal to false so r doesn't do anything right it keeps the variable as it is <clears throat> okay so this is the this is the way how we'll uh, do the uh, importing right header part if your variable if your data set contains the variable header is equal to header right if your variable if your data set contains the variable so in that case you will just skip header is equal to true or false so by default it import the file as it is right and if if your file contains the variable and in that case if you write header is equal to true right so what it does we are providing the signal to the r right that variable header is already there so please don't create that variable header right for your own so it will not create anything it will take from the data okay so now i'll show you some other function so suppose uh, here i have the another file dummy underscore csv so this is the file if you notice from the previous one if you compare from the previous file let me open the previous one again so these are the two files So this is the if you see the right hand side so this is the file that we have just imported and here if you notice we have the separator as blank right or uh, blank space here we have separator as comma okay so i'll show you how to import the file when we have a comma 
so for that we have to use an, another specific keyword separator and within that we have to provide the comma that's it the simple thing and same uh, and the other part remains the same this is the read dot table and read dot table is the base r functionality right then after that we have to write file or we can provide the file name within the parentheses without the keyword file right or we can use the file keyword and after the equal symbol we have to provide the file name with the file extension in double quote right and then we have to use the separator okay right so by default it created the variable for us right and here these are the various values if you won't write separator so it creates some sort of misnomer right so it it won't clean side so if you want provided here if it if you don't provide the separator one right and if if your file that you are importing contains the separator so what it does basically so it doesn't distinguish between the variables right so it consider all the information of a particular row and it is stores into a single column right so all one then all the extension everything is stored into a single vector single variable p1 right so that that may be the problem if you won't provide the separator and if your data set that we are importing contains a separator right so this is the one thing okay so now i'll show you uh, how to read the csv file okay so let me show you the csv file first employ underscore okay is that yeah so this is the data set and this is a csv format right because if you notice here this is a microsoft excel comma separated value file right and these are the various uh, information so here we have 13 observations right and these are four variables a sex salary okay so suppose i wanted to import this so how will do We'll write here read.csv. So this is just base R functionality, right? So read.table is basically for the text file. Read.csv is for the CSV file. Similarly, we have another function read uh, underscore Excel. So that we have to we will see in the latest classes, right? To import the Excel file, right? So this is the way how we'll import the CSV file read.csv, right? So here we have to provide the file name. And then we have to provide the file name in double code, and we have to also provide the file extension with the dot. So if I run this, this is the file here. Okay. Any questions so far? okay so so far we saw the base r functionality of importing the file like read.table read.csv right so now we have another advanced functionality and this is the advanced function and this function is read r right so this function is recently created uh, by the uh, scientist Hadley welcome and he is very prominent in the r right in r development so there are, you see various books various software various packages right software basically means uh, the packages uh, we should call pack, uh, packages not the software so he has created various uh, packages right like uh, tidyverse and the other one uh, the stipler and all right so he has also created the reader one so reader is very uh, advanced version of uh, read.table or read.csv uh, file right and it can import the large file right in a very quick uh in a, in a very quick interval of time right so that is the more important part 
So because this R read dot table read dot CSV, it takes whole lot of time while importing the larger file. And also, so there are other features that they have added. So suppose we'll specify the column type, right? So whether the particular column is character or numeric, right? So if we specify those information at the initial stage while importing, so we can import those files in a very uh, quick amount of time, right? It won't take much time if we specify the column type. So these functions were not there in the previous one, read.table or read.csp. So they have added this functionality call dot type call underscore type and here we have to provide the uh, data of type based on the uh, whatever the column we have okay so first of all what we have to do we have to just install this package so for that we have to we have the keyword install dot packages and within the parentheses we have to write read r right similarly we have the another thing uh, here we have to use the library uh, for loading those uh, this uh, reader package right so because i have already installed so i will not run this line you can run uh, this line right and after that you have to load using this library keyword right so library then we have to provide the uh, library name okay then what we have to do we have to just use the function so suppose i'll use here read underscore csv because this is a csv file thus we have to use read underscore csv so we have to use here file and then we have to provide the file name okay and if you notice in the previous data sets that we have imported the same file we are importing here as well right so if i open this emp here we have four variables right and if you notice first variable is character type second a is in numeric type right because this is write a line and if you place the circle on the variable name right so it will tell so if you notice column to numeric with range 18 to 24 right so it tells whole lot of information so this column 2 is quite evident that this is numeric variable the column 1 is character if you place the cursor on the third variable the sex is character then salary this is a numeric right so we can use this methods or what we can do we can use here str and emp we have to write e str and the data data frame name so str it will provide the, it will provide the structure so this is the data frame and here we have four variables right the first variable name is character the second variable age is integer then third variable sex is character and then fourth variable sally is numeric right so these are all variable all information what we have here and then we can utilize those okay so how we have to use this column type so we have to write here the keyword call types and within the double code we have to use this c for the character and n for the numeric right so if you notice the first variable is in character format so we'll write here character right so what it does basically it just import the file in that format okay so if you notice the second one second one is is numeric so that's why we have provided here n suppose we wanted to import this third variable that is sex into character so we write here c and if you notice some sally is stored as a numeric one right but we while importing we wanted to create the data right emp data and in that data set we wanted to import this sally as a character format so how we'll do we'll write here c so what it does basically it converts at the import stage right importing the file at that stage it converts this numeric data right the numeric variable right salary variable that is stored in numeric one into a character format right so if i run this okay so no error so if you notice this sally is in character c h e r so we can we can check the str of this emp now so if you notice sally is in character format right and if you notice this is the this is the file format right the str part okay so this is the keyword that it basically use internally to convert that into a, a character uh, character type right okay
so this is the functionality we'll provide so if we provide this call type so it will be very easy for r to understand which data or which file it has to store in which data type right otherwise what it does so it takes uh, the number of uh, prevalent numbers right so if if we have one column right and in that column uh, the numbers are stored in numeric as well as text one right so it take it checks so what are the prevalent type data type for a particular column and accordingly it stores that column in that data type right but if you provide this call type so that will be easier for r and it won't take much time in importing the file all right so this is the main important part here so any questions No, okay perfect so now we'll i'll show you how to sort the data so for that we have to use the keyword order right and using that keyword we can sort the particular data right so suppose i'll create the data here i'll just show you the data emp right and this cell is stored in character format then age is in numeric format so now i'll show you how to sort okay so for that i'll creating another data here right data frame and i have to just call the data frame here and then we have to use the order keyword what we wanted to sort with right and we can write here decreasing is equal to true and decreasing is equal to false based on the if you wanted to sort descending then we'll write decreasing, decreasing is equal to true and decreasing is equal to false if you wanted to sort with ascending order right so in that case it will just sort the sort the data right so if i run this if i show you excel one so if you notice so the it sort the descending order right so the maximum is the top then the minimum and the further minimum right uh, and at the end we have the smallest one <laughs> right so this is the way how it sort the data so we have to be first write the data frame name uh, within the uh, double big bracket we have to write the order and then we have to specify the variable that we wanted to sort with so this is base r functionality of sorting the data i'll show you uh, the more general or more simpler way uh, i'll show you after this line but we'll see that part in more detail when we do the deployer package, right? Suppose we wanted to sort by descending, so we can write descending is equal to true. So this is descending order. And suppose we wanted to sort by ascending order, we'll write descending decreasing is equal to false. Okay, so if you see the smallest one, then larger than largest, right? So at the end we have the largest value. We can use another variable also. So suppose I wanted to use another variable. So how we'll do? We'll write here enter, and then uh, we have to provide emp dollar symbol. Suppose you wanted to sort with uh, age, right? And we can provide the comma. We can sort accordingly. So if you notice, we have the age as well, 18, then 22, right? Because this and it takes two variables, salary first and then age, right? So it takes two variables and then accordingly it has provided the sorting and it sorted the ascending order, smallest to largest. So we can use any number of variables here and we can place those variables after the comma, okay? Suppose we won't want to use this ascending or descending. So what we'll do, we'll just remove those keyword and by default it's sort a uh, uh, descending order. I guess ascending order. Yeah. Let me check once again. So it the, the ascending order, right? Smallest to largest. So if you want to provide decreasing is equal to true or false, so it does in that way. Smallest to largest. Right? I'll show you the simpler way. So for that we have 
the pack is deployed d p l y r okay so i have already installed so maybe i'll just call here and then what we have to do we have to write here arrange keyword and then we have to provide the data so data is emp data frame and then whatever the variable that we wanted to sort so suppose i use salary then age suppose i'll use salary here first so it has sorted in the descending order right suppose i wanted to use another variable Good. so if you notice it has sorted while considering this uh, gender variable also right 5 or 15 then if you notice here uh, 16 2 2 1 6 then okay so it is in the same way suppose i'll write here c combine operator and then combine these two so that will be more uh, fruitful okay So it will won't work with this keyword okay so this is the way uh, how we'll sort the data using different variable we can use here another variable also right and uh, we'll see in more detail uh, while we do the deployer package maybe at, at uh, i guess class 11th or class 12th right? okay so any questions so far No, Randy. Okay, perfect. So I I'll show you some other function or memory calculation uh, tomorrow, right? So thank you. And uh, if you don't have any question, maybe we'll pause for a couple of seconds. If you don't have any question from anyone else, so we'll stop for the day. Mm -hmm.